All right, we're back again. April the 9th, Tuesday. Let me know if this thing is crackling or whatever. Last one started crackling, so I had to start back over again. Hopefully, this one coming through a whole lot clear. But like I said, it was a crazy weekend. We did a what bike week, an Arizona bike weekend, March Madness. We had, you know, the final four was here. So a lot of us were out driving, you know, Uber, Lyft. A lot of people drove Uber and Lyft. A whole segment of us stayed on home as much as we can. But we got out there, we drove as much as we can. What up, Juan Vargas, my man? Cool. So it sounds good. It sounds a lot better. There we go. There we go. Hopefully. What up, Duato? What up, Black Wolf? My man, Logan. Hey, Logan, you should have came out here, man. You would have made a killing out here, bro. Well, Bubba Sue was good. Man, if you would have brought that big old uh, Durango out here, man, you would have been true. Si esta bien, Juan Vargas. El Doritos. What up, Robert Reeves? Hot facts, my brother. Mary, uh oh, she's coming in from the Bronx. What's good, Mary? Look at her. She up there walking around, looking at the the eclipse. <laughs> no, yeah, this weekend of money was crazy, man. It was crazy. What up, AP? My man, Aaron Black Santa's in the build. Knife juggler, what's good? Yeah, it was, man. It was so busy this weekend, and I was just because we were trying to get home up and going right. So we were running in. We're up at the event, making sure all the bike because we were the, actually the the um. The host, uh, I guess Hum was what the, the official ride chair of Bike Fest this year. So we went up there, had all the drivers. I mean, we had a whole section of cars just sitting there, giving out a ton of cars, getting rides, taking bikers to the hotels, short rides. I mean, it was rides two miles and there's no surge. With Hum, there's no surge. So every mile was like, every ride was like two miles, three miles, four miles, just at a hotel. Rides started anywhere from like $11 all the way up to like $22. And we're only going like three, four miles. No surge. These are just straight fares. So when you're doing the straight fare on home, the, the money is going to be there. there. There's no need for sur surge because you get that initial $5. Then you get a dollar a mile. If you're an SUV, I think a dollar fifty. You got like 20, 25 cents a minute. So if you're sitting in traffic, the clock's just running, you're getting paid. So that's what I like about it. So every ride, man, it was nothing under 10 bucks. Everything was even a little two mile trips. 15 bucks everything was like bam 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 i was loving it man what done to say uber got me today it tries a route of 38 bucks to go eight minutes down the street uber gave me eight dollars wow see dante man and this is why i like hum you know what i'm saying because hum creates conversation as soon as people get in the car first thing i say is hey i don't know how much you pay for this ride and they be like oh man you know i pay like 15 dollars i'm like okay because i got surge and everything on this ride so i'm getting 11 out of the 15 oh that's good I said, but normally the fare for this ride is probably about four or five dollars. That's what I would get out of the 15 you paid. So, yeah, man, big time. North Scottsdale was crazy up there, man. So that's why when riders get in the car and a lot of riders are telling me right off the bat, even when I'm getting in, they're like, oh, y'all heard drivers are getting screwed by Uber and Lyft. Now, a couple of riders have been telling me about you guys. I'm like, yeah, it's been crazy, crazy. Oh, storming down there. Yeah. Oh, man, I can't wait till till Chris comes on like he's the CEO of Hum, you know what I'm saying? And when he comes on, this guy, he's one of the founders. I think him and his dad founded it. But when he comes and gets on here, it, this is going to be one of the best interviews. I think that people who are independent contractors who don't want to be stuck on a the plantation, they're going to love this interview, man. They're going to love it because just us. That's why I wanted to drive home. I wanted to get out and drive more. I've been logged. I've been registered with them for about what I was with them for free for a while. Only got one ride during waste management. Didn't really worry about it. But then I really started driving it over this past weekend. And I really got the gist of how it works. You know, Anthony sat down with me for my very first manual ride. We went through the app, went through everything. And from there, he showed me once. It was like, man, you gave me the perfect tool, man, because that's how I drive. I love to talk to people. So when I'm on the curb chatting with people and talking to people, I'm like, oh, yeah, man, I feel like $42 for this ride. I said, tell you what, man, I charge you $30 for this ride. And here's my hum card, this and that. And they go, oh, download the app. Give me your number. Quick $30, $35. And it's like, I mean, this is how we drive anyways. So when we're out there negotiating our price, being independent contractors, man, it's going to be true. Oh, yeah, that interview is going to be crazy. And like I said, a lot of people, you know, we watch David Richard's interview. We watch, you know. Everybody's talking to Darren. We know they full of shit. I mean, let's call it what it is. Let's let's not bullshit it. We know them CEOs is full of shit. They didn't want to speak to drivers. They didn't want to look at drivers. They didn't want to empathize with drivers because they whole motive is to milk drivers for everything they can do to get rid of drivers. That's really what it is. They've already got it in their head. They got all their tech, all their technicians, all their employees, all their staff already knowing we're going driverless. 
We're doing driverless deliveries. We're doing driverless rides. I ain't worried about these damn drivers. So to sit and listen to those interviews of these people being fake as hell, man, I, I can't do it. Oh, yeah, I saw uh, Officer Tatum drop the video regarding Uber leaving minutes. I saw that video, but it's a lot that he don't understand. And Officer, I was going to actually comment on his video when I was watching it. But I was like, yeah, some people just he, he's doing it for content. I mean, he was talking about, you know, taxis don't have GPS. And I, I mean, he was so far gone. This dude, he has. And I love Officer Tatum. I watch a lot of his videos, but he was he has no idea what the hell he's talking about. <laughs> This dude, he just confused a whole base of people that watched this video because I'm like, this dude has no idea. What, and he's a he's a funny guy when it comes to law and stuff like that. When it comes to ride share, he's completely fucking clueless, completely clueless. And he's like, oh, yeah, man, people shouldn't be mad about getting paid fifteen dollars an hour. You know, it's like he said something. It's a commission base. I'm like, this dude has no, a commission base. Bro, I'm like, you have no, we don't do commission based rides. What are you talking about? But I can even comment on his video because he was so lost. It was like, I tell motherfuckers, even on my channel, I hate to go all the way back to accounting 101. I hate that because this channel has progressed so fast. We're at accounting 404. We know so much about rideshare, what these people are doing, how to be independent contractors. We know too much. So to start all the way back from scratch again, I'm like, man, it, it's hard, man. It's hard. It's like short bus shit. It's hard to take some out the short bus and say, hey, man, let me teach you something. I mean, you got to let them motherfuckers ride their own pace. They'll be here soon. They won't be here when we get here, but they'll be here. Oh, man, I've been canceling like crazy. Lyft, man, Lyft, they've been suspending me for months, 15 minutes, 40 minutes. I'm like, I don't care. All I'm going to do is go do cash ride somewhere else. I don't care. And I don't, like I said, even before, hum, y'all knew how I drove. I was doing cash rides way before this. All this is was another tool for the toolbox. That's already how I'm driving already. So they're like, man, this dude. And we had fun doing cash rides, meeting people. Because I'm going to tell you something about the apps and the apps love it. Uber and Lyft love this plantation. Don't speak to a driver. You don't have to talk to a driver. We can do contactless delivery. They love that shit. What up, Kev? They love that kind of shit because they don't want people to intermingle and talk and trade numbers and trade ideas and laugh and joke. These apps don't want people to do that because there's too much humanity involved. They're moving away from humanity more into this thing where they want to just keep money away from all the drivers out there and keep money in tech. That's it. Oh, Lyft put me on timeout. I don't be worried about Uber. Uber and Lyft do that shit all the time. They Sometimes they'll just throttle you. They won't even say they'll just throttle you down. What up, Billy Proctor? My man with the big Escalade. And so, you know, to sit and watch those David Risher interviews and all those Uber and Lyft, is, what up, Go Giga, to watch those interviews, is it was it was hollow. It was hollow. Listening to David Risher speak was hollow. Listening to Dara speak was hollow. So to have a CEO who, who said, hey, man, I want to come on your channel and speak to people. He's walking up. Darren Ann wouldn't even come out the building with, with drivers in front of his building in San Francisco. These motherfuckers wouldn't even like talk out the window, wouldn't even come down to the lobby to say something. These, they don't give a shit about drivers all across this world. They don't care about that. So when you have a CEO who knows what he's worth, who's building something for drivers, and he says, you know what? I'm going to come. Yeah, I'm going to put the link out in a second. And he comes out and he says, oh, man, I'm going to come speak to the drivers, man. I'm going to talk to everybody. I want to do this, man. And he, like I said, he is eager, eager to help drivers out, eager to get people to start getting paid. And you all you see with these Uber and Lyft apps, they're eager to get their technology out to different regions to get politicians paid. They're eager to get us off the road to keep all that money. That's all they want to do. And I'm like, we're independent contractors, man. We should be able to negotiate our rate. Some of us got really nice cars. Some of us have really nice customer service skills, even though we don't have a nice car, but we just got real. Some people, they got phone chargers already. I don't have that shit. And somebody asked me why I might give them one. People have bottled water already, have mints and shit already, got TVs for people to watch already. I mean, the customer service is unreal in this industry. And these people don't get paid enough for all that shit. I'm not putting bottled waters in my car. Not for Uber and Lyft people. Fuck no. I'll do it for home people because they pay. I get 100% of that money. But an Uber and Lyft person get in my car? Shit, they don't even tip. Y'all saw my shit. So Uber and Lyft people get in my car. You know, they pay $40 for the ride. Uber and Lyft is like, well, this person paid $40 for the ride. So we expect you to really, you know, give them your best, Jeff. Take care. Give them some mints. Give them a phone charger. Give them a TV. Give them some candy and shit. Do whatever, Jeff. They pay $40 for this ride. And I'm like, motherfucker, I'm getting 18. What are you talking about? If, if they paying you 40 then you need to be sending me some money to buy all this candy and shit you telling me to buy for these people in my back seat because you ain't giving me enough to do all that. Now, with Hum, is different. 
Motherfucker be like, hey, man, they pay 30, you get 30. Cool. And and if you, does they did the same ride on Uber or Lyft, they probably pay 42 and you get 18 and 19. So you're going to get $11, $12 extra with no tip even necessary. No tip necessary. Just straight money right up. And this is what we was talking about, man. This is what we was talking about. Getting the app out there, fighting back in a way that where these apps can't just beat us down. They can't just beat us down and sit there and think, oh, yeah, well, you got to take it. Ain't nobody else going to pay you better. We ain't got to pay you $15 an hour. Ain't nobody else going to pay you better. Now we like, okay, now what? Checkmate. Arizona's about to start building something now. And I know a lot of cities out there protested. A lot of drivers protested in certain cities at airports and shit like that. We didn't do that in Phoenix. And a lot of us didn't because we've been working from, everybody's working from their own angle. We've been working at a money angle, profit angle, get money, get profit, get your clients built up, get private rides built up. That's how we've been working in Phoenix. Even before HUM, we were attacking the apps from a whole nother level. We were playing chess with the ass the whole time. We ain't playing check. Oh, I'm going to sit at the airport and decline rides until you give me some good. Fuck that. Waste of my time. I'll go to the airport and pick those motherfuckers up, cancel the ride and get cash for it. Cause I ain't got time to play with y'all. I'm just going to cancel all your people. Now I'm not canceling shit. I'm going to go there and cancel that shit. Okay. I'm going to 50 bucks, 50 bucks. Okay. I guess so. Let's do it. $50. Cause they charged me 75. Let's go. So the way we did it in Phoenix was a different type of protest. We did a protest where we still came up with money. I know a lot of people was like, accept the ride and just don't take it. Just sit there and just let it time out. Fuck that. Waste of my time. If I accept it and it's a mile away, I'm going to cruise to you and I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to tell you. I'm only getting $13 for this ride. That's it. So I'm going to cancel this ride. You want to do it for $25, 30 well, Let's do it for that. That's what I deal with those dudes up in Scottsdale. I, the one dude, uh, Jay Roddy. I picked him and his boys up 12 and I showed you on a video motherfucker showed $12. I showed you that on a video. It said $12, but then I showed you, he gave me 20 through cash app and his buddy, when they was getting out of the car, he slid me 20 through the front window. He was like, here's another 20 cash, man, 40 bucks instead of, and I showed y'all the 12 that was coming down the pipe. And I said, I'm going to try to convert this to a cash ride. I'll be back. I said, so if you see me do a cash ride, do you know what I did? And this is like, I got a lot of people in my comments all the time. Hey, show us how you convert a cash ride. Show it. These slow motherfuckers don't even watch my videos. I'm like, bro, watch the video. I'm putting this shit in videos. I'm not going to carry your short bus motherfucking hand. I'm not. I'm putting shit in videos. If you don't have time to watch it, don't fucking watch it. Then don't bother me. Because I'm putting things in these videos and I'm showing people the, exactly how I'm doing things, why I'm doing things. I'm putting them in different playlists on my channel. So you can go, if you want to know a cash rise, go to my cash ride playlist. Don't sit there in the comments. Oh man, could you do a video showing us how you convert cash rides, motherfucker? Are you slow? I done told you I got a whole playlist of that shit. Go check it out, man. You ain't got to ask me. This channel do it. I do it like that. I'll put it out there for you to go see it. And I'm telling you, and I'm narrating as I'm driving what I'm doing. I say, hey, I'm going to go do this real quick. This ride ain't paying me shit right now. I'm going to see if I can convert this ride. I'm going to let you know what I did. And I try to leave just enough evidence to show you that the, the ride I did convert was the same. I'll leave like maybe an initial or a first name or something. I don't want to fuck them up and have them booted off the app for some weird shit that I did. So I try to make sure I don't, hey, this is his first and last name and his address. And I don't do all that shit. I don't want to get this rider booted off. So I put a little bit on that motherfucker. But I'm trying to let these people know it's a lot of new people come to the channel. They don't understand how advanced we are over here. These motherfuckers are still accounting one on one because they're from a channel that's been like that. They've never seen a channel like this before. So they come over here and they don't know. Hey, oh, well, can you do me a favor and, and show me how to? I'm like, motherfucker, this channel got like 600 fucking videos. You don't think we've done that like 100 times already? I tell people when you walk into a room. Observe, realize where you at. You got to look around and check the temperature first. Come in be like, okay, I know I'm in a fast room because I'm listening to this video. Dude don't sound like he's brand new. He sound like he's pretty experienced. Let me check out some of his fucking videos. Let me come in. All right, go look at a video. Look at another video. Look at a couple of If you ain't got time, get the fuck off the channel. But all the videos are there for a reason. So you can't just sit there on one video. Do me a favor, man. Make me a video. I ain't making you shit. And somebody told me that shit one time. Hey, can you make a video? I said, no, I can't. I told motherfuckers straight up in the comments. No, I can't. Because I'm not doing that. The videos are already made already. If you don't like them, you just don't like them. I don't know what to fucking tell you. But I'm not going to be catering to these random motherfuckers that just come jumping on YouTube. Oh, today also a YouTuber that talks to people. I'm going to tell them do this. You ain't telling me shit. <laughs> it's like, you're going to be saying something, but I ain't hearing that shit. So I'm one of those people, man. Shit, hey. Like, 
Say the tricks I've learned from your videos from 2023 is the reason I make 40% more than I used to. Oh, why, man? You be doing it, brother. You be doing it. Paw Patrol that shit up. Fucking cancel, cancel, can or decline, 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 grab, snag, out, man. You be getting that money. What up, Jim? Well, I'm telling you, Austin Rides, man, I don't want to do ride share no more. These, these apps have shown us that all we're doing is building their plantation for them. That's all we're doing. We're building our own exit plan with them. All the profits we make, when they're taking 60% of a ride, 70% of a ride, 50 when they're taking that money from us, it's so they can invest in getting rid of us. And when somebody tells you, imagine, like, just say, imagine you got a girlfriend and every day you get paid, say, hey, bring me, you know, $100. And so you keep giving her money, but all she's doing is stacking money to get rid of your ass. And she's not stacking money to build the house up, to go get groceries, to build the house up, you know, buy something for the house. No, she's stacking money because she's about to get rid of you in a fucking minute. That's how driving for these apps feels like. Like, they don't give a shit about us. They're going to bail on, on, you know, they, I'm going to be like white on rice in 2024, real shit. And it's like, they'll sit in there getting rid of all these people in Minneapolis. They're just walking away from the rioters and the drivers. That's why we got to protect our community. We got to protect our community because if we don't, we're going to leave our community in the hands of these two apps that don't give a shit about nobody except bottom line and technology. That's all they're there for. That's it. See, one of my favorite lines this weekend came from Big Horn Kev. Passing out cards and lady said no to a car because she drives Uber. After him trying to explain it and bouncing back off her forehead, he said, <laughs> be a pigeon then. <laughs> he said, fucking be a pigeon then. Exactly. Exactly. She's a fucking, ex look at her. Goddamn plantation driver. And some of these people don't even realize it. They so in, it's like Stockholm Syndrome. You you are a victim, but now you're starting to sympathize with the person that's perpetuating the crimes against you. You're starting to sympathize, and I'm like, Uber's really nice to me. They gave me a $2 surge. Yeah, but they charged a the person $45 and gave you 12 but you got a $2 surge on that. Stockholm Syndrome, man. So I'm we trying to educate these drivers out there, whether they drive for Uber, Lyft, they do person. We just trying to say, hey, man, do not build these apps up when they're constantly destroying our future. A lot of people got cars. Excuse me. We owe another three years, five years. Some people just bought a car recently and they got to get these cars paid off. And what is the apps doing? Pay these drivers as less as you can. We got to get rid of these drivers in Minnesota. What are they doing? Are we out of here, man? In a couple of weeks, we out. We don't care about you drivers. Well, what about the riders? We don't care about them either. We have no contingency plan for them. We don't send them emails. And all we do, Uber and Lyft sends emails to the riders. And all they say is, because of the drivers wanting $15 an hour, we're leaving town. But yet, you got McDonald's people making 20 Popeye's chicken people making 20 and they ain't even driving their cars. They're not even investing in fuel and tires and brakes and water pumps and shit like that. They're just walking in and flipping some fucking burgers. And you saying, okay, that's worth 20 bucks. But you telling me $15 an hour, me driving my shit all through traffic, hitting curves, getting rock chips in my thing, people fucking up my carpets and stuff in the back. That's not even worth $15 an hour minimum, minimum. These apps don't want to pay us. So like I said, I cannot wait. Till Chris, the CEO, jumps on and he really breaks down. Like I said, I know people got a lot of questions. I just started driving at a, at a higher scale. So I'm still learning a lot as we go along, even on the, the uh, Zoom calls. I still learn. I'd be writing shit down and everything. So I'm like, when he gets on, people can ask their questions, talk directly to him. Hopefully, you know, he's going to be one of those guys that say, okay, I'll field a couple of questions, this and that. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, hey, man, put the link up. The day he does his interview, I'm not throwing the link up because we got to stay focused. We can't fuck around because if we can get this interview done right, it's not even really an interview. It's like a conversation. It'll be a conversation. So when this conversation goes right about Hum Rod Share, he'll have his editing team grab some of it. And they'll edit it. They'll put it on their website. They'll put it in areas where they want to market and shit like that. So you got to have some really good questions. And I know I got, you know, a lot of moderators in my chat and we got to when we see haters come into the chat, we got to block ban those motherfuckers. You mean to put them on 5000 minute timeout or some shit? I don't know. Get rid of them. Them motherfuckers never appear in the chat ever again. If I'm concerned with it. Yeah. Marcel, soon enough, Russia drives to be 15 an hour. Gross. Not net. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yep. Yeah, 25 cents a minute equals $15 an hour. And that's just waiting time. Like Marcel said, 25 cents a minute waiting time is basically $15 an hour. And that's what Hum pays you, 25 cents a minute to just sit there. Uber don't pay you per minute.
They oh, we're gonna pay you per second to wait on something. No, they not. Even when they do it, I think it's like a dollar seventy or something like that every six minutes, something weird like that, to where you end up getting four. It's a dollar forty every six minutes. Dollar forty every six minutes. So you multiply that times time to make sixty. You're getting fourteen dollars an hour. Fourteen dollars an hour. If you have to wait for somebody, like say they're not coming outside and they're gonna pay you, but who's gonna sit there for a whole hour waiting on fourteen dollars? Well, you could just go around the corner and get a twenty-five dollar cash ride. I'm not waiting for no fourteen dollars. I'm gonna give me a twenty-five dollar cash ride right around the corner, like now. Get that shit done and out the way. So Uber and Lyft, like I said, they're gonna have hell to pay once this app really starts gaining traction. And like Bitcoin Kevin, Billy Parker said, you know, they talk to this lady. She, oh, I'm an Uber driver. No, oh, bitch, you a pigeon. Call it what it is. You a pigeon. You ain't no Uber driver. You a pigeon. We used to drive Uber back in the day. We know what driving for Uber feel like. This pigeon shit, taking all these cheap ass motherfucking rides, not trying to think and use your brain. Even when a driver's walking up, trying to tell you, hey, listen, this is what we're doing. We're drivers. This is how we're going to change the kind of change the industry of ride share. This right here is how we do it. We get 100% of the money, blah, blah, blah. And this lady, oh, don't give me that. I'm an Uber driver. I know what I'm doing. Whatever, bitch. Apparently you don't. Because if you turning down a financial opportunity like this, and we all making this fucking money, and you, oh, no, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a loyal Uber driver. Can't wait till they fucking snatch your rental car from your ass. Can't wait till they fucking kick you off the platform. Because they, well, we don't need drivers in your area no more. We're going to just bounce. Well, I've been an Uber driver. No, you wasn't an Uber driver. You was a pigeon. You was a pigeon. A driver is completely different. When they throwing out these trash rides and these shit rides and these people grabbing all that, man, I can't do it. I can't do it. Say no to pigeon pay. <laughs> That's what it is. Say just say no to pigeon pay, damn it. Say no. See, I got my Prius tenant and took a lift twice last couple of months. Both drivers were named Carlos, mostly Latinos doing these cheat rides. And one guy was driving a 2007 Prius. I encouraged him to switch to delivery. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hertz going out of business again, man. And see, the thing is, I made my Hertz video a long time ago, but I tell you, some motherfuckers think some channels are slow. They're very slow. Because when I did my Hertz channel, my Hertz video saying people was paying up to $25,000 a year to rent these cars. And these cars was made for rich people. They weren't made for broke ass people that, that can't even afford like a regular car. They can't. These are rich people cars. Priuses are not just like, you know, like everybody was buying Chrysler 300s when they fucking came out. Because Chrysler 300s was pieces of shit when they first came out. And now everybody's thinking, oh, I can just go get me a Tesla, man. I'm going to give me a Tesla. These are rich people cars. But these apps got you thinking because they went out and bought a ton of these fucking Teslas for this agenda shit with the oxygen and the CO2. And they got idiots living in apartment complexes renting Teslas at $2,000 a month. But you ain't never paid $2,000 a month for no car note in your life. But you driving around in a car that's costing you $2,000 a month. And I'm sitting there like, can you do you not realize that these motherfucking rental cars are investments? And, they're, and you are feeding into the investment scheme? It's a scheme. Two G's a month to rent a car you will never own when you could probably go buy your own car for like 500 a month, 400 a month. Be done with it. And people said, oh, man, I'm going to go. Fuck. I'm not going to ever blow an engine. I've been doing this for five years. I ain't blown no engine. Say if people out there blowing engines, they're not good drivers. If motherfuckers is wrecking cars all the time, they're not good drivers. When you're a good driver, you got to know how to take care and maintain your car because the driver drives a maintained car. If you ain't maintaining your shit, you ain't no good driver. It's like. It's like not having a pit crew. You're just going to keep doing laps on this motherfucker until you blow the engine out. You got to stop sometimes pit crew this motherfucker. See what's up. Yeah, Teslas are data mining all the drivers to gather all the information to replace you. And Marcel, I got a video on my phone about that. That is it's called a, um, oh, I can't remember the name, but it's called like a Zenith report or something weird like that. But what it is, is your car collects data. Everybody's car collects data. That data is sent to this like Zenith report, or whatever the fuck it is. Insurance companies buy that data. Other people buy that data and they sell that data. Our cars are taking data on us all the time. I got it in my phone. I'm going to do this. But they're buying data off of all of us. Uber's buying data. Hertz is buying. Everybody's buying data from our cars reporting back and forth because they're all connected to Wi-Fi and all this other Bluetooth shit and everything else. And once they do that, your insurance costs go up high and you're like, why is my insurance going up? Because your insurance company bought data from this data agency. This lady had a, a report that was this damn thick of every time she was hard accelerating, hard braking, you know, hard turn, no turn signal when using a turn, no seat belt click. I mean, it was given everything imaginable, everything you do in that car from the time you started to the time you turn it off. People can buy all that data. 
and insurance companies are buying it, raising up people. And some people can't even get insurance. They can't get it. A lot of Uber drivers probably can't get insurance because they don't know they have a report on them. And they're like, well, how come I'm, you, you're quoting me $250 a month for insurance and my own insurance is $68 a month? Because they bought that report. That report showed that you've been the Uber driver. You've been driving like fucking a bat out of hell. You've been doing turns with no turn signal, hard braking, hard accelerating, no seatbelts. It shows everything. And all these cars are getting, all this data is being bought by places like Uber, places like Lyft. And they're saying, you know what? We're going to upload all this data too into our driverless systems as far as like knowing what areas have certain traffic patterns at what times of the day. Everything we're doing, we're doing it to replace us. And I'm like, we got to get off these apps, man. And a lot of people ain't even like figured it out yet. Yeah, that's it, man. Rental cars are like chains on a plantation. That's it, man. Because once they got you locked in and they got access to your bank account, there's nothing you can really do about it. Because you're going to wake up one day and be like, man, what did I get this hit for $617 for? Y'all took out $500 two days ago. Oh, yeah, we did $617 for a wear and tear maintenance fee. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Well, you had the car for over a month, so we just take out an arbitrary fee every month. They do shit like that to people's bank accounts all the time. Once they get it, they snatch it. Man, does Hum offer referrals for signing up new drivers? Nope, they don't offer that yet. I mean, it's too small of an app to really do that right now. Because, and like I said, the money's good. You're not going to need no referral, man. You're getting 100% of the money, real shit. And the way I look at it is that the rideshare industry is multi-billion dollar industry. Ain't none of us got that much money in our bank accounts. Therefore, we're not making that much money. I have no problem signing up new drivers, telling riders about the platform, telling, I have no issue doing that. People, oh, well, the more drivers you sign up, you're signing up your own competition. No, I'm not. I'm ex I'm in expanding the ride share experience for all the contractors out there. We're all you can't do 100 percent of the rides in this city. Otherwise, you'd be a fucking billionaire right now. If you did 100 percent of the rides in any city, you'd probably be a billionaire. There's no way to do it because too many people need a ride right now. And you only got one car. So even people who are your private clients are going to eventually get me one day because you only have one car. So I've never had a problem like helping somebody understand ride share and expanding it in a smart, intelligent way. Because the more smart drivers we have, the less, yes, Lexus Nexus, that's the report. That's it, the Lexus Nexus. That's it, go gig it. That's that damn report, man. <sighs> yeah, but the less, the less pigeons we got out there, the better it is for the money that we're going to get, what the riders are getting, for the value of what they get. It's going to be better for everybody. Pigeons screw it up for everybody. And they really think they're doing something amazing. Oh, I did 42 rides today, man. Averaging $7 a ride. I made $280, 42 rides. I'm like, you can make $280 on like three rides doing hum. I'm dead serious. You can make $280 doing three rides. What up, Jesse? She mainly didn't want to pay to drive. I was like, you make that up out in one ride. She was like, no, I'm good. All right, pigeon. And see, that's the thing. She says she don't want to pay to drive. She has no idea that she's paying to drive every time she books it. Every time an Uber ride comes to her fucking phone. Tell her, look at the fees. The rider paid $42. You got 20, which means you paid $22 to be sitting on this fucking app to get that $20 ride that somebody paid $42 for. You paid that money. Those are fees. So instead of me getting a $20 ride from somebody, I'm going to get a $35 ride. So Uber's going to charge 42. I might charge 35, but I'm not taking 20. And I'm sitting there like, man, this shit's crazy. And these people, they don't get it because they're not, for one, they're not business savvy. For two, they're not profit driven. For three, they don't sit there and understand that opportunity costs exist. When you're taking a $20 ride on Uber, if me and you, we pull up to the exact same curb right now. You take a $20 ride on Uber because your people paid $42. My people is about to pay the same $42. I give them the card and I say, hey, instead of paying that $42, how about we do this for $35? I like $35. All right, here's my card. Download that app. I just need your phone number because I'm going to put it in here. We're going to do it for $35. Cash app Venmo. So they just saved $7. And instead of me making $20, I made $35. I made $15 more. You still sitting at $20. They still sitting at $42 paying. It's a huge gap. And with that gap, they're pricing your ass out of the ride share industry. That $22 that Uber, ma Uber made, they pricing you out of the fucking industry. And he's, oh, I don't want to pay a dollar a day to be on an app. A dollar a day. You just gave Uber $22.
You gave Uber, and that's just for one ride. You gave them $22. Your next ride, you might give Uber $16. Your next ride, you might give them $4. Your next ride, you might give them $12. All I paid was $1 all day. I just paid $1. But every time somebody books, the money that you don't see that that rider is paying an app, and all you're getting is a little fraction of it, you're paying that. That difference is what you're paying. That profit is what you're giving away. You're giving it to a corporation who's getting rid of you. You're giving it to a corporation who's praying for your downfall, who's wanting to rip you off and put you in rental cars and shit. And, and like I said, ladies like that, she don't get it. She don't get it. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking that you can't always, like I say in some live streams, everybody's not going to be able to leave the dock with us. Some people are very slow thinking. Mentally, they've never been there. We have people who are financially illiterate. We got people who are socially inept. We have those. Not everybody's going to be on the shit we own. So we got to be okay with leaving ladies like that in the fucking dust. Because what we're going to do is see in about fucking a year from now, that same lady sitting on Facebook with a fucking GoFundMe. When we just try to give her the information to get her own funds. She's going to be, oh, I used to be an Uber driver. You know, I, this and that, I had an accident. I, I'm just looking for anybody to help me with anything they can. Like, motherfucker, I gave you advice that would have paid. But you didn't even want the advice. You was re you'd rather pay three, four hundred dollars a day to Uber. Three, four hundred dollars a day to Uber is what you pay. Instead of paying one dollar a day and taking all the profits of every ride you do. Man, I'm telling you, pigeon in the brain, man. Pigeon in the brain. Look at that. 300 on seven rides yesterday went home. 300 on seven rides. That's crazy. That's crazy. Like I said, when I do hum rides, it'd be quick. Twenty dollars, thirty dollars. It'd be like six miles. I'd be like, man, I just charged like 25 bucks. All right, cool, cool. Put the phone number in. And it's like every ride's like that. No nature hikes at all. I never do nature hikes. And I'm just like, and yesterday I was just sitting in in um in Tempe, just going in circles. I made about, almost about $160, $170 in about three hours. And I didn't even go nowhere. And I'm like, I made some of it on Lyft, some of it on Hum. But I was going from like Tempe Marketplace to like, you know, Broadway and and like um like whatever uh baseline or Broadway and like rural easy places. So I'm sitting there like, man, says Jeff, make sure you ask him, will they do something similar to Lux and Lux Black? Yeah, they talked about that already. But right now, when you go to the humridechair.com website, you will see what tiers they have right now. But they're going to start graduating and going into those levels once they start getting more drivers that have those certain type of cars on those levels. Because like Billy, he's got a big SUV. He's got a big Escalade. It's not black. And a lot of people got really nice cars, but most of them aren't black. So to have a Lux Black and a Lux in a Black platform, it won't work. And right now, even with, with what I'm being paid on basic, I'm, I was making that shit with Lux on Lyft. I mean, with Lyft, I was doing like one or two mile rides, getting like 9 to $11. I'm getting the exact same thing on Hum right now. So it's like I just got upgraded to Lyft again. I'm, I'm not doing like basic no more. When I drive on Hum, I'm not doing basic. I took a ride. Lyft tried to give me a ride for $17 from North Scottsdale to downtown Central Avenue, $17. I told the girl, I said, well, I'm not doing it for 17. I'll tell you what, I'll do it for 35. And she said, oh, well, that's what I pay Lyft anyways. I was like, cool. Then just like, because I get 100% of the money if you pay me directly. Says, I just, that's what I do on, I said, cool. Cancel her motherfucking Lyft ride. Put her on hum real quick. I got the 35. She didn't have to pay Lyft the 35. She was paying them that 35 anyways, but she gave me the 35. I didn't have to go through my phone and say, well, let me see what the, what the app would charge. Fuck that. To me, it was worth 35. It was a long ass ride from way up there all the way down there. I said 35. She said, well, that's what Lyft was charging me anyways. I'm like, cool. Yeah, no sweat off your back. The only difference is I get all the money and I don't have to sit and do a $17 ride giving away $18 like that fucking pigeon that uh, Kev was talking to. The pigeon, she would have took 17. I'll take the 17. Fuck that. No, I'll take the 35. St. Louis Independent. Thank you, Jeff. I do short hops at like that's life for me until something better comes along. Yeah. And that's what you got to do. You got to do like you got to do short hops, man, because that's where your high profit margins are going to be. Seven dollars for one mile because you got surge or whatever. Eleven dollars for like three miles because trying to go, you know, 30 miles and you're getting like nineteen dollars that, that you're losing because you could do three rides and probably do a total of about eight miles in three rides and make $21 because you did three, three, three. So you went eight miles instead of going 30 miles, 22 whole miles. You didn't put on your engine and you got probably two or $3 more by going way less miles. That's how short trips work. 
Yeah. And that's the thing. Hey, Austin, man. And that's the thing, man. Time to wake up because if, if we're time, uh, he did the 800 last two nights out here, got the Space Foundation Symposium here in Colorado this week, showing all my friends and family good time there. Preach. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's what it is. Time. He's in Colorado. And if you know how your service is, you know how your car it is, your car is, you know what you're doing out there. You don't have to let these apps tell you what you're worth. Because if you let them tell you what you're worth, they're going to keep paying you less and less and less. Then they're going to start charging you fees. Oh, we're going to move the cash out fee up higher. And then they're going to have some other fee. Oh, we're and then my girl Christy hit me up and I should have put that in the video too. So check this shit out. She's driving in Illinois to go pick up somebody. So she goes, picks the person up, drops them off everything. She hits the app up. She says, hey. I went through a couple of toes or whatever. I like to be reimbursed for my toes. She's got the, I got screenshots and everything and she's messaging support about it. I like to be reimbursed for my toes. They was like, give us one second. So they come back. We've looked at your toes. And since you didn't have a passenger in the car, when you went through the toes, we can't reimburse you. She had to go through toes because that's where the app was leading her to go pick the person up. So Uber sent her through toes to pick the person up but wouldn't reimburse her because she didn't have the rider in the car yet. They only reimburse if she had the rider in the car. I'm like, what kind of shit is that? So Uber can send you through like three, four, five tolls. You do a, a ride or whatever. And now the money you just made, and she didn't even make a profit. She made a loss on the ride because she had to pay for those tolls to get to the person thinking she was going to get reimbursed. Nope. She did not get reimbursed. So she was like, in a, she was in my email like, fuck this. I'll never do another toll ride again. I was like, exactly what I would say. I ain't never doing another toll ride again, ever. What I would do is I, if I had to go through tolls to get to the person, I'd get there. I'd cancel that shit. And I'd say, listen, I went through two or three tolls. Uber's not going to reimburse me for it. But I wanted to come pick you up. They don't reimburse us for tolls unless you're in the car. So this is what I'll do. We'll do this ride for $25. Cause I'm not taking eleven dollars, and I just paid all these fucking tolls. I'll do it for twenty five. Oh well, shit! I was paying the app twenty eight. Like yeah, exactly. Just give me the twenty five. And it's like there's no way you're gonna have these drivers out here driving at a loss all day just so they can make profits on our back. But see, just like the lady that Kev talked to, bird brain, the fucking pigeon. I don't want to pay to be on an app. You don't think tolls are fucking money? You don't think Uber and Lyft making drivers pay tolls is fucking money? I mean, I don't want to pay a dollar a day just to be on an app called Hum. Why would I pay a dollar a day? But you'll sit around and pay tolls all fucking day, losing your share of the profits all day. You'll do that all day long. I'm paying one dollar a day. But you willing to lose everything you pay in tolls. You're willing to lose half the money that the customer is paying that should be coming to you. You willing to lose all of that to hold on to a funky ass dollar. This is how people's brain fucking works. I'm like, if you're going to give me all that money and all I got to do is give you a dollar, take the fucking dollar. Now, give me all the money. Give me. A, OK, here's your toll money back, Jeff. Here's, you know, the rider payment. The rider paid 100 percent. Here's the rider payment. And this, all these riders paid all this money. Here's all that money, Jeff. Thanks for the dollar, Jeff. But you got bird brain out there. Bird brain. out. I'm not paying no dollar. That's too much. But losing all that fucking money is not too much. This is why people go broke. They don't have business savvy. They don't even understand opportunity costs. They don't even see what's going on in front of them with the shit right in front of them. You can put the truth right in front of them. I said this in live streams before. You can put the truth right in people's faces and they still will doubt it. I will say, listen, you did four rides. Each person paid $20 a piece. That's $80 that could have went in your pocket. $80. But out of that 20, you got nine out of each one. So you got $36. You got 36 instead of 80. That's $44 you lost. You lost $44 because you wanted to keep a funky ass $1 bill in your hand saying, I don't want to pay a dollar. So because you didn't want to pay that one funky dollar, like drop it in somebody's hand, you gave up $44 of opportunity. You gave that shit up. How stupid are some of these people, man? I'm like, here's my dollar. Okay, Jeff, for each ride, they pay $20 a piece, and each one of those 20s is yours now. That's it. That's it, because you're doing it on Hum. You're not doing it on Uber. Had you did it on Uber, out of each one of those 20s, you get nine, 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 nine. But because you paid Hum, you paid that $1, you get 20, 20, 20, 20. 
Pigeons don't get it, man. Like I said, some people are not that fucking smart. They're not that bright. People say common sense is not that common. Talking to women like that, not that common. Not that common. Oh, yeah. And see, and Hum only charges $30 a month to subscription to use the app, but that's only for my car. I got a sedan. XLs, the big SUVs are a little more because you get better rates for the SUVs. And a lot of, like, I know when somebody said that the other day, saying something about, you pay $30 a month, you know, it isn't, I was like, man, fucking slow, slow. I mean, I've said it a gazillion fucking times in every video I've ever said. I've never not said it because <laughs> I make sure I include that. Because I don't want people to think you just sign up for home for free because there it used to be free. When we first signed up a long time ago, it was free. But now to help support the app and to breed and to bring it around, they had to charge a dollar. I'm like, fuck it. You went from zero to one dollar in a day. You went from zero to 100 fucking pennies. That's all you did. I mean, I could see if you went from zero to have to pay $50 a day to be on your app. That would be different. $50 a day on your app, that might be a little different. But you went from zero to one dollar. Like I said, my son got a ton of fucking change right next to me. If I need to take change out of here just so I can go out and make the twenty dollars per ride, I'll go do the twenty dollars per ride. But I'm not going to sit there and be like, oh, no, I'm going to stay on Uber and Lyft. I'd rather get seven dollars a ride. I'm not paying no dollar just to get twenty dollars a ride. Fuck that. I'll take the seven dollars a ride all day. Pigeons, man. Pigeons, man. And hey, the Hum app is not available everywhere. It's only available in Phoenix right now because that's where these guys designed it. That's the, the infrastructure they got going for it right now. So we've been building it only in Arizona. And I'll try to say that in every video so people don't be freaked the fuck out when they say, hey, it says Ark only download in Arizona. I'm like, well, I've said that before. I'm like, I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody on this motherfucker speak English because I don't see no Chinese symbols in this motherfucker nowhere. <laughs> it's like, man. But I try to let people know, you know, as, as soon as... You know, this app starts expanding. I'm pretty sure they're going to let us know, hey, guys, we not only are we in Arizona, but we expanded to New Mexico or we expanded to Texas. Or we, They're going to let us know because it probably opens up an, an ability for us to now go. to Like when I take somebody to Vegas now, I take them to Vegas on Uber. I can't get a ride in Vegas to come back. I can't do that. Because Uber has me registered only here. So therefore, I take somebody to Vegas or I take somebody to, you know, New Mexico. I'm ass. I got to come back on dead miles unless I do a cash ride on hum. Hopefully, if they have it like that, we can do inner city rides where I can leave here and go to another state, pick up somebody in another state, bring them back here. And it's all on their insurance It's all covered and everything. Because with the way these these apps currently do lift the same way, they'll send you to a whole nother state. But then say, yeah, you got to come back on your own dime. You didn't give me enough to come here to begin with. And that's why, like the other day, somebody was being offered $175. I think he got like $1,000 or something crazy like that. It was being offered like $175. He got a full tank of gas, plus that was $1,300. $1, that was just one way, $1,300 one way. And then he got a full tank of gas on top of that and an offer to come back and pick him up for another $1,300. $2,600 cash ride, 100% cash ride. And I'm guaranteeing a lot of fucking people, you shouldn't do that. That's too risky. It's like, motherfucker, it's risky just to walk out the door every day. It's a risk, but we we got to be willing to take it. This shit's called life. Nobody's 100% sure about 100% of shit every day. You walk out the house, you hope shit goes right. If it don't go right, you just deal with it. A lot of shit like that has happened. Oh, yeah, when that home app goes, yeah, dollar a day is going to add up. It's going to add up real quick. And this is the thing, man, because y'all know how I rock. I would be one of those people that... You know, I would want to vet drivers. I would want to ask drivers about, hey, hey, you ever heard of this driver? Where is he at? Uh, he lives in this, this. Yeah, I heard of him. Oh, man, dude, stupid, man. He's stupid, man. He's always like harassing women all the fucking time. He's always saying shit about girls. All, you might not. He might be a lawsuit waiting to happen, man. I don't know about that, dude. So I would be vetting motherfuckers through other drivers that know him. Like if one driver says it, cool. Ask another driver. Okay, now two motherfuckers said the same thing. Damn, four people said the same thing. This might be a liability to us. Because a lot of times, most people ain't, they don't vet properly. I'm a person that will go through a whole fucking friends list. So I'll say sometimes it's not about who you are, it's who you hang with. So I want to look around and see how you hang with, who you fuck with. Because at some point, that person is going to cost you a whole lot of money through a lawsuit or something crazy because of some shit they did. Oh, yeah, man, he likes to flirt with girls when they get in his car. He likes to try to pick up girls when they get in the car. Every time he's always bragging about flirting with girls and picking up girls in the car. That might be somebody you don't want on your app because they don't know how to mix. They're mixing business with pleasure all the fucking time. They don't know how to do it. We in here to make money. We in here to get business, man. We shit. This dude, he looking for a piece of ass. 
you gonna get sued, man. Fuck fucking with this guy. Don't let him on your app. You're gonna get sued. So it's like, yeah. Okay, $39.99 is the XL. Okay, that's it. The XL, yeah. Oh no, it's P. Diddy. I'm telling you, man. That's shit. And that's the thing. P. Diddy on the app, motherfucker. And some of these dudes be bragging about that shit, man. Okay, you got it. Uh a dollar fifty a mile, ten dollar pickup. Now, see, now me being in a sedan, I get five dollars for the pickup, and I get one dollar a mile, twenty five cents a minute. And I'm gonna tell you right now, that minute shit was adding up because we were at Bike Weekend. There was a little traffic on the highway. There was shit going here. I mean, we by the time I got off the highway, I was taking people to hotels literally across the highway, getting almost twenty dollars to go like three miles. No surge. There's no surge pricing. That's what the rate was. That was the rate. So when you get that five dollars, you get that dollar a mile, then that time starts adding up every four minutes that passes. You get an extra dollar every four minutes, every four minutes, every four minutes. If it takes you 25 minutes to get there, that's eight extra dollars because eight goes into uh, eight goes into 25, like what, three, four times. You damn near got eight extra dollars right there. Just driving. What up, DB? DeAndre, my brother. Yeah. And that's another thing with Hum, man. Hum, hum allows you to do things like what me and db did the other day like we had the i had a group of 10 so this girl flew in group of 10 i hit jamil up and i was like jamil man they need a couple of suvs jamil was like oh shit i gotta go do this and that. i was like bet he's like, I already got somebody and i was like damn so i said you know what i'm gonna hit up db and i'm gonna make sure that he can do it and he was like i could take six i was like perfect then i'll take four so he got a little more of the money than i got but it's cool because he took more of the load than i got and he stated his own price, did his own thing and all that shit. They paid him right there in the car and all that. We all giving out cars, doing shit. We can drive them around on hum insurance all day. We never have to go through Uber and Lyft. Never have to go through our own private insurance. We can just do Uber. We can do hum insurance all day doing shit like that. All kind of bachelorette parties, bachelor parties. We could do that shit all day. And then all DB, I forgot to tell you, man. So, so I go pick the girl <laughs> I pick up Alexa because you sent me Alexa's number for the airport ride the next morning. So I go pick up Alexa. She was like, can you be here at 315? Because it was 330. She said, can you be here at 315? So I said, okay, bet. So I drove up and I picked her up at 350. I got there early. She was, and I had bags in the car and everything. She says, all the food at the Airbnb they had to get rid of, none of this shit was open. It was two bottles of alcohol that was open. That was it. So Everything that was in the refrigerator, a huge refrigerator full of mouse. I got so much shit in my fridge right now. Man, I had a whole thing of brand new bacon, bagels, tons of fucking white claws. Man, all these white claws. I'm like, holy shit. Man, I had so much. Um, well, I got some some potatoes all grot, man. It's so much food. Them, that girl loaded me up, man. She loaded me up. I don't know what the deductible is for hum, but that's a good question. And you're gonna be able to answer that. You're gonna be able to ask that when the uh ceo gets online so keep all these questions good that's why i wanted to bring him on and i'm glad he said it because a lot of people are asking me shit like i run the company i just started driving like a couple of weeks ago i don't know shit about this company real shit all i know is it allows me to do what i want to do and that's it that's all i care about i'm not a micromanaging person i've never been an employee-minded person if you tell me go out drive make money and have a good time see you in a week that's all i need i don't like uber and lyft i don't like uber and lyft I don't like that. Oh, yeah. You know, you need to go do this and you need to do that. And when you get here, make sure you do this. And if they say quiet, be quiet. And if they say talking to be talk. I mean, Uber micromanages the shit out of people for the amount of money we get paid. We don't get paid shit to be micromanaged to that degree. All you got to tell me is, hey, man, go out there, give out the card, make as much money as you can. Be OK if you get people involved in the platform, you know, get other drivers involved in it. You want to get somebody to put them on an app. You can use our commercial insurance. Cool. Motherfucker, that's all you got to tell me. You ain't got to micromanage me, motherfucker. I'm out. I'm out. Yeah, oh yeah, DV, that was funny shit. So send me a picture of I said, give it to Jeff, man. I took all that shit, man. I took all that shit. It was she brought out like at least four bags to the tilt. A ton of eggs, man. I'm in there eating motherfucking eating those goddamn um tortillas, like soft shell tortillas. I'm rolling up eggs and bacon and shit, man. I'm like, this shit's crazy. This all that food, man. I'm tearing it up. Appreciate it, appreciate it. <laughs> Okay, three fifty nine a year, yeah. So that's it. That's how much it costs for XL three fifty nine a year. But then, uh, hold up, Juan Vargas said sedans up to four passenger twenty nine ninety five a month two sixty nine a year save ninety XL up to six passengers thirty nine ninety five a month or three fifty nine a year save one twenty. And that's it. And I'm gonna tell you right now, within the first ride or two, 
you're going to make your 20 like in my first ride on home first ride i got 35 dollars. so my first ride had already paid for my whole month already and so that was that was the other day so for the rest of the month i don't have to pay anything i've already made my money back everything else now is just profit all month it's all profit whatever i charge people is what i get there is no you know lift adjusted fee there's nobody stealing my fucking tips there's no none of that's going on now so you are free and clear mentally to go out and work all month long on hum and not worry about man i hope this person tipped me 10 bucks man if they don't give me no tip man i'm gonna have to call uber i'm gonna have to call lyft they don't give me a tip oh man they didn't give me my surge last night uber surge check this shit out yep tortillas breakfast alcohol shit i'll take the alcohol if you don't drink Oh, you can have it, man. She, it was all tequila and vodka, big ass bottles, man. I just don't drink because I don't have enough time, man. I don't got enough hours in the day to drink. I wish I had more time. I used to drink. I used to even smoke weed. I just ain't got time. <laughs> I like weed, motherfucker. Trust me, I like weed. I just ain't got time to smoke that shit right now. No, but it was like, what was I saying? Damn, Jeff, I'm gonna help him expand. Real shit, the waddle. That's what's up. No, but on, on Uber. So yesterday, I'm sitting in my house yesterday. And I'm like, let me, and it was a $21 surge down the street behind me, $14 surge at the stop, at the stop sign at the end of my street, $14 surge. So I'm like, I fired a car up, put it on Paw Patrol. I drive, it goes plus 375. I'm like, cool, I got 375. Drive, I hit the 14. I'm waiting on the screen to say 14. Waiting on the screen to four, screen never said 14. It didn't say anything. It didn't say 375 or 14. And I'm thinking, did I just lose the surge? And it was still, it was still red. So I accepted a ride. Motherfuckers said plus 375. I'm sitting on top of 14 at the stop sign. Sitting. I mean, you can expand and everything. I'm sitting on it. It said 375. I said, well, I'm going to decline that to see if it gives me 14. I declined it. As soon as I declined it, the whole red disappeared instantly. It was a phantom surge, man. It was a fucking phantom surge. They gave me 375, even though I'm sitting on 14 and it was still showing 21 down the street. But the moment I hit decline, I didn't want that ride. Everything disappeared. My 375, the 14, the 20, everything disappeared instantly. And this is how they're getting people to go to certain areas. They're putting up phantom surges that don't even exist. You think it's good money. Oh, man, $14. Luckily, I live down the street. Imagine if I drove from way over somewhere to get that shit. I'd be pissed off. Man, I'd be pissed off. And I'm like, 375. I said, no, nah, let me. I said, let me decline and see if it says 14. Everything disappeared. All red went gray. And I'm like, wow they ain't give me the 14 that's crazy i could have just parked back in a driveway i just turned it on home and that's where i picked up the people from like tempe marketplace and shit like that yeah i've got four months paid at, off after just one week with home and i'm telling you man i'm telling you what one words hey even if home charged 60 for a black and 80 to 100 for a black suv it will still be worth it because i'm, I'm gonna tell you like this one with those uh with the black rides like even one guy he had the big um he just had a white Suburban. I can't remember his name. I think his name was Jeremy. I don't know. But he had a white Suburban. This dude was doing three-mile rides in that big-ass Suburban. Damn near $40. Three miles. Just going around the corner, picking up somebody, dropping up at a hotel, coming back. Damn near 40 bucks. That's how. That's the McSales, man. The McSales be making money on home because you get 100% of the money. You get 100% of the money. And that's why, you know, I can't wait to the CEO gets on and explains how this thing is all laid out. Because a lot of people are like, well, if this small ass company can do it, why can't, you know, Uber do it? Why can't Lyft do it? Why? What the hell is like Uber and Lyft are massive because Uber and Lyft give, giving everybody hundreds of millions of dollars in contract bonuses, 10 million contract bonuses, giving everybody like, you know, stocks left and right. They want to bleed this company. The executives and the employees of Uber and Lyft want to bleed this company. Hum is not trying to bleed. Hum is trying to pay. They're just like, hey, man, we're trying to pay. What up, Tom, Luke, my man, Sparta? And they're sitting there going, you know, we want to pay drivers. If you guys get on and build here, it, like I said, it's not even truly like a ride share app because I think a ride share app micromanages your time and everything. This is more like, uh, an, like I said, an opportunity. It's an opportunity. And I'm going to hold up for a second. Let me do this real quick. Uh, I don't know if Big Kev is out there. Wait a minute. Let's let's see if we get Big Kev in here because I know I want to talk about some of Kev's numbers, what he was doing. Kev, if you see that link, man, hit that link up because Kev he was doing good up there, and I'm sitting there like, man, if if all of us and like I said, we made all it was only a handful of us and we made like four G's in four days, almost a thousand dollars a day, like four of us. 
So that was almost $250 a day we was each raking in, but that was only on home. We were all still doing cash rides and we were all still doing Uber and Lyft rides. 250, almost average, what we, it was crazy, crazy. I was making probably about seven, seventy dollars a day. Well, sixty a day for my one client, sixty bucks a day. But then I was doing like little ten dollar hops. You know, I was doing. I did a big cash ride. So one day I made over two hundred and sixty five dollars on hum. That's it, two sixty five on just hum in one day. And I didn't even work that many. I did my morning client was thirty thirty. So and then the other two hundred came from one lady was thirty five. I did a couple of quick conversions or whatever. Ended up with two sixty. It was so fast. It was so fast, man. Let's see what Kev says. Jeff is indeed the man. Thinking of calling him Father Jeff. <laughs> Hang on a second. I got to do some finagling here. Oh, you good, brother? You good? There we go. There you go. Yeah, man. So, that go. so, how was your weekend with Hum? Where was your first ride at? My first ride, um, my first week with Hum, my first ride was here in Tempe. I took a gal that was just south of Spence to yeah, the bank of Wells Fargo when we had that call last week. Yeah. I jumped off the call, came back on the call, was sitting there at the Wells Fargo bank parking lot. Bang, she dinged again. I took her <laughs> back home. <laughs> you know, so I made $21 for three miles. That And, and that's just basic. That's basic. These are not upgraded rides, y'all. These are not even upgraded rides. This is basic. So if they're giving us $21 for three, if you did that on Uber or Lyft, you'd probably make $6 total. Uber would yeah. pay, Lyft would pay you $2.62, $2.62 a ride. Yeah. So you get $2.62 and $2.62. You'd be walking around with like $5.30, but yet you got $20. That's $15 more. All because well, you pay a dollar a day. All because well, you pay a dollar a day. Even on my channel, I did a comparison of the same mileage that I took her and compared it to what Lyft and Uber uh, were charging people. Yeah. And what they were charging people and what I got paid were totally different. I got mm -hmm. paid 60% or I got paid 40% of the fare. Whereas with her, it was a hundred percent. So, I mean, I, I mean, that was just it. I mean, it was oh, yeah. freaking crazy. The, the difference. Yeah. And Kev's channel is Bighorn Kev. If you guys want to go check out his breakdown, it's Bighorn Kev. And like I said, I got to go check it out. I might use some of that in one of my videos coming up because you actually did the breakdown comparative. I was, like I said, it was so crazy, dude. I didn't have time to even count cash. I was coming home to drop off money. It was yeah. nuts, dude. It was crazy. Yeah, I, didn't, I, didn't, I haven't done any cash rides yet and haven't done a manual ride yet, although I did play around with it this afternoon after they showed us in the meeting. That was my yeah. biggest thing was I just wasn't sure about it. And then this meeting this afternoon just, cleared everything up for me and i totally yeah. understand how it's going now it's going to be a piece of cake yeah well anthony uh, showed me prop he showed me manual rides when he brought that guy up to the car my man rob yeah. that was picking up every morning that was my big 30 dollar ride every day yeah. so he yeah. walked me he says jeff do this is a manual ride so he told me hit these arrows hit this hit this these die and he walked me through it it was quick it was quick and also kev i got a lady named princess lives over in your area over in the mesa area okay. down main street or whatever but she hit me up for two rides already, but I'm way over here. So I'm going to text you her information and her number, and I'm going to text her and just let her know that you're her new driver. Okay. Because, and she was willing to pay me $25, but I was like, I text, I showed her a picture of where I was. The lady, I'm like 30 minutes away from you. <laughs> so, yeah, that, I mean, that's just it too. Is, uh, that's the one thing I'm doing too is, uh, I'm marketing. You know, like I said, I got my, uh, I just put this out just about an hour ago. You know, yeah. I got my name on my cards now. Okay, so, so you now, got the stamp on the back. Yeah, I got the stamp on the back. Cost me twenty four bucks online. I went down to uh, Office Max there off of uh, Broadway and uh, Rural. Yeah, and it was there waiting for me. And uh, okay. actually, then I got uh, what I showed you earlier. Let's see what I do with it. Oh, hang on a second. Oh yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, he got all the QR codes and everything like that. He's got everything laminated, ready to go. So, and like I said, this is your business. You're building your business. Yeah. Uh oh, he done dropped off. He done dropped off. Where you at, Kev? Where you at? Let me put the link back for you, man. Unless you lost it, Kev done dropped off. Oh yeah, Austin. That's what we do, man. We My we, bad. we give each other clients all the time. So, like, and I'll, I'll give my clients to Kev because Kev lives on that side of town. So 
it would be worth it would be a loss for me to keep this client to myself. I have to give it to Kev because Kev lives on that side of town. And she's like a little 22 year old girl. She's an investor. She's a 22 year old investor. She's opening up, um, uh, not dispense. She's opening up. Uh, what do you call those things when you put money in and you get your sodas out? Soda machine. In? No, it's not a soda machine. It's like a you know what it's called a vending machine. That's what it is. Vending a vending machine. Because yeah. I don't use those motherfuckers. You know how. But so she's she's starting a vending machine business, and this girl's sharp. She's sharp. But this is somebody. She don't have a car. She wants to open up her vending machine. She's going to need a driver because she needs to get to places to talk to people to get her products and get her ideas out there. So she's I'm going to text you her information tonight and I'm going to yeah. text her to let her know. I'll probably call her on the phone and let her know because I got a okay. picture of us anyway. So I'll send her a picture and just let her know, hey, Kev's going to be your driver because he lives on your side of town. But, if you know, if if everything works out, man, you, you might really hit a good lick with it because good. she's got a lot of driving that she needs done to help get her business off the ground. So. And that's just it, too, is, you know, with Hum, we're all, I mean, we you can get a ride all over Phoenix. Yeah. And yep. what I, I don't want to have to take a, somebody call me and say, hey, I'm over here in uh, BFE Surprise. Can you come get me? <laughs> that's me. I'm all over the place, man. I had to send you know, her a picture. I said, look at her. I'm like, look at where I am, lady. And you're in Mesa right now. I was like, I'm like 30 minutes away from you. She was yeah. like, oh, I'm sorry about that. I was willing to pay you $25. I'm like, shit, I would have took that $25. I was next to you. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing is just passing out cards to where I'm working at. Yeah. And, you know, those people are taking the rides that I want because I'm only taking the five mile rides, just like you. Yeah. I don't do no freaking nature hikes, although I did. I made thirty one dollars taking somebody from uh, uh, ASU to the uh, um, uh, aquarium up there and uh, talking stick or whatever. OK, OK. That's so, not but, bad, though, because yeah. Uber would probably pay us like nine to eleven dollars for that. Yeah, because I, I get talking stick rides all the time from ASU. Eight dollars, nine dollars. I'm like, how are you going to send me up to one on one for nine dollars? I'm yeah. like, this is fucking nuts. Yeah. And then uh, another uh, thing I, I did for somebody. And I, I mean, I could have milked these people for freaking big time bucks, but I didn't. Uh, I was taking somebody from. Uh, the storage just the other side of uh devil's advocate there yeah and they had to go to what i call the crack most crack super eight over off of uh higley and uh 60 okay yeah right off the highway yeah. yep I know yeah exactly so i could have uh took this my mom had just happened to call me right before that before i took the ride i said hey if you're planning on coming home to 60 don't it's a parking lot <laughs> oh so, i think i, I mean, remember what when, happened yeah and the route told me to go to the 60. And I'm like, hey. My route sent me around the 60 because I was leaving from Apache Junction, picking up two nurses out there, bringing them towards ASU. And they were like, why are we taking Southern? I was like, I don't know what's telling me to get off the highway because it led me off the highway and it was nobody on the highway. So I'm like, there's yeah. something going on on the 60. I don't know. Yeah. So I just went down Southern and I got back on at some point. But yeah. So anyway, I said, hey, we're going to do something here. I'm going to take us down Broadway and I'm going to save you guys some money. Because otherwise, unless you want to sit in a park uh, in a parking lot, and I'll collect twenty five cents a minute, you it'll, know? Ring, it'll ring up, man. You know, and so I love like, that hey. about Hum, man. Hum's Hum's, then I got, still, Hum's got that rate card. They're still willing to pay us for our time. Like our time is worth something yeah. to Hum. Twenty five cents a minute, and we can get so caught up in traffic. We sit anyway for saving the money. Hey, there you go. See, and you know? they still get because they're appreciative, man. Appreciative. Yeah. And, and then tomorrow, I'm like picking that. some gal up. I took her to the airport, I think on Sunday, or no, last week. I took her last week, and I passed her, you know, I was talking to her about home and everything, and uh, gave her a card, and she's like, well, I get in possibly on Wednesday, it might be Thursday, it might be Friday, would you be open to picking me up, and we'll use the hum app? I'm like, yeah, sure, no problem. Hell yeah, shay. that's, that's you know, 100% so, of the money she goes to you. To, and then she goes, if, if, if it works out good. You're going to be my driver from now on. I was like, all right, cool. Hey, and, you and know, that's, this is the, that's thing, just the way it today. works. I mean, and I think that's even like when I do pick up hum riders yeah, or hum rides, I ask them, hey, how are you enjoying this? You know, is everything going all right for you? Is it everything they said it was going to be? Uh, you know, and a lot of them like, yeah, man, you drivers get all the money. That's what we care about. I'm like, hell yeah. That's what it is. And that's what, you know, they were talking about that today on the, the Zoom call saying hum wants you 
to build your client base. They don't want you to feel that these are hum passengers. They want you to take ownership of yeah. treating these people right, giving them the best ride, staying in touch with them, doing follow-up if you can do follow-up with them. And like I said, they're still going to be on the app. But the more we treat this as a driver-rider relationship, not like where Uber is like Uber rider, then Uber the driver. Uber, And it's like they're always in the middle. They won't let us talk to like each other because they want to keep us separated. But hum, they're like, you know what? Talk to them, like call them, get, give them personal cars. Give them, these are your people. These are, yeah. you're just on our platform. These are your people. And I love that, man. No micromanaging at all. Just straight Yo, do whatever yeah, you do. Definitely. Well, you know what I like when we were up there? Who's the that? CEO is walking around in between cars and talking to every driver that's there. Yep. Yep. You know, you're not going to see Carsha Shawi or Risher there. Hell no. Because they don't, they don't even come out the yeah. building when drivers are at their building. They don't care yeah. about that. They come on the internet when they was on, you know, Roger Professor, when they was on the internet talking to people. Yeah. They never once said, I want to talk to some of these drivers out there. Is there any driver that want to ask me? They never gave a shit. These people are so out of touch with reality. They so out of touch with the average everyday driver. So to see an actual CEO, this dude putting up a ton of money, ton of life, ton of intelligence, and he's walking around us, freezing cold out there, walking between cars, making sure we got what we need. You need some more cars? You got a whole stack of cars. You need more cars? You need this? You need that? CEO doing that shit. He's out there yeah. like out there. And I'm like, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. So then the other thing I did, too, is uh, you get this piece of paper from uh, Hum. It's basically just saying the same thing your cards do and everything else. But on the back, I uh, I was at Office Max and had... I emailed their copier. Their copier copied all my QR codes. This gal that I sweet talked because I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, put all my QR codes right on the back. So then I have where it says uh, uh, "ride with us." I have that sticking up like halfway through the back of my pass passenger's uh, back pocket seat there thingy. So yeah. it says "ride with us." I actually had somebody pick it up because I was trying it out. I actually had somebody pick it up and say, "What's this?" I said, man, that's a new, that's the newest, hottest thing in freaking Phoenix right now. Yep. That's what you I know, tell you. You got to be enthusiastic here, about it. Cause if you just say, man, it's just some ride, you know, where we get a hundred percent of the fare, it just kind of fills in the gaps, you know, between Uber and Lyft. Yeah. They're not going to want to do it, man. If you sound enthusiastic, Hey man, it's a win-win for you. It's a win-win for me. Freaking you pay less. I get more. Everybody's happy. Everybody wins, man. Everybody wins. Yeah. Uh, St. Louis Independent Driver, you get those cards made. I actually get my QR codes and uh, cards made over on Vistaprint. I go to Vistaprint.com. Yeah. All I do is a screenshot and just go to Vistaprint and print them out. But yeah, yeah Hot Facts Robbers said, put your boots on the ground and earn a respect and show the people you're on their side. Real shit. And this is the yeah, one thing exactly. I was telling I was telling another lady about Hum. Because I was telling her, it's like, you know what? It, it feels like, I remember when I first did my first Uber ride. I had my Jeep. 2019 did my first Uber ride. Had no idea what I was doing. I was excited because I was starting something new. I'm used to working in my garage. I'm like, oh, man, this is my first Uber ride. I didn't know if I was getting ripped off or what. I didn't know. I'm yeah. all excited. I'm like, ooh, I'm an Uber driver. I'm an Uber driver. I was all hype. That's how it kind of feels now. Like, ride share is back again. And I know yep. I'm getting my money. I'm excited about Roger. I'm excited to show up knowing I'm going to get $35. I'm going to get $40. I'm not getting 11 for a nature hike, 13 for a nature hike. I'm about to get paid. And it feels yeah. good to know I already gave you my $30. I'm locked into your system. Every hustle I do for the next 29 days is on me now. It's all me now. And a lot of drivers that scared, if you ain't got the ability to go out and drum up business, you don't know how to negotiate contracts. You don't have to talk to people. Isn't that this might not be for you. Everything's not for everybody. Like I couldn't be a doctor because I can't stand blood and broken right. bones and shit. So everything ain't for everybody. But hum is, is for the, the entrepreneur minded, for the person who, who knows your worth, you know, your value, you know, your machine's worth it. Uber and Lyft. It's like welfare systems and shit. Honestly, that's how I'm looking. It's like a hand me down. They're throwing out that fucking cheap ass popcorn rides and shit. It's a welfare system, and they throw surge out there to trick you to come out there. They throw streaks to trick you to come out there, but you know you're being ripped off the whole time, and yeah. there's nothing you can do about it. You can't negotiate. So it's like, man. So uh, oh. this past week on Lyft, I did 975, uh, 54 rides, and I did. I got out of those 54, 37 of them got tips. I got 137 in tips, and I think I got. 25 in cash but when i look back at those numbers and everything and i look back at the rides because that's what i do after every you know every time i'm done driving and i'm you know uh 
coming down, you know, from uh, analyzing and stuff. I, I analyze the ride, say, hey, you know, did I make good decisions or I make smart, did I make stupid decisions or did I just get by? But I was looking at the numbers and it was like, on most of these freaking rides, I was only getting 40% of the fare. Yeah. And that's 975. Yeah. Imagine if I got the rest of the 60. How much well, would see, I be fucking sitting in the bank right now? Man, that's why I had no problem. Like I said, people don't see a whole lot of rides on my apps for Lyft and uh, Uber this weekend, but I was out all weekend. And people say, dude, you only did nine rides this day. You only did two rides that day. You only did three rides that day. I'm like, no, nah, motherfucker, I drove all day. You just don't see that shit on living. Because when you give me the leverage and you yeah. tell me, Jeff, use our card, use our commercial insurance, every Lyft person I rolled up to, I damn, I was damn near 100% conversion, man, 100%. Only dude I didn't convert was a guy I picked up last night because he said his company was paying for the lift ride, but he gave me a $4 tip and he sat in the car and said, I'm going to make sure you get this $4 tip. The $4 tip came through. But I said, normally I don't do these rides because I was going to try to convert them. But I gave him a hum card. He said, I'm going to download the hum app and everything. Told him all. That was the only conversion I didn't do. I was damn near 100% conversion. So when I'm driving to go pick somebody up, whether they're Uber awesome. or they lift, I'm on the point. I'm like, listen, I want to get paid. And you already paid this money anyways. I'm going to save you some money by canceling this shit. You don't pay. I don't know how much you pay, but I'm going to do this ride for $30. Oh, well, shit, cool, because I just paid 42 I was like, cool, let's do it for 30 Bet. Let's do it, man. Let's do it. Yeah, and Anthony it's, was, it's easier like that. Anthony was kind of amazed when I was passing out cards. He goes, man, you talk to everybody. You can explain this shit real good. I was like, well, I used to have to sell fucking Harley parts to fucking uh, middle-aged men who didn't want to spend a lot. Exactly. And I, said, and I said HD stands for hundreds of dollars. <laughs> you gonna spend something, David. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, if I can get them to spend freaking hundreds of dollars, I can get somebody to get in the ride. Oh yeah. And just and, giving out the cards is the first step. Just letting them yeah. know it's real. And and what I hate is when people come to my neighborhood and they trying to sell me shit by knocking on my door saying, Hey, we fix roofs. I'm like, okay, you got a card. No, we don't have cards that you got a brochure. I don't have a brochure. You yeah. could be hustling me then. But when yeah. you see somebody with an actual card and we got brochures and we got cards, phone numbers are on them, QR codes are on them, websites are on them. That shit's official. We walk yeah. around the gear on. That shit's official. But don't come knocking on my door trying to sell me a, a roofing plan if I give you my credit card information, all my shit. But you ain't even got a business card. It's like, come yeah. on, man. That's why I'm glad they already got these cards done because we don't have to tell people, well, just go to the app. And no, nah, we fucking here's a card. When you got time, hit that QR code, download it. We could do a, a cash ride right now. OK. Love that shit, man. Love it. Makes it easy. But we got to get uh, Jamil. He's getting his stuff done right now. So he's already got his uh, background check and everything going through. So he's going to start coming with us on these little hum adventures. <laughs> yeah, man. Freaking, it'd be great to have him. Uh, you know, we do hook up, like I said, and I like your Ooh, vision yeah. of wanting us to be, because that's how I explain it too, of along with hum. You know, I said, if I can't get you, I said, I'm part of a coalition of drivers here in Phoenix. We call ourselves a 300. Facts, and facts. if I can't get you, I'll find somebody that can. Yep, you know? Yep. And that, and, and that opened up a lot for me, too, because like DB, DeAndre, there was no way possible I would have been able to do that party of 10. No way possible. Because it was just about to start raining. The time was creeping up. DeAndre was like, I'm like, I know he's in Scottsdale right now. Let me hit him up real quick. And he was like, when? I was at 515. Cool. Got about an hour and a half, two hours. Bet. I'm like. I, Cause usually I like to give people, you know, five, six hours notice. Cause you might already have somebody lined up an hour and a half to it. That's not enough time. DeAndre was yeah. like, shit, let's do it. Let's do it. I was like, Oh, thank you. But I was like, I'll preach. Cause I told these girls I could do it. And they finally hit me up, but they hit me up late. Cause I, I gave my card, gave them all my information. They hit me up. They said, Hey, could you pick us up at five 15? I'm like, shit, it's like three 30 right now. I'm like, motherfucker, y'all waited all day to tell me five 15. <laughs> but he came through. DeAndre came through for me. You know, that's what I tell people too. like, hey, you know, if you want to do a private ride with me or whatever, let me know when you need me. I say, always text me about 24 hours in advance. I said, yeah. I don't make any plans past 24 hours. Yep. I said, yep. if you let me know 24 hours in advance, the time you need to do something, I said, I automatically put you in my calendar. You know, like I got yep. a Canadian guy. He goes back and forth to Canada all winter. And he calls me and says, all right, I'm coming in on this date. Here's my flight number. Boom, you know, yeah. or hey, I'm leaving for Canada. Uh, I got to be at the airport by this time. What time do you want want to pick me up? You know, all right, do do do. 
Now, now this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna ask you a question right now. Now, this sure. part of the the thing you is an hour fifteen minutes. This part you probably want to clip this out and put this on your channel for some content. I want to ask you because me and you are very different. Probably when we approach people, how do you get somebody to actually become your private client? Like, what do you say to them? You know what? I think uh, my driving and my attitude. I sell myself, and then it just becomes. And like I said, with the business card, it just becomes even more. And, I, you know, I just talked to him, ask him, hey, how are you doing? Where are you headed? You know, and uh, like I said, especially with passing out these cards, it's like, hey, do you do Uber and Lyft a lot? And if they say, you know, oh, yeah, I do it all the time. Well, dude, let me hook you up. I can be your main man right here, right now. You know, there you go. There you go. And uh, But like getting these Canada guys and stuff like that. I mean, the ca Canadian guy, it was funny. I just picked up. I had an air, a reservation for him. Uh, early morning, like four o'clock in the morning. And uh, he's like, he looked at, you know, he's like, Kevin, you know, we were just talking. He's a hockey fan. I'm a hockey fan. And uh, he's like, Kevin, he goes, do you do private rides? I said, yeah, sure. No problem. He goes, he goes, how much would you charge to take me from the airport to, uh, or from my house to the airport? And he just lives right across the street basically right across main street from me. Yeah. And I was just like, well, I said, normally I said from when I take people in this area, I usually get paid anywhere from 15 to 20 bucks. I said, how's 25 sound a ride? Oh man, that's great. But here's the kicker. Every time I take him, he gives me a hundred dollar bill. And he goes, that's man. for the return trip too. That's what so I'm he paid about for him. two trips. Yeah. And you know, it's basically 50 bucks a trip. And, you know, man, you can't it, beat that. That's private rides, man. It's the power you know, of private rides right there. And I think if people can trust you, you know, because like you said, like you said, I'm not trying to get a deal out of it. I'm just trying to uh, basically create clientele so that, hey, uh, God forbid, you know, freaking let the Uber say we're out of Phoenix. I'm not exactly. out. Yep. And you that's know, what I try man. to tell people, man. I try to tell people we're independent contractors. We are not employed by Uber or Lyft. We don't owe them any duty. We are independent contractors. We owe a duty to ourselves. So just like yeah. Uber and Lyft owe a duty to their shareholders, they owe they don't owe drivers nothing. They owe it to their. Yeah. So what they do is they play us to make sure they take care of their driver. I mean, their shareholders. It's just like if you went to Walmart and you picked up a TV, you saw the TV and it said one hundred and fifty dollars. You started walking to the front. But then you got a text on your phone that says, hey, Target across the street got the same TV for 100. You say, you're going to leave that TV right where it sits and you're going to walk across the street and get the exact same TV for 100. Only thing is, we're doing that in real time in the car. Okay, you paid $80 with this Uber ride. Tell you what, what if I did this for you for 60? And Uber needs to know we're independent contractors. We have the ability to, to negotiate. If somebody was in the backseat with a lift and was like, hey, man, I'm going to cancel the lift and put it on Uber because Uber price just dropped. Do you do Uber too? I do Uber too. Oh man, well, I'm gonna, hopefully I get you because I'm gonna cancel this lift. This lift was 115, but Uber right now is going for like 80. I'm gonna try to cancel it and save me some money. I might go, okay, try. You can knock yourself out, but I might speak up and go, you know what? I'm also a private driver. Don't go through the apps. Come through me straight. I got a hum card. I got a private card. Riders have a choice to pay yeah. whatever they want to pay. They have a choice. Uber and Lyft fucks with drivers to make them think that we don't have a choice. We have to accept whatever it is. We're independent contractors. We don't got to accept none of this shit. We got a right to decline. We got a right to cancel. We can say, I don't feel safe with you in my car. You got to get out. We can say whatever the hell we want to say. And yeah. once we, once drivers realize that, that we are not their employees, we're not their slaves. We don't owe them shit. That's when private rides really start taking off. That's when hum takes off. That's when people start thinking, I'm actually in control. I'm in control. The apps are not in control of me. I'm in control now. We just and one of the things that, one of the things I also do too is like you know when I started when we started doing this about a week ago and whatnot. Uh, some of the things I do like when I gotta really know that hey I'm I gotta perform. I practice what I'm gonna say in front of a mirror because then I see my facial expressions, you know, so that I'm not looking like oh. Blah, blah, blah. Cause I know yeah. sometimes, man, when I see some people pull up to the car, I try my damnedest to look as happy as I can. But you know, on the inside, I'm like, Oh man, this is going to be horrible. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I canceled somebody yesterday for that shit, man. Cause yeah. I'm pulling up and I already knew right off the bat. When I tell people that 
you know, I got a small car and they can see it pulling up. It's not a very big car. It's not an SUV. I'm at ASU. I'm coming around a corner and like no, this is going to sound kind of mean like a motherfucker in a minute. So if, if y'all don't know how to you know, have, if you don't have a, a strong conscience, you're going you're gonna to be like, man, I, don't, I got a weak stomach, Jeff. Don't tell me no shit like this. My feelings is hurt. But I'm pulling around a corner and there's four guys there all riding fucking electric scooters and shit. And, you know, these are like, uh, they're from like India or something like that. I don't know. So yeah. they're all riding these fucking, and they start folding them up. So one dude's like, he wants to, he's like, well, I could just, I said, well, woman, don't, it don't fit in my trunk because I've already tried that before. Those scooters are too big or whatever this and that. And there's only one guy bringing a scooter. He's like, well, I could just put it in the back seat. I was like, no, you're not putting that scooter in my back seat. Yeah. And he's like, well, what if we just, I'm like, no, we're not, I'm not taking this ride. I'm going to cancel this ride. You're not putting the scooter in my car. You should have texted me ahead of time said, hey man, I got a scooter. That way I would have known to cancel where I was at. I wouldn't have came that damn far. Yeah. And on top of this, I'm going to tell you, man, because the shit's kind of mean and I tell people the guys minute some people don't shower every day they don't oh jesus so you already know that i'm gonna have to stop my car i'm gonna have to clean it all out because you got people riding around on scooters jumping speed bumps and shit smelling like nuts and fucking mayonnaise yeah. and i'm sitting there like you know what i can't go pick up the next person because they're gonna think i smell like that and then yeah, I, exactly. I get it i get it i get it. it's tradition and shit like that i get it you don't gotta explain shit to me i get it yeah. but what they gotta realize is that in america it, it's offensive, very offensive yeah. to smell like that. And it's like you get in somebody's car, somebody's private fucking car. You got to understand we now have to stop this car, park it, turn the app off, clean out all the sweat from your nuts and your back and all that shit out of our car because we don't want the next person to get in there going, man, this car is funky as shit. It's yeah. like I can't do that to people. People are paying good money for a ride. I'm trying to, you know, get me a client out of this. I'm trying to get me a private ride out of this. They can't jump my car thinking, man, this driver smell like ball cheese and fucking. Yeah. I can't. When do I'm that. gagging in the front seat, you smell. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't even roll the motherfucking windows down. Goddamn, you roll the windows down. That shit circulates the like, whole motherfucking think, car. I've had three rides like that, man. Where I'm like, cool, cool, you know, and it's just like, thank God I do short rides, man. Because if I had to do a nature hike with this, I don't think I would have made it, man. Yeah, time I would have to, to pull over. Stupid. Time to wake up. Said he fucking swerved off the road, laughing like a motherfucker. <laughs> hey, he said they dying laughing. He said they ain't there dying fucking laughing. But it's true shit, man. It's true. And I'm like, it you is. Know, I told people, man, it's, it's gonna sound kind of mean. Is I told y'all ahead of time, it's gonna sound kind of mean. But yeah. it's it's. You know, when I'm picking up somebody who's ready for dinner, this man's coming out. He's got his woman with a nice dress on. She's coming out. You finna get in the car and everything. And if I did not clean my car out after people got out of my car, they would think it was me. I'd never have the chance to convert that to a private ride. They're like, no, no, it's fine. We'll just go through the app. We'll go through the app. I'll Dude, drop 53 off. 53 degrees like, out in the morning and you got to yeah. roll all four windows down. Shit, just to get be that like, funk out of your car. Yeah, they'd be like, that driver smell like shit. Like, you know, no, you're freezing. <laughs> now you're freezing to death. Now you got to freaking heat your car back up. Yeah, exactly. Freaking... Exactly. That's so why I'm like, yeah. nope, nope. Yeah, that's why I, and I'll tell you, man, it might sound kind of mean, but you got to let people know ahead of time. And that's honestly, that's why I think Lyft and Uber stopped giving names for a while. Like, they wouldn't put a name out there because a lot of people wouldn't pick up based on the name, especially by ASU. Because a lot of times, you know, the students are playing soccer or they're ripping and running. And they're doing all this crazy shit. And then they don't shower. And they're like, I just need to ride home. They got to realize at that moment, we have to stop our cars. We got to put it on last ride. We got to stop the car. We got to clean the whole fucking yeah. seat out. We got to. And it's going to take us, you know, when we're off that, we're missing opportunities. This is coming through the out. We're missing it all. We don't oh, get yeah. a tip. So with this little, little six, when there's no ride, surge. Yeah. Six, seven it happens right ride. in the middle of a 15 Man. 20 dollar surge now you got to stop and clean the funk out yep exactly and that's why you got to be like you know what i might just have to cancel this fucking sh yeah. no, i'm not taking this ride i'm gonna decline this motherfucker because you yeah, know there you I'm go sitting in the the right now yep, the in the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> and i'll tell motherfuckers like this like i'm gonna have to decline this ride or cancel this ride because i don't have the time to prep my car after every single ride to ensure yeah. that i could sell my private ride next because I don't want nobody thinking, man, this driver fucking reeks, man. He needs to fucking shower. This dude stinks. I don't yeah. want them to think that because I take two, three showers a fucking day because I can't sit in the car all day without showering. We in exhaust fumes and dust and shit. I'm showering two, three times a day when I drive. Yeah, you know, well, I've got that Febreze freaking uh, uh, whatever the hell it is for your fa for fabric. Yeah. You know, so I got to spray that down. Well, that leaves the seat wet. So now, you know what? 
Yep, now I got to yep. basically put my car in the sun with the windows down so that it freaking dries the seat out. It's freaking crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what you got to do sometimes, man. You got to, you know, weigh your options and start thinking, you know, I know because I'm like, I hate to discriminate because I like to make this fucking money. I love to make this money. Yeah. But sometimes you got to realize the app is going to set you up with people for a they're not going to be your private clients. You probably won't want them as one for they're not going to tip and it's going to take more time either. than what it's worth right now. <laughs> yep. It, it is worth is it's going to just fuck up. So you got to yeah. say, you know, I need to play my cards right. I got a surge jumping right now. I need to decline everything and just, yeah. you know, call it good. You know, like I said, I'll pick up anybody. I don't care. But if I know I'm, I just don't have time for that right now, I'm just yeah. not doing it. I don't have time for that right now. Yeah. Motherfuckers like, man, <laughs> that's what he's just jumping speed bump, smelling like nuts and mayonnaise. <laughs> oh, dude, no, it's fucking horrible. Exactly. Like, let's all just quit and make them go back to a regular yellow cabs. Fuck, I'm telling you, man. And see, and that's the thing. I don't mind driving for private clients. That's like today. I was at the dealership today. I got a video, man. Night they had Bentley fucking SUVs. It was so many. I was looking at the Acura MDX. I don't think I'm gonna get that Acura MDX because I think I got spoiled by my BMW. Because the BMWs of 2019, everything's crazy, fucking you know, upgraded and all that shit. Because it's an M package car, and that 2017 MDX, MDX is kind of like it's old tech. So it's like where I got to hook my phone to the radio to make the radio work and shit like that, where the BMW has Wi-Fi already in the car. Like yep. I just, every, all my apps run straight from my car. I don't have to hook my phone up to it. So it's kind of like, I don't want to spend all that money to jump back in time. So I got to find something that, that can keep me flowing in the way I'm flowing. Cause I love using my tech in the car. I love using that tech, but I'm going to, I'm going to look at something else, man. What up? What up Rick, my man. Yes. Yeah, so I'm going to, I'm going to try to, you know, look at other cars i looked at a volkswagen atlas atlas was pretty nice but it was only a second row no third row but it was a beautiful truck that atlas was beautiful but i was like i don't know what to get man i don't want to get a big suv i don't want to get a v8 i got enough shit in my driveway that, that drinks gas i'm trying to look for something easy <laughs> it's like man but yeah that's that's basically how my day went today i went car shopping today and i was like yeah i'm not buying shit because i wanted i need to get into the black suv market so I went and I checked it out and I'm sitting there like as, as much as I love these cars and I want to get into that market, I want to make sure that I'm buying something that I don't mind paying for every day. So I didn't get that Acura MDX. I think I'm going to skip out on that. Like, nah. Was that 76 viewers? I like watching him and I think the like button helps. Deliver the truth. I appreciate that. Deliver you truth. Hell yeah. Is it went out tonight thinking 76ers game will make some surge. Not a dime came from it. Wow. No, and that's what they're doing. Like I told people over this weekend, Uber was going to surge like crazy to get all these drivers just distracted. And now it's like, there's no, I mean, I opened the app earlier. It was great. Completely great. A million cars out, but it was all great. And I was like, yeah, I'm not messing with that. I'm not messing with that. Nope. So they were like, like charging me. 60 bucks to go from Scottsdale to the stadium yesterday. Shit, they were sitting there trying to pay me $27, $29 to do that shit. Yeah. And there was well, no I was way up in I was Scottsdale doing it. and it was just like, and then I'm like, okay, so I make 60 bucks to go there, but how am I getting back? Yeah. On my dime? So now oh, it's 30 bucks. You know? Yeah, they was trying to pay me from, from Tempe all the way out to State Farm Stadium, like $29. I was like, ain't no way in hell I'm going out for no $29. I'm like, I'll drive up to the person, convert their ass, and I'll do it for like 75 bucks. <laughs> Yeah. It's like, I'm not going out there for no $29. I'm like, hey, I'll take it, but it's going to be $75 cash, and we could do it on the Hum app, but yeah. I'm not doing that shit on no Uber, no Lyft. Y'all be waiting yeah. all day for that. I saw one route that had people going clear around the 202 to get up there. I was yeah, like, that. oh, fucking no way would oh, I do yeah. that. Yeah, that, that's a lot of extra miles. What Rick say, people are starving out here in Las Vegas. They're using Vegas as a cash cow. Oh, man. And, and this is the thing, Rick. They're starting to try to use Arizona because the apps used to pay very, very well out here. We had a, one of the best markets, I think, for the longest time. But I think who like the staff that works out here, the Uber staff, the Lyft staff, they're probably like, man, our drivers are making way too much money compared to other regions. You guys drivers aren't making shit. I think we're overpaying our drivers out here. So they started drying it up. The moment they started drying it up, everybody's AR started tanking. And I started doing way more cash rides. And now, like I said, now at home, oh, shit's going to get crazy now. Uber and Lyft yeah. might just, they pull an anchor in Minnesota. They might want to pull anchor here. 
they might say, you know, let's leave fucking Phoenix because we ain't making no money out there. These motherfuckers are not using us for nothing. <laughs> it's like, nope, nope. Dems Dallas, you've been doing private fares all weekend. You got to, you got to, especially with the level of vehicles we got. We can't be paying upgraded money for all of these cars, all of these tires, parts, and sitting there getting pennies on a damn dollar when I could just go talk straight to the rider and get all the money to me. And I have to worry about that shit. Like, no. So I can do less rides a day, less wear and tear, less beating up my car, less risk on the road. Because if I do 10 rides a day at $35 a day and I'm only going like 15 miles per ride, I mean, I'm going 150 miles to make $300 every day. So I'm like, I could do that all day. Shit, I'm, and call it good. Because that because that'll be about a quarter tank of gas. So I'll be at anywhere between 1,100 and 1,200 miles and one tank of gas. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, and I'm done for the day. I don't have to worry about shit. Like, nope, done. Oh, that's yeah. Ricky's. I'm driving for Bell Limousine, so it doesn't matter. I use their cars to make the same money without having to put miles on my car using gas and all the bullshit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Man, yeah, Rick, he's out there working for Bell right now. He's out there doing it, though, man. He gave up the Beamer. He got the Beamer sitting at home, and he's driving the big expedition, man. But how's the interior? Hey, Rick, send me a, a picture of the uh, interior of that expedition. I want to check. I want to look at that on the inside, see what the tech looks like, because I can't do an MDX. I'm like, oh, well, not a 17. The new ones might be good, but not a 17. I can't do it. Like, oh, I'm cool. That BMW done fucking spoiled me, man. <laughs> but shoot. Yeah, so what everybody got going on for tonight, man? What you doing, Kev? You going to get out and drive tonight? Uh, No, because I think I got like a 3 o'clock. Uh, airport pickup. Oh, oh. And then, uh, like I said, I use that to get to Tempe. And then Tempe, like I said, the past today was Monday was cool. It's always a travel day. So uh, Monday, you know, I, I pretty much make bank in the morning. Uh, Sunday was freaking busy all morning. I all couldn't believe flights, when man. I went to, when I went to the all airport flights. at four four twenty five <laughs> in the morning. It was like seven thirty. <laughs> There were so many freaking people there. I'm like, show you wow. Nuts and mayo. Hell oh, yeah. Oh, no, that's funny <laughs> shit. That's funny shit. Nuts and mayo. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, at 425, normally it's a pull in, pull out, and you're gone. And yeah. I actually had to wait in line. All them Alabama Damn. and NC State fans were trying going home with their tails between their legs. Oh, yeah. And that's why I said, nope. I said, I'm not driving Sunday morning. And they tried to keep me out. Because they were trying to throw surge everywhere, except wherever I was, there was no surge. So they were trying to make yeah. me stay out and do cheaper. I just turned the app off, called it good. I think yeah. I did. I did the one ride for a DB's client, Alexa, and that was yeah. it. I was like, I was done after that. Yeah, I, and that that's what I do, too, is I, I watch it. And then if it like most of the time, Monday through Friday, uh, nine o'clock or after the uber boosts are gone which yeah. i hardly even use anymore uh once they're gone usually every all the surges are gone yeah anyway yep. so then you're just i i tend to wait a little bit just to make sure because i've done that before i was like all right i'll head home and then as soon as i get home i look back at tempe freaking five six dollar surge I'm like son yep. of a <laughs> yep but see i think they do that on purpose because they see a driver in the area they'll freeze it all and they'll have it like a dollar twenty-five or just like all gray, and you won't see anything. The moment you get past that one on one, everything because sometimes when I hit, I'll come past like Broadway in a 10, and I'll right as soon as I get, I'll look behind me, all surge. And I'm like, I was just up there sitting at the circle K or sitting at Jack in the Box. It was nothing, nothing. And as soon as you get past a certain area, it's like they trigger your car and they know where your car is, and they'll go bling, flash the area, bright pink. It's like, nah, I'm not falling for that shit. I'm going, I'm going home. I'm done. Or as Man, soon as I clear Priest, right before I get to Priest, where there's usually a surge, you know, it's a small one, like 275 that leads into bigger ones. Yeah. I always get a ping right before I get there to go up to 44th Street to the hotel that's up there to pick somebody <laughs> up to go to the airport for four bucks. Exactly. Like, nope. Decline. Like, you Let couldn't wait. There. You couldn't wait 300 yards to fucking give me this when I have 275, 370. I'll turn around for that. Fuck. Yep. Yep. That's what they yeah. do, man. And and like I said, these app engineers, they know what they're doing. They're looking for the cheapest route out there to make the highest profit. They're Dude, charging I've, all I've these people in the hotels. Go around my freaking car. The little oh, yeah. Arrow. It'll horseshoe you I've in there and everything, man. 
I'm like, stay, damn it, stay. Yeah. I'm getting into you. And see, and they charge all these people surge pricing. So all these people are paying surge pricing around the airport. We're just not getting surge pay because they put the horseshoe, the gray horseshoe around us. And it's like, yeah. it'll be like all pink and then it'll like horseshoe around your car. So you still yeah. in the gray. <laughs> I'm like, you motherfuckers, I'm going to do it, decline it anyways. I'm not taking that shit. Yeah. Even if I took it, I'll probably go and convert it to a cash ride. But I'm like, nah, it ain't worth it. Yeah. Like, nope, I'm like, nope. I mean, I, I, I've actually gotten good rides from that hotel up there. Like yeah. 21 bucks to go two miles. West is like, like that. Shit. I'll, you know, I'll do that all the time, but it's like, yeah. Well, so you gotta pay me three dollars to turn around. No, because yeah, then I, I gotta go the all the way down to. Street. Yeah, I gotta go all the way down to fucking uh, uh, Scottsdale, to turn around to go back to get on to wherever, and it's like it ain't worth it. And no, it's like you couldn't no. wait three hundred yards to give me a five dollars. You know, and it's just like ah. Oh. And then yeah. I tell you what, and sorry, I don't mean to take too long here, but I've been noticing too, and maybe I'm just gonna put this out there. I've been getting wrong directions from Lyft. Like sending oh, yeah. me on clear the fuck around where I don't need to go. Oh, yeah. They oh, send and me to back streets and stuff like that. Like a whole block away. Yeah. I'm like a whole block away. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I mean, this one guy, and you he see was where the yellow light up there is? by Bass Pro. Yeah. And it sent me into a construction yard, or it was going to send me into a construction yard. But thank God I saw his little yellow body where I knew where it was. Yep. That's the but thing. But it was like, you know, and then he's like, yeah, these, th this would just cost uh, my insurance $1,500 because I've got the uh, diabetic medicine here that's supposed to be refrigerated a half hour ago. And now it's wow. bad. Wow. Damn. I'm like, and I said, your insurance Damn. pays for that? She go, he goes, yeah. He goes, it's their fault because they scheduled the ride. So that yeah. was one of the medical ride thingies. Yep. Yep. You know, and see, and that's the thing. Like, when the apps did that to me last night, they had me way down the street at this address, like 6432, way down the street. The yellow icon was clear somewhere else, so I had to hit the hit the address first to make sure I can hit arrived. Because if you don't hit that, you can't hit arrived. So I think this is a way that they can slowly eat away at our gas or wear our time down, yeah. putting us blocks away from where the actual yellow. Because I can sit there with the yellow person, but my timer would never start, so I never get a cancel. Exactly. So I have to drop all the way down the street, go around a corner, hit arrived, then go all the way back to where the yellow thing is, and hope it doesn't say turn around. You've gone too far. I'm like, yeah. I see what they're doing. They're trying to do away with, with cancellation fees and stuff like that by making the pickup and the person in two different areas so you can't get a cancellation fee. Yeah. Like, and then man. I had a ride. Uh, the gal was up on like first and I forgot, like uh, Beck or something like that. She was way up there where her boyfriend made the freaking uh, ride. Well, he kept his phone on and he's freaking in his car hauling ass down freaking mill going down to university and i'm like where as i'm getting close i'm like where the fuck is this guy now how fast is this motherfucker running and then his ass had the phone on his, and you yeah said, he like, had the I'm phone on in his up. car so i'm like well i'm just gonna go to where the ride says to pick this person up at i ain't going to that yellow fucking dot exactly and sure exactly. shit she was there and i was like man you almost got canceled because your boy i said What's wrong with your phone? It shows you way down on fucking university and fucking 143 right now. She goes, that's uh, my uh, boyfriend. Uh, I was like, you almost got canceled yeah. because you're a boyfriend. <laughs> Hell, exactly. Love. We, we do that shit. We cancel quick and we out of there. No, but I know you got to get you some sleep, though, brother, man. It's getting a little late out there. Yeah, but yeah. Shoot. Yeah, I'll probably be on for another about an hour, an hour and a half, and then I'm going to call it good my damn self. But yeah, uh -huh. man, thank you for letting us know about the whole hum thing. We'll we'll chat again, though. Later this week, we're going to have to chump. Yeah, I got to get out I mean, there and drop some. I, I can't say enough about home, man. Freaking, it just oh, like yeah, I said, you feel excited about it because I mean, it's not like it's a new toy excitement, but it's just you're seeing what's it's really uncharted happening. Uncharted territory. It's uncharted territory. Excited. Yeah. And it's kind of like I said. It's kind of like when I first bought the Jeep and I did my first ride in 2019, and I was like. I just did an Uber ride. Like when I showed up and a person was like, oh, this is a really nice Jeep. And it was like, oh, thanks. Thanks. You know, this and that. You didn't even know you was being ripped off. We didn't know we were getting like yeah. shafted and all that. We had no idea. Now that we know we're getting played and we know that they don't care about us. It don't feel good doing Uber and Lyft because I want to convert every person I can because it feels good to know that this lady is paying $30 for a ride and you're getting $30 worth of service in car instead of you paying $30 for a ride. But I'm getting like 
12 to 15 dollars out of it and i gotta pretend yeah. to give you 30 dollars worth of service yeah. <laughs> and it's like no because i'm mad at this dollar a mile i'm at this 50 cent a mile shit i'm not happy about it so of course i'm gonna speak on it and then i used to say you know this card i used to tell people it's like the clap it's the it's the card that keeps on giving yeah you know? yeah exactly exactly and uh that's what it is that's what it uh, is uh chris and uh Tony didn't really like that saying too much, so I had to amend it a little bit. No, oh, that's funny. That's funny. So I said, "Well, how about if I say it's the gift that you can keep regifting?" And true, the way true. I say that is, is because say you, I told him, I say you take this card, you use it, you get the five dollars off. I said, now you go out with your friends. If they haven't ever used one, let them use it. You yep, still get you another five bucks off. off. I said, you can freaking just keep making new friends every Friday night. Freaking you get five dollars off every fucking ride. <laughs> exactly. Like here you go, here you go. Shit. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Well, all, all right, y'all. Right, well, I'll let y'all go. Freaking y'all stay safe out there. Time to wake up. Nice to see you. Uh, all right, brother. We're gonna do this yeah. again later this week, later, my man. And where's my shirt? Exactly, man. It's like everybody's like, I need a shirt, man. I need that hump. I'm like, I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. I'm working on shit. <laughs> all right, brother. Shoot, man. All, all right, right. Kev, man. I'm gonna pull the chef. I'm gonna go to sleep. Exactly. Like, man, I'm going to sleep. <laughs> I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go get some breakfast and lay down for a little bit. <laughs> All right, Kev, I hit you up, brother. <laughs> All right, later. All right. <laughs> the Kev is wild with that. He know I do that all the time. I'm like, yeah, man. I'll be like, yes. Yeah. So I'm gonna go grab me something to eat real quick. I'll go eat and I'll lay down and I'm out for like three, four hours. Wake up, dude. Where you go, man? I went home and I ate and I went to sleep. <laughs> but shoot. So, oh, yeah, man. Big Horn gave you awesome, brother. I always appreciate your insight on things, my man. You're a good source, man. And, and like I said, Kev is out here in these streets, man, and he knows how to deal with it. It, it was funny because, so check this shit out. So we all at the, <laughs> I should have talked to Kev about this shit. So we were all at the uh, the coffee thing last week, last Saturday. And for anybody out there who wants to go to the coffee thing, we're having it again this Saturday, same spot. We're gonna, I'm going to put out a short about it. But it's the same spot, 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock. We're going to all meet up again, have coffee, go over our agendas and stuff like that. But Kev, at the last time we was there, so we're sitting there, and there's this dude, like, just walking around, like, mumbling to himself. Like, you could tell he was kind of disturbed a little bit. So this dude is mumbling and shit. So he's like, all right, right, walking around fucking. And I'm thinking, you know, he's going to run up and, and shove some fucking body. So I'm like, dude, so here's Kev right now. So the dude was walking around mumbling like a motherfucker and Kev, and he said some shit to Kev, and Kev went the fuck off. <laughs> so I used my classic line on him. Yeah. He kept walking away saying, fuck you, fuck you, and he kept walking away. I said, well, come here. And then it was yeah. like, hey, there's only two things holding you back, and there's only two things between me and you, air and opportunity. You're sucking <laughs> up all the air. <laughs> and two things holding you back, fear and common sense. Now, exactly. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Uh, Kev was about to beat this dude up right in the park a lot, boy. He was going off. I was like, Hey, oh, he didn't show he up again, though. No, no, did he? I thought he never came back. It was like, shit. I was like, shit. Kev was about to whoop his ass in the park a lot. We was like, uh oh, Uber driver beats up dude. <laughs> <laughs> shit. That was a funny ass. I had to, I just had to say that, man. That shit was funny as hell. Oh, yeah. Shit. All right, Kev, man. Get you some sleep, man. Get you some sleep, brother. Oh, yeah. By the way, right. I got yeah. kicked out of school for recess because I don't play. No, he's like, I don't play. <laughs> All right, bro. I'll check it later, Kev. Man, you wild, brother. Kev is wild. He was about to straight up scrap dude in the parking lot. We was all like, oh, what the hell's going on, dude? What the fuck is going on? Him and Kev was like at each other. At it. Kev was like, motherfucker, what's up? What's up? Dude was like, shit, I better walk away because that Kev's one of the biggest dudes there. He was like, yeah, I think I kind of fucked up and talked to the wrong dude. <laughs> Man. Get back to work at 6 to 9 a.m., 3 to 7 p.m. this week until some event things happen again. Yeah, you got to do that, man. OCD, Homewood, crush it here in Las Vegas. The six, uh, the eight months to get in here, 6,000 minimum plus commercial insurance, but it would change the game. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, man, it's like there's so many smaller apps that need to start popping up because there's an opportunity right now. When you have this many drivers across the boards in all regions, not happy with how shit is, not happy with the pay, not happy with how we're being treated, not happy with, you know, rider entitlement, app entitlement of them thinking they're entitled to our tips and selling our shit. This is the prime time right now to swoop in, grab all drivers. Any app out there could do this. Any app can do it. All you got to do is make sure you're paying the drivers right. Give them, 
no micromanaging, no platform, easy directions, easy shit to use. That's all it is. Because it sucks when we drive an Uber and Lyft and we cruise and we got, you know, like I said, phantom surges all over town. I've got videos on my channel at Lyft driving through surges and I'm getting offers that don't even have surge included. I got videos of that shit because people wouldn't believe it if we didn't screen record. They'd be like, Are you lying, man. Because every time I do it, they give me surge, man. We screen record that shit to show this is the truth. We're driving through surge right now, seven, eight dollar surge. They keep sending me requests. No surge attached to none of them. Lyft was trying to do that yesterday. Like when I got that uh, 375 surge, as soon as I didn't accept that ride because it wasn't in 14, everything just disappeared. There was no surge whatsoever, nowhere. I was so mad. What up, Jesse? My man. I'm confused. The drivers are the most important part of Russia. Like what the fuck, man? Yeah. Because without drivers, and this is why Uber and Lyft want to do it. With, they want to get rid of humanity because they can't deal with knowing Every day, they screwing up a family. They screwing up somebody's family. Every day, they do somebody dirty. Somebody's getting evicted. Somebody can't afford a car repair. They doing it, and they can't look in these people's faces. That's what I'm saying. When they was on a ride chair guy doing that shit, they didn't even, to me, they was hollow. The shit was hollow. They didn't speak to drivers. They were just saying shit. We're going to start paying drivers for every second, but how much? Why did you take away Lux? Why didn't you? I mean, there was nothing we could use of value. No, but to this day, nobody talks about that interview because that interview wasn't worth shit. It was just like I said, it was just him there. It wasn't worth nothing. So what we got to do is get somebody to come in and be like, listen, this is what we're about. This is what we're going to do. We promise to do this. We hope we can do this. We need help doing this and really hit this ground running. Because if we can get that shit right in Phoenix, like I said, if we can get it right in Phoenix. Imagine the possibilities of spreading this. Imagine. Going from Phoenix and they say, okay, we're going to drive up to New Mexico. Okay, we're going to go over to Nevada. Okay, we might drop down in California. We might go over to Texas. It's no telling. Like I said, it's just a bunch of laws people got to go through. And we know Uber, we already know they're paying a ton of money to keep politicians in their pocket. We already know that. So the moment any small ride share company pop up saying, hey, man, I'm, we're going to try to do this right now. Uber and Lyft, I thought we had an agreement. You need to do this and do this. They can't do NMT rides unless they, their drivers got training. Well, they're doing it on Uber and Lyft with no training. Yeah, but we got grandfathered into the no train driver shit. But you said any other company do it. They need to have driver certificates and driver training. You just said we don't need that because we want to get all the insurance money and we'll give you a kickback. So none of our Uber and Lyft drivers need to go take EMT training. They just pick motherfuckers up random. I'm telling you, Uber and Lyft is in a lot of people's pockets, man. A lot of people's pockets. No, -uh, a one whole hour suspension. Yeez. Damn, damn, that's crazy. But them they'll call you to pick up in a surge zone, not pay the surge because you weren't in the zone. Yes, and that's why I don't pick up at the airport. Because with Lyft, sometimes they'll give me the airport surge. Uber won't do that. I'll it'll be like $15 surge at the airport, $10, $15. I'm sitting at home. They'll have me going to the airport picking up Zara for nine dollars. No surge, but it's a ton of people sitting at you can see all the cars at the airport. They just looking for somebody cheap and a stupid person in the area that's gonna go do that. I'm like, I'm not doing that. Hell no. It's all them drivers are sitting there. Send it to them. They don't want to pay that though. And another thing of what's going on major right now is shared rides. Uber X share. I have gotten so many Uber X share ride requests. I've, I ain't even been screen recording because I've been doing more hum than anything else. It's so many Uber X share rides. I'm like back to back to back to back. And I've never seen that before. I will have surge Uber X share seven miles Uber X share 21 miles Uber X share 14. I'm like these people. I had an Uber X share to the airport Uber X share to the airport. I'm like they really not trying to pay drivers right now. They really not trying to pay drivers. What up, Kev? What, what is Kev say? All right, let's do this. He said Hum is giving us a seven course meal instead of picking up scraps from Uber and Lyft. You feed me and you pay me. Ride share done right. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. And, and it's it's like, like I said, it feels like we're doing ride share all brand new again. Like when we used to get paid during the pandemic, we knew these rides were worth some. Do a 10 mile ride. You might get, you know, twenty two dollars. I had Lux and everything back then. So we were all eating right back then. But now is they're starving people out because they, the executives have, have gotten paid too much. The staff has been way too extensive. All the shareholders want their money back because the stock went up so high. At a point in time when it was never supposed to be that high to begin with, they just started it too high and it flopped. And now they're trying to hurry up and get back to that point so we can get a return on their money. Is 
and they're putting it all on the driver's backs right now. So it don't feel like brand new to us no more. This this is like the same old shit every day. Oh yeah, Uber Share AK is Uber Pool. Yep, that's what it is, man. Uber Pool. That's all it is. Uber Pool. And we sitting there going, yeah, Uber X Share. And that's the thing. I don't mind them using Uber X Share if the money was right. I mean, if it was a two mile trip and they paid me ten dollars for Uber X Share, I'd take it. But it'd be like seventeen mile trips. Seven dollars and ninety three cent. I'm like, you got your damn. Mind. I am not driving no seventeen miles for seven dollars and ninety three cent in this damn BMW just because you want to do Uber X share. No, not happening. Not happening. And it's going like that like crazy now because I think, like I said, I think Lyft is on his last leg. They're running out of revenue because a lot of people, are, a lot of drivers are doing declines and cancels and cash rides, and we're figuring out how to get around the system. But Uber is now running down the same path. They got a lot of drivers who figured the game out. Short rides, surge, bonuses, cancel, decline, private ride, cash ride. And now they don't know what to do because they never imagine independent contractors waking up one day. And the, and the way we've all woken up, started protesting monthly, monthly protests, started online. The news media is picking up all this shit now. News media is talking about, hey, man, drivers aren't being paid a lot. This is what I'm paying the Uber app. And this is all the drivers get. Media's picking up the game now. A lot of people are willing to speak up about what's going on in the economy, about how everybody's going broke because they can't afford Uber rides. Rides used to cost eight dollars a day, now costing them twelve dollars a day. So it's sitting there like everybody's willing to speak up about it, and I appreciate that. Like I said, a lot of channels out there are willing to stand up and speak up about it, and some channels are still, you know, trying to throw fluff pieces out there. Hey, Uber's trying to make a comeback and being nicer to drivers. You get a new bonus tier. You get this kind of tier. They're going to give you a double screen. So now you can split these two ride categories together. Nobody gives a shit about none of that for real. It's like, where's the money at? Where's the money? Because all of these little gimmicks and all this, well, we've been working on the app. We've been, no, that's called proof of work. Back when I worked in, in corporate America, you'd walk around with a folder in your hand. You walk around with a folder in your hand because that's proof of that you're doing some work. All they're doing with the app is walking with their folder. They're moving things around. Oh, now the this is here instead of here. Oh, this is over here instead of over here. It's it's a bunch of busy work that don't mean shit. They don't add no more money to us. It's distractions. So when we ask, well, what are you guys doing with the money? Oh, we're updating the app. We're upgrading the app. Please add the new update. Move the new update. That's proof of work. Walking around with a manila folder in your hand. The shit don't mean nothing. Because when we say, how come we can't get surge on busy nights? Like Wayne Jr. said, why can't we get surge on busy nights? If Philadelphia is playing, why ain't there no surge out here? These people are paying big money to leave this concert. Why are drivers not getting paid? So all of this little trickle shit all over the app, it don't mean anything to nobody. Real drivers don't know. The new drivers who don't know anything, especially the drivers that don't speak English that well in this country, they're doing everything based on pictures. So they do shit based on pictures. So no matter what English you put on the screen or what you say, it's not going to make a difference to somebody that can't read English. So you start moving shit around the screen, making things more feasible for people that don't speak English that well. So when they do get on the app and they do drive, it's catered to them. Because as Americans, we're like, we want the money. I don't give. I know how to drive. If you tell me Rural and, and Broadway, I know that intersection. I've been there a million times. I've done this for five years. I don't need a, a yellow arrow instead of a black arrow telling me where to go. I've been there a lot of times. So it's a bunch of busy work. The shit don't make a difference to me. But they're doing it for somebody else. Yeah, that championship belt was sweet, though. Yeah. And that's the thing. And a lot of people, man, especially out here driving over the weekend, we came through and I told people that Uber and Lyft will be throwing out crazy surge to to persuade people to stay on the apps and to not do private rides because they know what's going on at the airport. They know what's going on at the airport. So they say, okay, if it's going on at the airport, it's going on at hotels, it's going on at concerts, it's going on everywhere. So how do we keep these people on the app? Well, you get that driver, $23 surge, $25 surge, but you charge these people $25 more than what they would normally charge. So that way we don't really get that much of a tip. Person is paying $110. And we're only getting like, you know, $70 out of the 110 now because they're gonna say, okay, you're going to drive, you know, 36 miles this way, still getting $2 a mile. I get $2 a mile on a normal night. If I'm getting surge, I would expect more than $2 a mile if I'm getting surge. But if you're saying I'm getting, you're going to send me 30 miles and give me $60. 
I do $7 for one mile rides all day, $8 for two mile rides all day, $10 for a mile and a half, two mile rides all day. So to give me $60 to go 30 miles, it's a normal day to me. So for them to say, oh, but we're going to give you a $25 surge. So you telling me that this trip was really $25 or $35. You threw $25 on top of it to make it $60, and I should be happy now. But it's the same rate I get every day. It's the same rate. So a lot of us ain't falling for that shit, man. Oh, yeah. The, oh, yeah. I forgot about that. The base fare is about the schedule rise. Yep. Lift dropping the base fare to schedule rise. That's why I don't do them. They were sending schedule rides to me all yesterday. It was crazy because nobody was picking up no rides on Uber and on Lyft. Scheduled rides. And it kept showing schedule, schedule, schedule. I was ignoring that shit. Like, nope, not doing it. And Uber started sending me reservations again. I'm like, since when did Uber send me reservations? Because nobody was picking them up. All airport rides, $27. But because I live by the airport, I would had to drive like 20 miles one way to pick somebody up to bring them 20 miles back. 40 miles for $27. I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. Even 20 miles for $27 is garbage. For a reservation, it's garbage. What up always first? Yeah, 6% of the drivers have been hired within the last 18 months. So don't even know what surges and multipliers are. Yeah, they don't know. Because most drivers who were making good money in ride share had to leave and go back to W-2s or do something else, open up their own company or do something different. Many of them open up their own travel companies. They're doing their own thing. So I'm one of those people that say, I'm going to start my own travel company. That's why when Networks Travel came in, got registered. Like I said, I got my shirt. I got my certificate, all my shit. I give my cards out to people because when these apps decide to pull a fast one or a funny one and say, oh, yeah, everybody who's in this region, you're going to start getting, you know, you need this type of insurance because we're going to cancel our commercial insurance policy. So all you drivers now need to go get commercial insurance and show us proof of insurance before you can be active on the app again. That day will come. That day will come when these apps, they do not pay money at all. They will ask people to start providing insurance coverage for themselves to the tune of commercial insurance, livery insurance. That's the next step. That's the next step on ripping drivers off. Or if you're not happy with our insurance, then go buy your own. Just like with the professor, he put a whole video out talking about how you can report fraudulent insurance. And that's what these companies are doing. They're, they're charging people fraudulent prices for insurance. If they're buying it, the package for, a, let's say, $100 for you, they're selling that package at $500 to you. So they're making profits on the insurance they're selling you already and then charge you a huge deductible on top of it. Once the fraud starts hitting and everybody starts seeing the racketeering and seeing all this money being made on top of money on top of money, the next step is for Uber and Lyft to say, we're done providing commercial insurance for everybody. Go get your own insurance. Well, can you move our premiums up? Nope. We're not moving the premiums up. You got to get commercial insurance of what you're making. So they've already taken the, the money from here all the way down here. The next step is you not only not making a lot of money and you're barely making it, but now we finna start hitting you saying you need to go provide your own commercial insurance now. Yep. All, hey, always first. You're right. You're right. That's the next step. That's their next step, in my opinion, is to make these drivers out there who already ain't making no money start carrying and footing their own bill. Because, well, we don't want to deal with no more. Well, you could use our general liability insurance. That's cool. You could use general liability for like sexual lawsuits or something like that or whatever the hell general liability can cover. But for commercial insurance, everybody needs to go buy their own insurance and you can't drive on our apps no more. Why do you think they're doing that big ass sting right now on insurance? Why they found all these people with all these fake insurance policies and stuff like that? Why are they researching it all now? And they haven't been researching it for years. All these fake policies that have been out there. They're doing it now because the direction is to get everybody off their insurance. So they're seeing who's got it, who don't have it, who's this, who's that. And they're going to say, okay, since we can't you know, prove that your insurance is right, we can't prove that your insurance is legit, we're going to stop, stop covering everybody. And everybody's got to come up with their own insurance. That means if you get into a wreck, it's on you 100% now. Uber and Lyft ain't got shit to do with it because you gotta, you have to agree to use your own commercial insurance policy. I'm telling you, that shit's coming down the pipe, man. It's coming down the pipe. And that's why I'm like, I love the fact that HUM is set up the way it is. But a lot of people out there that don't have HUM in their region yet, like always first says, start looking at insurance policies. Just start looking at them. Yeah, man. 
Wayne, I'm telling you, Wayne, man. Say, I, I'm going to say, Jeff, you and your group of drivers should pay someone hourly to hand out cards with the QR codes for you guys to come pick them up. Oh, they do that already. They already do that. That's why, you know, when we go pick people up, somebody be like, yeah, man, I got this card earlier. They have a team already at home that does that already. Like when we go to events and things like that, Anthony, he's got a small team out there. They're already doing that stuff already. So when we show up, we just show up just to help where we can. And we chatting by the cars, hanging out, you know, talking about life, this and that. Phones pinging for Uber, Lyft, or Hum. Either you're going to take that ride or not. You're going to convert it to cash or not. I mean, we do that every time we go hang out somewhere. And that's why I love it, man. Yeah, exactly. You can't use our insurance, but we still going to charge you, though. Man, ain't, ain't that the dumbest shit? They're going to sit there and charge us, you know, 5X for the insurance premiums that they're paying, but we're not allowed to use it. Because we don't have $2,500 to, to fix whatever situation to even get it started. Well, if you don't pay the $2,500, we can't even get started on your shit. Sorry, we're not going to get started on yours. You got to use your own insurance. Like, no, nah, man, I was driving for you when this happened. Hey, that's what Lyft and Uber did in Las Vegas when they started here. Pay people to hand out cars for free rides. Yep. And I'm telling you, man, it's like giving people crack. You give people shit for free. And you give it to them for free for long enough. Just like, why don't you think a lot of pigeons don't want to get off of Uber and Lyft and start paying for a platform that pays them better because they gave drivers a free pass to get on these apps. Sure, you can come sign up for Uber and Lyft. Sure, you can. It, it's free. Download the app. Sign up. We'll do a background check. You could work for us. You're just being added to the plantation. That's why they're giving it for free. This shit ain't free. Ain't nothing free. You think you're working for Uber and Lyft for free until you look at the percentage of what they're taking for each ride you do. Ain't none of this shit free. Oh, I work for Uber. I got on for free. Yeah, exactly. Hustle one-on-one. -on -one. The first hit is always free. Hey, man, smoke this. <laughs> That's what Uber said when they fucking sent out them app. Oh, hey, man, smoke this. Download this from the Play Store. Smoke this. Motherfuckers, smoke that shit. Oh, man, I just did my first Uber ride. Ooh, I better go get the next one. And that motherfucker has some surge on it, goddammit. <laughs> the first hit always, they get you addicted to the crack. And you're like, oh, I just downloaded that motherfucking money. Oh, they gave me a $25 ride. Ooh, only went like 40 miles. Man, that was easy, dog. That was easy. Always you, Now you're on crack now. You're always on crack now. <laughs> always trying to keep us on a pigeon plantation. Real shit. <laughs> it was like the first hit always free. And that's why, you know, even with even with Hum, the one thing I like telling people is that it's not even about the $5 off. I don't even talk about the $5 off. They see that shit on the card. That If they can read English, that shit's in big fucking letters on the card. I ain't got to say that. But I like to say how we get 100% of the money. We get 100% of the money. You don't got to pay an app, and an app doesn't have to screw us down. Oh, man, we said upfront fare was going to be $16, but since the ride went shorter than expected, instead of giving you $16, you stopped two blocks ahead of time. So we're going to give you $9. You're going to take off $5 for two blocks? You're going to really take off $5 for two blocks? You're going to do me like that. And that's what they do. Oh, you didn't go as far as expected. From 16 to 9 $7 right there. $7 off the fucking... Man, you got your fucking mind. It be calling me, man, Pookie. <laughs> like, listen, it be calling me, man. I'm trying to quit, motherfucker. What's that Nino Brown? That shit be calling me, man. Motherfucking uh, New Jack City. And that's and that's what it is, man. That's what it is. They sitting there letting these people know right off the bat. Hey, man, we're going to give you, you know, twenty five dollars for this ride. You do the ride. You stop two blocks ahead. OK, instead of twenty five. Now you're getting 18 because you stop two blocks ahead. I'll be like, this shit don't make no sense. And riders probably wonder, why do y'all drop us off and keep driving? Because I'm getting my money. I've already been tricked before. If you say, hey, drop me off right here, I'll drop you off right here. But if the drop-off's down the street, oh, I'm driving down the street. Hey, man, he ain't in the ride yet. Like, exactly, exactly. This is, I dropped off five people at work today, asked them if they had a bulletin board pass. Them, one of Hum's flyers to post up all of them did. Oh, shit, okay. That's what's up, Marcel. He's giving out all the bulletin board flyers. Hey, put that up, put that up. And I'm going to tell you, the ASU students, they all got it. They all got these cards, man. Because every time I get one, yeah, somebody gave me one. I'm like, who came that? Did Anthony go down by ASU or something? Because all this, oh, yeah, I got that card. I got it. It's a $5 off card. Yeah, yeah, I got that. And I'm like, damn, the motherfucker, you must have canvassed the shit out of ASU. <laughs> he was down there hard, man. So, yep, yep, get your right. Get your own insurance, man. Get your own insurance. 
If you haven't seen New Jack City, it's top five of all time. You right, New Jack City, baby. But yeah, and I, man, your own insurance is going to be the only way you can really alleviate a lot of the issues of dealing with Uber and Lyft. I don't like, just like I said, Uber and Lyft, they're up to something real screwy. They're up to something screwy. Everybody should be looking at building your own business because you're actually, each one of us are in business for ourselves right now. We're all independent contractors. You are in business for yourself, whether you do it part time or full time. You're running your own business. What Lyft and Uber wants to do, make you think is that they own you and you are a part of their business. You're not a part of your business. They're nothing but a platform. You use the technology. They are a part of your business. They don't do transportation. They do technology. We are the independent contractors agreeing to drive our cars to pick people up. We could use Google. We could use Waze. We could use any navig. We could have a motherfucker text message us where they at. We could use any technology we want to get to the people we got to get to, and they can guide us through, like, just talk to us. We don't need these apps. They're, we're not a part of their business. They are a part of our business, and they're taking all the money out of the bit. That's all it is is dispatch. That's it, just dispatch. And they're taking all this money out of what we're doing. And like I said, people need to start waking up. People got, especially drivers, you got to start waking up. And I don't know what it's going to take for these drivers, these pigeons out there. Oh, it should be okay. You know, I did a three. To, I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to do 40 rides and I'm going to get, you know, $40. You're getting an extra dollar per ride. You're going to do 40 bullshit rides just to get $40 back when you could do one ride on home and probably get $80 real quick and be done. One ride, 80 bucks, you're done. Because the apps are probably charge, you know, somebody 95 to lead an airport. This person 115 to lead an airport. You tell them 80. Cool, 80, you're done. Yeah, the job I left last year was dispatcher. Yeah. There you go. The middleman who keeps 60% is not a middleman. He's a con artist. Time to wake up. You write about that shit. He's a con artist. And that's exactly what these apps are. They have conned all these contractors out there to believing all you're worth is a fraction of what this person is paying for this ride. They say the fees are more. The fees, all they're using the fees for is to build a exit strategy to get rid of all these drivers. That's it. So the fees are not really like fees to keep their company running. The fees are there to get rid of you as a driver. You're like, man, these people pay $70. Why did I get 31? Why did I get 32? Because with the rest of the money, they're using that money to get rid of you. They're using driverless technology. They're using, you know, now for delivery. Exactly. The fees are more than a damn ride. They're using anything they can use especially when it comes to delivery. And I thought delivery was safe. We always, oh man, delivery safe, delivery safe. This is how shit is. They're going to start having cars show up to people, apartment complexes at the gate. Because how are they going to get through gate, gated communities? How is a driverless car going to get through a gated community gate? It can't, it can't type the fucking pad. So everybody who orders in these gated communities are going to have to walk out of their apartment, downstairs, cross the parking lot, through the gate, get the food out the car. And the car at the gate is going to have to do a U-turn and get out of the gate. Or it's going to just be stuck there and everybody's going to be sitting like, dude, we're behind this driverless vehicle. It can't cut through the median. It don't know what to do. It's just sitting here. It ain't hitting reverse or nothing. It's just sitting there. I don't know how this delivery shit's going to work. Yeah, the fees used to be a fixed percentage. Now they don't give a fuck. Yeah, they just, they charge you whatever. They charge you whatever. If you be like, man, last round I got, you know, $1.63 for lift fees. This one, $13, same miles. I'm like, okay, so the last ride I made $19. This ride I made 11. What the hell just happened? Oh, you had a surge on the last one. This one, you didn't have a surge. They took all of it in fees, plus probably half your tip too. So any help is appreciated. I'm looking for a more efficient way to book rides instead of taking it on the fly through the phone. Is there a way I can use a QR code on my business card that can link up to a calendar to my private rides to a private client? Well, you can have a QR code that can link to a website so because the QR code is just it's a signal. It's all it is, is a signal. So if you created a website, let's say you made a calendar, you use a calendar app. So you got a calendar app or a scheduler app. Get the QR code from the scheduler app. So as soon as they hit that QR code, it goes to your scheduler and they can open it up and look and see all your things. So, OK, cool. I see all the open areas right now. They can fill it in. You should get a notification from your schedule app. Hey, Sarah just booked the ride at 1 p.m. That's it. What up, Drew? My brother, what up? What up? 
They sent me a ride 137 to go to New York, 100 miles, two hours. Yeesh, that's four hours of driving, basically. Because if they saying two hours for 137, that you got to come back. So that's four hours for 137, 200 miles. So you're you're getting probably about 60 cents a mile and you're not getting paid for any time. They're only paying you for miles. They're paying you 60 cents a mile in no time. So it's like, yeah, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Thing is, a lot of these businessmen don't. Yeah. They, they don't want to go off the app because Uber has a, a business account. Uber and Lyft has business accounts with all these people that have these accounts. Now, the one thing what you can do to defeat that is somehow let them know if you have an LLC. You can contact their business so their business can save money through going through your LLC. If it's the same person going to the same airport or if it's a group of five that fly out of town all the time, get your LLC together. You go in and you talk to who's doing the reimbursements and all of this shit. You talk to who's setting up, who, who sets up the itineraries. Oh, that's our admin assistant. She sets up all the itineraries. Hey, you guys got an Uber and Lyft account, right? Yeah, we got an Uber and Lyft account. Okay, we only pay, you know, $39.99 a month. And we get the book rise, but we get this much off. Tell you what, you ain't even got to pay me nothing a month. Nothing a month. This is my card. This is my LLC. I do rides. I got commercial insurance. You guys can book straight with me. My rates are cheaper than Uber, this and that. And guess what, lady? You might fuck around and get a bonus for saving the department some money. You don't pay $39.99 a month no more to have an Uber business or a Lyft business. And then you're getting high ass fucking surges and high surge prices. You're not getting none of that. So the girl might be like, let me look into this. You got some fly. Here's a brochure. Here's my website. Check it out. They might look it over. They might give you a call, man. They might give you a call. Yep, that's it right there, brother. They might give you a call and be like, hey, you know what? You stop by and you talk to our admin assistant about doing airport rides and we don't have to pay you no monthly charges. Nope. And your rates are cheap and new. Yep. Okay, cool. How do we get signed up for you? I'll, I'll come down there. We could just sign a contract with you guys. And if you, you know, in the contract, I'll just show you all my insurance is, what I cover, what I don't cover, you know, what I use as far as booking. If you want to book with me, I only charge X amount to book. And if you cancel the booking, I still keep the booking fee, you know, because because I, I block my whole shit open. And if I block everything down and, and you don't come outside for the ride, I get to keep the money. So you can actually start your own travel business. Like I said, my shit says when networks travel, you can start your own travel business and you don't have to let them go through Uber because Uber and Lyft, they're nothing but middlemen. They don't own a single car. They don't own shit. They selling all of us like slaves. They walking in all of these places, these, you know, emergency medical doctor's offices. They're walking in all these businesses. Oh, yeah. You can sign up with Uber business. You can sign up with Uber health. You can sign up with Uber Eats. You can do this and do that. How many cars you guys own? Well, we don't own any cars. We got a whole bunch of fucking pigeons sitting on a line outside waiting for you to drop some fucking popcorn. Well, we need these hamburgers delivered right here. $1.98 for four miles. We got some pigeons on the way. Don't you worry about it. <laughs> it's like shit. See, I'm not even going to post a video tonight. Work come out on tomorrow morning's work. Yeah, I'm telling you, Wayne, sometimes it's not even worth it because it's, it's just a slow, drab night. And it's like, ah, I'm not posting that. And that's why I'm glad a lot of you guys are starting to do the, the uh, ride-alongs because I stopped doing the ride-alongs because I'm doing something else right now. But people need to keep telling the truth. The truth don't end. The story don't end. The story is out there. So if y'all want to see the story continues and how shit's going, look at Wayne Jr. Design's channel because he's still doing the ride-alongs. He's still showing the truth that's out there. He's still showing how these apps are screwing over certain regions, not paying drivers, giving them these low-ass fares and everything. And the staff of these apps are literally sitting around in their cubicles laughing. Oh, we're going to get them to take this ride. We're going to get them to take this ride. Tell you what, you send that motherfucker. Keep hanging a pork chop in, the por in a pit bull's face. I done said that shit before. Keep hanging a pork chop in a pit bull's face. You keep sending me these shitty rides. You're going to see my cancel rate go up quick as a motherfucker. say, damn, we keep sending them shitty rides laughing, laughing at them and shit. This motherfucker done went over there and done picked this person up. He done did a cash ride with them. He done converted them. They're his new private client now. You keep hanging a fucking pork chop in the pit bull face. You send me to their house, I'm going to convert their ass into my client. They ain't going to be on Lyft no more. So you got to quit playing games. You put some money on this shit. You ain't putting money on it. You hanging pork chop in a pit bull face. That's what I am, man. I don't play that shit, man. Jeff, we need a shirt with an actual <laughs> a pigeon with a red circle around us with the diagonal cross doing going, no pigeons. I know it. Lord, help me, Jesus. Lord, Lord, help me. Jesus, that's a fire. Sound like sweet brown. I said, Lord, Jesus, that's a fire. 
and I ran for my life. I got bronchitis. Anybody got time for that? <laughs> I know. The my my cancellation rate is insane. We live on. because man, they keep putting them. You put a pork chop in our face enough times, the pit bull gonna snatch that motherfucker once. You're gonna be like, oh damn, he got the damn. Yep, yep. Chuck, Chuck, is it live? I missed the live. You missed it, man. You missed the dog. This is a recording. We knew you was gonna pop up at 10 10. And we said, Tuck, Tuck at 10 10. <laughs> we ain't live, motherfucker. We're out of here. <laughs> no. But yeah, man, my cancellation. And I'm tired of that shit, DeAndre. I'm sick of it. Because they keep playing with us, man. We know these people are paying good money out there. We know it. And they're sitting there going, well, I'm going to send you over there to go pick this person up for $13 to take them all the way downtown. I'm sitting way up in North Scottsdale, Tatum Road, way past Tatum Road. And you're going to be like, okay, I'm past the 202 up Tatum. $13 to take them all the way downtown, $13. I'm like, who takes this shit? Like, do people really do this for real? Because I'm going to cruise over there and be like, hold the fuck up. Hey, they trying to pay me $13 for this shit. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll do it for 30 That's it. Oh, well, 30 is what I was going to pay anyways because they're trying to be 25 and I was going to give you a $5 tip. So 30 works out perfect for me. Cool. I'm the one who gets 100% of the money then. <laughs> so my trucks were bored in that hell yeah. <laughs> tuck, tuck was good. Tuck, tuck at 1010, motherfucker. That's our new news station. Like, welcome to Chattanooga News where we got tuck, tuck at 1010. <laughs> <laughs> it's like motherfucker, you need to do that shit. You need to do a news station. This is Tuck Tuck at 1010 every night at 10 10 p.m. or 10 10 in the morning. Motherfucker, this is Tuck Tuck at 10 10. <laughs> uh, oh, surge prices are not being paid in Vegas. So, Marcel, what do you mean? So they're they're giving surge on the map, but just not paying the surge to drivers. Is that is that's what's happening right now? That shit's crazy. If that's what you're saying, man, if that's what you're saying. Yeah, we ain't doing that, DB. Man, man. So if they're not paying surge prices in Vegas, this is going to be crazy all summer because they got a big busy season coming up for traveling and everything, especially all summer. They got a big season coming up. But man, man, man. Was that? <laughs> Go 10 miles, pick up some clown, take them one mile for $6. Oh, they, they doing it all weekend always first. They've been doing it all weekend. Go pick up somebody 12 miles away for an eight mile trip. They're going to give you like $9. I'm like, wait a minute. So I got to drive like 23, 24 miles to pick somebody up and you're going to give me $9 total? Like, no. Yeah. I remember Uber used to show us what the passengers paid, but now they are all secretive of what they're paying. Yep. And it used to be right on the screen. They hit the bottom of the screen and show up. Then it, it was sent you to their website. If you want to look at what the passenger paid, you had to go to their website. Now, I don't even think you can do that now. They don't tell you anything, man. Anything. Wait, Uber's not paying cancellation fees? I had a passenger who had a child and no car. See, that canceled and try to call and get the cancellation fee, and they supposedly can't find the ride. Of course they can't find the ride. That's their excuse. Oh, it glitched out. It glitched out. Like, man. Cricket, Crick is in there. She's in EV jail right now. Hey, from Denver, sitting in the car at the EV charger. Hope every everyone's having a good evening. She's in EV jail. That's what we call it. EV jail. <laughs> What percentage are you at right now? That's that's more. Are you at 17%? <laughs> She's like, damn it. How would you know? Like, no. Yeah. So I'm I'm glitching right now, motherfucker. Hell yeah, that's what it is. Cricket and EV jail. I'll tell you, nice boys win. Hey, and that's what nice boys win came up with that phrase. He came up with that. Hey, it's EV jail. <laughs> hey, you see, I be using that shit on everybody, man. I use it on everybody. See, I'm so paranoid lately. I've been cashing out two, three times a day. I put all that shit out so fast, like a dude who just got his unemployment. <laughs> you have to say some shit like that. He said, fucking cash that shit out two, three times a day. Pull that shit out so fast, like a dude who just got his un unemployment come through his bank. <laughs> they be like, oh shit, man, take that shit out. Motherfucker, unemployment hit 301, take out 300. Quick as a motherfucker, like, why you do that? So they don't got a chance to take that shit back. <laughs> Man, 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 that's funny. So I followed Uber today for three hours to get two dollars, and they gave me an extra ten after I threw a fit on how shitty their support was. Yeah, and that's the thing, cricket. This is what they do. They want to keep us from calling support, so they're gonna do anything in their power to make sure we don't call support for no reason at all. And that's why I stopped bugging with them. I can't like if you know how this channel rocks, you already know. 
I don't deal with support. If they screw me once, that's all it's gonna take. Cause I'll give them a chance. Sometimes, I'm like, okay, Uber's got a good surge. I'll give them a chance. I'll give let's let's work with me. I'll do a ride, you know, cool, cool. I got $13, you know, four miles. I'll give them a chance. I'll give them a chance. But as soon as they screw me, that's it. Conversion. They start seeing my cancel. My cancellation was already down to 31%. I'm up to 35. I'm converting every fucking body. That shit start climbing up quick as a mother. <laughs> exactly. Stop telling the parents. This is old EV jail. That's great. I'm at 47% at fast charge to 20 minutes to go. Now in your 20 minutes, you're going to be back at 100% or 20%. Or 20 minutes gonna get you just to where you need to go, or it puts you all the way back at 100. That's crazy. Say I was on employment 214 a week. Needs to say I still needed unemployment. <laughs> I was on unemployment and I still needed unemployment when I was getting unemployment. Like, jeez. Yeah, there's it. Okay, cool. So she'll be at 100 percent in about 20 minutes. That's what's up. I don't know how, how long it take to charge. I mean, it's fucked up because my name is Watts. My last name is Watts, but I don't know shit about electric cars. That's fucked up. <laughs> What's that? Oh, Jeff Watts. How's that EV treating you? Like, motherfucker, I drive gas cars. I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, with the name Watts, I thought it was like a stage name. Like, you're like electrifying in your EV. No, motherfucker, I was born Jeff Watts. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, okay. Thought you had a Tesla or something. Like, no, motherfucker. Thought you was some new superhero like fucking John Wayne, Batman, Bruce Wayne, Jeff Watts. Motherfucking, no, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I know Watts Eagle Gasoline. What up, Kim? What up? <laughs> like, motherfucker, that's not no nickname. I'm trying to be no goddamn superhero. I thought you were a ride chair superhero. Jeff Watts coming with the EV. I'm going to pick you up in the EV. Jeff Watts saving gas. Like, oh, Jeff Watts is my real name, motherfucker. I don't got an EV. I had that big ass V8 sitting over there. <laughs> See, my last name is Cruz. And I've never been on a cruise before. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny shit <laughs> fucking funny shit jeff kilowatts they used to call me that shit in college all the time kilowatts what up kilowatts motherfucker. <laughs> see watts can be converted to horsepower exactly exactly shit that's what i'm saying they used to call me kilowatts in college that's funny shit motherfucker. <laughs> he said i'm burnt <laughs> you know what i'm saying i'm burnt motherfucker was it fucking bruce watts like bruce wayne bruce watts motherfucker i'm batman <laughs> motherfucker, the electric batman motherfucker ride around in the ev prius like what happened to the batmobile we traded that shit in i'm bruce watts <laughs> like, like is that a real name like no nah, motherfucker he used to be batman bruce wayne that's motherfucker bruce watts he come up you don't even hear him pull up he in a prius quiet as a motherfucker no tailpipe or nothing i'll just pull up like oh shit batman's here bro we ain't even hear you coming we usually see flames and shit shooting out the back of the batmobile Fire and shit coming out like a rocket and shit. You got a Prius, dog. Got to be fucking technically. I got to be climate control, motherfucker. This is about climate. I'm here to fight crime and I'm here to fight climate. <laughs> it's like, okay, motherfucker. Bruce Watts, whatever, motherfucker. <laughs> this motherfucker. We we'll call you Father Watts, motherfucker. Father Watts. What was that? Oh, oh, shit. What did I always say? Jeff, what's your first thought on Uber changing and wash the cash out fee? Oh, man. I told her. This is what it is. It used to be 85 cents. Now it's a dollar 25. That's a 40 cent change. 40 cents on 85 cents is damn near 50% increase. That's a 50% increase in revenue they're getting. So imagine all if let's say they got a million dollars in revenue from cash outs, a million. Now they can budget and say, we're going to get 1.5 million now. How do you know? Because normally we get a million on cash outs. So now we're going to get, if they keep cashing out the current race they do now, we're going to go from a million to 1.5 million because we jumped the fee up 50%. So whatever they were getting, they just increased their revenues in that category by 50%. And that's what I'm saying. It was all a revenue play. It's a revenue play. Because if they're thinking, well, we got to pay people increased salaries. If we got to deal with people canceling rides now, doing cash rides and not doing this and that, what are we going to do? Oh, just increase fees somewhere. Increase fees somewhere. Yeah, thank God for I have to put a new BMW in the shop on oil change and brakes. They gave me a loaner vehicle. I can still do my private affairs, just no lift. Yeah, true, true. Say, so, uh, no, nah, it was 85% for us, 85%. <laughs> so you used to call me Jeff. I was not to call me Batman. Motherfucker, Batman in the Prius. I pull up quiet as a motherfucker. Crooks be like, dude, we ain't even hear you outside the bank, man. Yeah, no tailpipes, dog. This is a Prius, motherfucker. I get like 45,000 miles of goddamn charge. I'm driving this motherfucker everywhere. I'm fighting crime and fighting climate control at the same time, motherfucker. Climatologist. Motherfucker, Batman. Oh, yeah. 
So once they increase those revenues, and the thing is, this is what I think. They're either trying two things. They're going to increase revenue by 50% across the board to so say, okay, we can budget now for, you know, getting 50% more revenue in those areas. Because if you get 2 million, now you're getting 3 million because 50% is, of 2 million is, is a million bucks. So now, if you're getting 10 million in revenue, now you're getting 15 million in revenue because you're going to get that extra 50% on everything. So you're increasing revenue. Or they say people are going to cash out less. That's your second play. If people cash out less, that means we can use their money to play on the stock market longer. So instead of them cashing out 10 million like every day, they're waiting a day or two. That gives us a day or two of playing with their fucking money to make money on their money as we're playing with it. So it's a double edged sword. They're going to make more revenue if we keep cashing out the current rate or if we don't cash out at the current rate, they're going to make money on screwing with our money in the stock market and they got to budget with that now. So it, like I said, they, these motherfuckers playing chess, man. They playing chess with our money. So we got to figure something out like that. So Uber increased all their fees in the last five years. Meanwhile, all of our earnings decreased across the board. They have the balls to say drivers are earning more now than ever. That part. Drivers are now earning. Well, we, we are earning now more than ever. Think about it. We are earning more now than ever. And that is a 100% true statement. We're just not earning that shit for ourselves. We're earners. We're earning those motherfuckers way more now than ever. They never said who we're earning for. They never said drivers are earning more for themselves. They just said drivers are earning more now. That's exactly it's for them. So if they sit up there and say drivers are earning more now than ever, and they call us earners, the apps call us that. We don't call ourselves earners. We call ourselves drivers, independent contractors, but they call us earners. If you look at their revenue, we're earning that more now than ever. Look at their revenue numbers. Time to wake up. We are earning more now than we ever have, but we're taking home less of a percentage than what we earn because we're earning more for their corporation. We're not earning more for us. So that's how they get away with saying that shit all the time. Drivers are earning more now than ever. You're right. We are. I mean, rides we used to, you know, earn eight dollars on for them, earn eight, and we would get paid like maybe four or five to take somebody to Circle K. They're now charging that person 12. So now we're earning 12. We're not earning eight. We're earning $12 and we're still getting that $4. So we're still getting the $4. We used to earn eight and get the four. Now we're earning 12 and getting the four. We're earning more now than we ever have, but we're not making that shit. That's how they fucking play us, man. Scrooby tried to send me a reservation in the middle of nowhere for a dollar a mile. Doubt it. <laughs> this is shit. I ain't going for a dollar a mile. Shit. Doubt it. Nope. Nope. Yeah. So who I only made 15 off Uber last week, Jeff. Wasn't doing crackhead rides or my car is too nice to settle, brother. I'm telling you, Tuck Tuck, you can't do it, man. You can't do it. And that's the thing. When you know you pulling up, I'm gonna tell you this pork chop shit, Tuck Tuck. Pork chops, motherfucker. If they're gonna keep dangling these pork chops in your face, they send you a ride that's 26 miles, and they're gonna say, Well, we're gonna give you $23 for it. That's a pork chop. That's a pork chop. You gotta say, you know what? Y'all, y'all need to go 26 miles. Yeah. Well, the, the apps ain't paying me, but 23. Oh, well, shit, we got to go 26. They charge us $3 a mile, motherfucker. They just charge us $78 for this ride. What, they charge you 78 Yeah, they charge us 78 man. Damn, they're only giving me 23 out of the 78 I tell you what, 60 bucks, 60 bucks cool. If I do 60 right here, let, let's do 60 man, because you saving us 18 right off the top, and I ain't got to tip you either. You ain't going to tip me, motherfucker. $60 right now off the top. It's that pork chop. They're going to keep dangling them pork chops in your face. Shit, get them, get them. And let the, like I said, those motherfuckers dangling shit in my face. Every time they got me when I was way north and I showed y'all that $35 ride I did. $35. They was giving me $17 for a $35 ride. I told that girl, I said, they ain't giving me but $17 for this. She was like, well, I said, I'll do it for $35. She was like, well, shit, that's what I pay live anyways. Damn near. I paid them $35. I'd rather just give it to you. I was like, shit, cancel. Fucking cash app. <laughs> it's like, don't dangle no fucking pork chop in my face. And it was, I was way up north way and i live way south and this lady was coming all the way to downtown which was perfect because it was closer to my house so i got i would have came home on my dead miles if i didn't get a good ride she was needing a ride i wasn't taking 17 to come home i took that 35 all the way down the highway pocket that shit and i'm sitting there like six miles from home now i would have had to come home on my own shit i was like no nah, man you dangling them pork chops in my face she keep playing with me keep playing what up fortune jama 
Uh oh, what you say? <laughs> the, the Minecraft majority of those deliveries offers a super trash. Yep, yep. Speaking of pork chops, yeah, exactly. The only wait a minute, here we go. The only positive about a Lakers loss here is that LA is generous as private riders. Oh, yeah. And I'm gonna tell you something about in LA. I'm and, and like I say, LA to me is like Scottsdale. It's, it's a bunch of people up there like to show up in nice shit. They like to show up, so they're gonna pay a little extra to show up in something nice. Motherfucker don't like getting out no Malibu missing the bumper. Motherfucker, they got a goddamn 1985 Chevy Cavalier because they cousin in town. I'm in town. I could just take it to the bar. No, dog. You got a motherfucking Cavalier. That's a 1985 Cavalier. Nobody even got them cars no more. I don't want you to take me to the club. But I miss you. We cousins. I'm going to take you to the clubs. So you can save money on Uber. Motherfucker, I'd rather pay $50 than somebody doing a private ride, riding that motherfucking 1985 Cavalier. I'm not going to the club with no Cavalier. So, Scottsdale's like that. You go up there, LA's the same way. They want to be pulled up. They want to get out of a nice black car, step out of a, a white, you know, uh, limo, because it might be a motherfucker with a camera out there. Might be somebody want to take a picture out there. Oh, man, that was me getting out that car, dog. That was me. Look at me. Motherfucker, get out and fall. <laughs> I know. Oh, DB, you know it, brother. You know it. Say so they like to show up in a nice whip, man. We show up in the lifting whips. They love it. Oh, yeah. And see, we got to do that, DB, man. Me and you one night. Got to use these. lip. I got to grab my Jeep. I'm going to clean it up. I never put tire shine on my shit. Your shit looks super clean, man. Super. And you drove in snow that day. And that shit still looks super clean. So I got to clean my car up. I got to put some tire shine on it and everything. And we just go do some Scottsdale lifted rides all night. We call that shit. We call that shit get high transportation. Because we lift it. We're going to call it get high transportation. They're going to think we about weed. They're going to say, oh, man, these dudes sell some weed. They call it get high transportation because we lift it, man. We're all lifted Jeeps. We're trying to get high. You want to get high up. That's all. Oh, we thought y'all get people rides to the dispensary, dog. Motherfucker looking like Tyrone Bingham's. Y'all get people rides to the dispensaries because I just ran out of some crack. No, oh, motherfucker, this ain't get high. No. <laughs> like, shit. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. They love it. We about to get high, motherfucker. We finna get high. It's like, shit, we pull up and lifted a motherfucking car. Everybody cruising around, lifted cars. Wait a minute. Here you go. Take that 600 you save on commercial insurance and use it towards a car payment for a nice car. There you go. There you go. Hey, and that money. And the thing is, because the way HUM operates, it gives you the leverage to, to I mean, get in, jam, get money. You got commercial insurance right on this card. All Just get in and get that money. Get in and get it. Say that $600 you save on commercial insurance, that right there, that right there is your car note. That's your stack right there. There's so many ways Hum is helping people stack, man. It, it's like we could sit down and go over this whole app up and down, all the possibilities, everything we're doing. We could, like me and DB was doing the other day. We messing with like, you know, uh, bri uh bridal shower, not bridal showers, you know, bachelorette parties. We can sit there and run a bachelorette party website with Hum. We can say, hey, you know what? This is, you know, get high transportation. We show up in lifted Jeeps. We do this, we do that. Lifted, you know, forerunners. We, this is what we do. You know, when you come to Arizona, get the Arizona experience, step out on 37s. You know, we we riding all night and we just use hum. We put them on the hum app. Every time they land, we go get them. We put them on the hum app. We have commercial insurance now. But our whole website is saying we do private rides for, you know, Arizona style private rides and lifted Jeeps and shit. Motherfuckers have no idea. As soon as they get, OK, hey, what's your number? We might already have the number because we contacting them back and forth. So as soon as they come to the car, we already done put the number in the system already. Hit fucking start ride. Hit OK. Hit start ride. Give them the car and say, hey, when you guys leave the club, you know, if you can't find me, use it. I'm, there are so many possibilities with an app like Hum. So many possibilities, man. And like Marcel said, the money you save on not having to buy your own commercial insurance. And I can't wait to the CEO gets here because there's something major going on. All the money we're saving and what they're doing through crowdfunding and how they're building this fucking app up, man, y'all have no idea. Y'all have no, this app is, it has to go beyond Arizona's borders. It just has to. There's no way Arizona can keep this app to ourselves. I would love to see this shit in other areas because other drivers need to eat too. And the way that it's set up, it, it's man, it's a no brainer. I'm, I'm surprised. And the only reason why more apps don't do it, I can't even say I'm surprised. More apps don't do it because drivers get so much money and the greedy ass people are sitting around going, well, we could be living off these drivers backs. Why the hell are we letting the drivers make all the money? We could be living off their backs. If this dude's paying $100 for the ride, 
Why don't we just give the driver 60, 70 percent and we take the rest? And this is what people think. This is what people instead of saying, man, this driver's out there busting his ass, charging 30, 40 dollars a month just to be on our platform. He could use our insurance. The money you save in calculate how much it costs for you to pay for commercial insurance every month. Actually, I'm gonna do a video about that shit. I'm gonna do a video about me having to pay livery insurance, commercial insurance, maybe NAMT insurance. If I got to pick up a sick motherfucker, I'm gonna look up all these things and I'm gonna show you me paying $30 a month, $1 a day, how much money I save just by being on home and using their commercial insurance versus me going out and spending it. Motherfuckers gonna be like, Jeff, dog, you better buy you a motherfucking Lambo Urus. Buy you a Lambo Urus with all that shit you saving, dog. You, I want to see you come to the motherfucking airport in a Lambo Urus next week with all the money you save. Like, motherfucker, I've only been doing this shit for like a month. <laughs> I can't buy a Lambo Urus already. <laughs> no. They have to watch out for fair share. I'm silent over here. Oh, but that's the same thing, Dems Dallas. Hey, fair share. We know you developing that app too, but this is the thing about fair share what people don't understand. Fair share is, is it's an extension of what hum is and i'll tell you motherfuckers why because i don't know if you talked about it or not yet as, as far as what i want to say about how you know people can get in and you get referrals and people make money and how people make money and how riders make money and how drivers make money off the using the app it hum doesn't do that hum does something totally different so you have two different apps apps that don't even compete with each other the only difference is is that one app can be used to do like private rides instantly and crazy shit and all this that's cool your app does a lot with like crypto and it, it, it's a it's a lot your app is a lot it's a lot trust me it's its own enterprise your app is an inner if, if hum is a business if hum is a travel transportation business yours is an enterprise because there's so many ways you can make money doing doing fair share and i never have to drive a fucking car real shit real shit. i never have to drive a car on fair share never i could just say hey i drive hum but I got fair share. I might do one or two fair share rides. They say, dude, how, how do you make all that money on fucking fair share? How the fuck are you doing it? I'm telling you, these are two different. Pe when people create, when they create apps and they're creating business models, some models don't even overlap. They're almost in the same industry, but there's almost no overlap. The only thing that overlaps is that people can jump in our backseat. That's it. People can jump in our backseat. But you can run both apps tandem and damn near double. You, the income you make now, you could probably double, triple it in a day. If I'm running fair share while I'm running hum at the same fucking time, oh, trust me, I will have a Lambo Urus, motherfucker. I'll have a Lambo Urus, and I will be picking up motherfuckers in $3 rides. I'll be delivering hot dogs in that motherfucker. I'm going to be doing everything in my Lambo Urus. They're going to say, dude, how do you have a Lambo Urus and you delivering hot dogs? I'm like, because I do this shit because I can. <laughs> He goes, I ain't never seen a motherfucker pull up to a fucking hot dog on a stick in a Lambo yours. Yeah, give me two of those Coney dogs and one of those Shelly dogs and one of those smelly dogs, motherfucker. I got to deliver this shit over here to these apartment complexes. Dog, you do delivery in a Lambo yours? How the fuck you do that? Fair sharing home, motherfucker. <laughs> you understand I'm running two apps at the same time. <laughs> it's like motherfuckers don't even know. They don't even know. Jamil, what's good? Yeah, I'm, but I'm telling you, Dems, hey, keep developing, keep developing, because these motherfuckers have no idea. Drivers, especially drivers on this channel and the ones in our live stream, I'm so grateful and so thankful and so appreciative of you guys rock with me all the time. And I'm sharing business knowledge with you motherfuckers. I'm not charging y'all for nothing. I appreciate the super chats, appreciate the memberships, but the knowledge that y'all getting on this channel, the people who are coming here, the people who are coming here bringing apps and bringing ways that we make money we're making money i'm and stripe already paid me twice already i don't know when they pay but stripe processes the payment once stripe processes the payment it hits my account so i have all my cash app all my venmo all my cash and my very last stripe from hum hit today i think hum pays that fast it pays that the shit's instant instant and i'm thinking do these people even realize the apps that we're talking about are functioning right now? They're functioning right now. And I'm like, man, oh, psh, oh yeah. Oh, doing March Madness. I think in those four days, I probably made about a, a thousand bucks in those four days. And that's the thing, though. I didn't even drive a whole lot. The miles were crazy right now, man. The miles were crazy. 
Exactly. Charge to the game, brother. That's what it is, man. You see it. That's what it is. And that's why I tell my buggers, if you help out your crew and you help out everybody around you, the shit's going to come back. It's going to come back. I mean, just the fact that how me and DB, me and Jamil, me and AJ, Urban Hitchhiker, me and Big Kev, how we all interchange clients with each other, how we move clients around. I don't, I have no problem giving Big Horn Kev, my, I got the two nurses and I got the one, uh, the little investor out there. I don't mind giving those people to Kev because once they met me, they met a solid motherfucker because I said I could take care of y'all. I didn't say it'll be me, but I'm going to take care of y'all. If I'm in the area and you hit me up, I'll take care of you. But I'm so far from the airport. If you come into the airport, I'll take you. But if you out at home, I got Big Kev already sitting out there. If Big Kev says, man, I'm actually in a uh, surprise right now. Hit Jamil. Jamil's like, dude, I'm just in Gilbert. I can shoot straight up and pick her up. How much is she paying? Oh, she paying this much. Cool. Or talk to your price when you get there. And this is what it is, man. This is what it is, man. And, and people don't understand that our money's coming back through sharing our money is coming back through keeping our base of clients happy our money don't have to come back through me trying to be fucking greedy because once princess knows that um oh what, yeah, i think her name was princess no it was like passion passion once she knows that i took care of her but i had to use one of my other drivers jamil might say hey i can't pick you up to his people but he may say i got another driver his name's jeff just like db db was like i can't pick you up but i got another driver his name's jeff he could pick you up at three o'clock in the morning so she called me hey uh deandre said you're one of the drivers with us i was like, yeah yeah cool cool that's how we take care of each other what up chris d i was talking about you earlier i was talking about you earlier and yeah and that's what we do that's what we do we try to move people around because I don't want to be a driver that's got to do a ton of dead miles just to get to somebody to make $25 if Jamil is already over there. I mean, I'm going to lose money, time, and opportunity fucking with dead miles. I got to find out where everybody is. That's why I keep saying we need to create a Discord, Discord group or something like that so we know where everybody is. Because if I say, hey, Jamil, what side of town you on tonight? Uh, I got two airport rides. I might do this and I might do that. Cool, cool. And then I might say, OK, well, I know DB's in Scottsdale. I don't have to worry about Scottsdale. Any of my people in Scottsdale, I got you already. I got you already. So all you got to do is talk. That's it. Gift of the gap. That's it, brother. Oh, man, Rick, that's what I swear, brothers. The channel does so well because you show generous interest in helping people. Keep up the great work, my friend. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Chris, D, you just got the live notification. What? What? That sucks. That sucks. Yeah, that's it. That's it right there. It's like, all you got to do is talk, give to the gab. And I tell people, man, I've said before the truth. These are our weapons. Your ears are your weapons. Your eyes are your weapons. Your mouth is your weapon. That's how you stay out of poverty, man. You got to use your weapons. When I'm looking, and I see somebody with a suitcase. I'm using my weapons. I see them with a phone in their hand. I'm using my weapons. I'm trying to attack poverty every day. I'm attacking this shit. I'm attacking poverty. You got to use your weapons. I can. Yeah, I can't find a damn ride. You, you say you can't find a rod? Hey, I'm actually a driver. See, I'm speaking. I'm listening. I'm watching. I'm using my weapons. I'm attacking poverty every day. I'm attacking poverty because when you stand silent, when you ain't thinking, when you see when you see a situation going down and you don't want to mess with it, you ain't you, you you don't put your weapons down. You ain't put your weapons down. It's like pick them weapons up, man. Pick them back up. Be like, hey, listen, I heard you girls need a need a ride somewhere. Yeah, we need a ride over here. Like, OK, cool. I got you. I got you. So, yeah, a client will be traveling down there in the Sacramento for work. She's going to reach out some, to me, y'all, take care of Rock. Yo, yeah, we're going to take care of her. We're going to take care of her. Yep, yep. Well, I might work tonight. It's only 1030. It's, I can go till 4 in the morning. It's only 1030. So I might get out there. Yep, I'll speak up. That's I get on my private rides, man. They want someone they can trust all weekend. They have fun. And, say, and that's what it is, man. And the thing is, and, and the one thing I like about DeAndre he gets in the car. He's full of energy. He's laughing. He's smiling. Like when we went and picked up the girls the other night, we we got out the cars. We didn't just sit in our cars like hermits and shit and this and that, talking on the phone back. No, we got out the cars, shut the doors. We like you know chatting on the on the sidewalk in front. We in there, we laughing and we act like we live at the motherfucking house. We sitting there having a good time in they front. These girls ain't even came outside yet. Me and DeAndre in the front, like like we live in the motherfucker. Like we just parked here, just kicking it. Girls came out first thing they did they lit up they lit up because they saw we was full of energy already we was having a good time chatting and talking they lit up they was happy as hell they was like oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah it was easy from there man it was easy from there 
So, and once you show that you got energy and they see that there's two drivers and we're not in competition with each other, we're not fighting. Oh man, I'm going to take more ride. I want to get more money. I want to no. Our whole focus was on energy and the girls. That was it. We didn't care about nothing else. Didn't care. We'll figure it all out later. And we cruising. That's why we were sitting in the car and the girls like, so how do I pay you? How do I pay DeAndre? How do we pay? What do we? So we sitting there talking about how to pay, how to pay, how to, we got the car. DeAndre's like, they already fucking paid me already. I was like, oh shit, that's what's up. <laughs> I was like, she was about to cash out me and I was going to cash out you, motherfucker. Listen, no, they already took care of me. I was like, cool, there you go. She was like, all right, there we go. We're, I guess we're good. But that's what it was about, man. That's what it's about. And Dondra was like, okay, I'm cool. I got to go bounce. I got some rides set up. I was like, cool, I'm going to head this way. I got to get home, eat me some. I'm about to hit the road too. And if I need him later, he's in Scottsdale. I just hit him up. Just hit him up. Hey, man, if you in Scottsdale, I got people trying to get a ride. I'm nowhere near. And I know you up there. So it's like, man. And that's how we take care of our people, man. Jamil, yeah. And see, Jamil, he's the airport dude, man. It's so many people that I know will get to the airport or have a friend get to the airport. And they be like, hey, call Jeff. And they're like, yeah, I'm at Terminal 4. I'm like, oh, dude, I'm actually in bed right now, motherfucker. You at Terminal 4? It's like 10 o'clock in the morning. And I'm like laying in bed. Guaranteed Jamil's somewhere near Terminal 4 at 10 in the morning. <laughs> All I got to do is be like, Jamil, Terminal 4, man, is a motherfucker wearing a fishing hat. <laughs> Goes by the name Henry. No, I'm just kidding. Man, I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you. All truth, wait till you get there, man. He says, waiting on the background check. Wait till you come through, man. When you get that background check, we're going to be doing it. <laughs> I'll, do, I'll be like, I'm in bed, motherfucker. I'm, a, I'm knocked out right now. Yeah, both of you guys, you and Jeff, Andre, you guys are the coolest drivers out there. Hey, brother, I say that to everybody, man. You guys, and I love, I tell everybody, the 300 we got, some of the coolest guys I ever met, especially in ride share. It ain't no hate. There's no competition. There's no, oh, I'm killing you. I'm killing you. You ain't making nothing compared to me. It ain't never like that. We happy that, you know, our cars ain't wrecked. I'm happy you like up. Ain't nobody threw up in your fucking car. I'm happy you making money. I'm happy you alive and you well because we got tomorrow to do this again. Then we got next week. We got to do this again. We got next month. So the more my family is happy, my, my family's energetic. We making money. Motherfucker ain't give up. Like, and I feel sorry for Nick, man, because Nick, he was family with us, but he had to go back to a W2 and I get it because right now he's just driving Uber X, but it's still doing like screwy shit. So he had to jump back into W2 for a while, but he still tries to do it on the weekends. He'll come back with us. I think he'll come back, but it's like, you know, he's still family. If he needs something, hit us up. He, hey, man, what side of town you guys work and where you guys at? I'll let him know because I'm like, maybe Nick's going to come out. I'll say, this is the side of town we're on right now. We got some people downtown. We're up north. We got a couple of people by ASU. Kev's over by uh, Canes. It's like, where you want to go, man? You got somebody in the area looking out for you, man. It's like, and, and I know me. When I'm in a certain area and I pull up and it's four or five people there and I'm saying like, oh, fuck, I got a small car. First thing I think about is who's in the area got an SUV? Because this is money on the curb that I do not want to give the Uber. I do not want to give it the Lyft. Fuck them. I don't take care of them like that. Y'all don't fit in my car. It's five of y'all. Y'all don't fit in my car. But if you can wait, let me contact somebody with SUV. I got people. Trust me, I got people. And they might be like, okay. I'm like, I'll show motherfucker. Like I said, we keep saying we need to take care, take pictures of everybody's phones. Yeah, Nick's in Scottsdale. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Nick called you the other day. Good, good. I'm glad, man, because he'd be reaching out to me every once in a while. I just check on him every once in a while. But if, if I got people sitting there and I keep saying we need to all take a picture with each other, like our cars and everything like that, because I might put a folder in my phone saying drivers. That's it. So I open up that phone, that, that folder that says drivers, and I can show them these are all the drivers we got. These are the cars we got. So if you want this, this black SUV right here, this is the Lincoln Aviator, we can get that. You want the big white four runner? We got that. We got Billy Proctor. He's got the big white Escalade. They might be like, oh, shit. Hit Billy. We need that Escalade. Okay, cool, cool. Hit him. If he's in the area, he got you. This is his phone number. Hit him up right now. He's out all weekend. And that means I don't have to be, I don't have to deal with that. I can now go deal with some clients like I was dealing with Passion the other night. You know, one person, two people, like the two nurses. I want to do one, two, one, two until I get my SUV. But when I'm getting four or five, I could do four. I don't like it. And when people come with four, I really wish I could just pass them on to somebody else because I, I could do three because I my car got bucket seats. One in the front, two in the back. People sit on that hump, it irritates the shit out of me. But I would love to be like, hey, if y'all want a bigger vehicle, just let me know. Just I could, I could find somebody. All right. Hey, who's in the area? I got four people right now. They're going to go in and have another drink real quick, but they say they're ready to go, man. I'm telling you, DB, I don't want to get no money to these apps at all, at all. 
I'd rather give it to one of my friends before I give it to these damn corporate drive off and let a pigeon come through. Oh, yeah, I'm getting eleven dollars for this ride. Where are you guys going? Maricopa. Motherfucker, you leaving Tempe to go to Maricopa for eleven dollars? Well, I'm going to get three extra dollars. <laughs> it's like, OK, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Two a.m. and XL ride doesn't always end well. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I do XL, but I don't feel like dealing with six people. Yeah, six people is, is a lot, especially if they drinking. Six people that are drunk. Oh, man. And the one in the front I always want to fuck with the radio and play DJ. It's like, motherfucker, you drunk. You don't even know my car. You touching buttons and shit. Got my windshield wipers fucking going. Motherfucking my goddamn fuel tank flap them. Flip the fuck open down the highway. You just touching shit. You don't even know what you're doing. Stop touching shit. <laughs> it's like, man. Y'all motherfuckers say, hey, what's this button, motherfucker? Fuel start dumping all in the highway. You just hit the fuel release button, you idiot. <laughs> what's this, motherfucker? Trunk pop up. Boom, flip behind me. I'm like, motherfucker, stop touching shit in my car. <laughs> <laughs> this is always one touch radio. Real shit, man. They always want to touch the radio. Oh, Logan's in the bill. Oh, Logan. Oh, I got a car for you today. I saw a gray Durango. I did a video, a gray Durango when I was out to the car lot. That motherfucker shut it down. Trust me, man. That great Durango will shut it down, man. I'm like, if I bought that, I don't even think I could do ride share. I just start riding around. Fuck it. I'll be riding around. I'm riding around. I'm getting it. It's mine. I'm spinning it. <laughs> I wouldn't even be an Uber driver. Jeff, what you doing? I'm riding around. I'm getting it. It's mine. I'm spinning it. Shit. I turned the bum be quick as a motherfucker. <laughs> that great Durango was sick. I'm like, ain't nobody touching that motherfucker. Like shit. Oh yeah. Oh, and this motherfucker was wide. It was so wide. And then it was low. I think my car could have fit in that motherfucker. And they had regular Durango wheels. It was sitting on the ground. Man, that shit was it was perfect. It when it was all stock, it was perfect. It was perfect. And I was like, and it had the, the good hood with the big scoop on the front so air can go in it. It looked like a, a rally or something, like a RT. Man, man, man. Was they scroll up real quick? Was that? Oh, here we go. Here you go. I got to keep lavender essential oil spray and ready at all times because when I'm between rides, I like to get high on the scent of my own farts and recycle, <laughs> recycle the cabin there. You stupid. Sometimes I forget. You stupid. You stupid. <laughs> well, we could just start playing with the cabin air farting in this car and shit like that. You stupid, man. You stupid. <laughs> what was that? It smells like lavender and fucking shit in here. Like, yeah. Did you like have a fucking plant bag? It smells like fertilizer, like a whole fucking thing of potting soil with lavender plants. Now it's me farting and spraying, motherfucker. <laughs> it's like, I thought you was a gardener. Like, no, nah, motherfucker. I ain't got no potting soil in my car. That's me. <laughs> smells like manure. Shit. I was like, man, I bet those plants are pretty healthy. <laughs> like, that's me, motherfucker. I'm pretty healthy. I just ate a whole fucking burger. <laughs> <laughs> This is I have an OJ moment. <laughs> you stupid. They have an OJ moment on the freeway. Shit. Hey, that Durango will be my motherfucker. I'm driving. I ain't doing <laughs> This motherfucker is a lavender. I like this motherfucker's like lavender and fertilizer. Like, does somebody got a, a, ger a geranium in the car? It smells like a geranium. Like, uh, it smells like somebody's been gardening in here, man. Manure and fucking plants. Like, no, nah, motherfucker. That's me and that burrito I went down with. I sprayed this motherfucker down before I pick y'all up. <laughs> wow, I thought you were just a great gardener or something. <laughs> like, no, nah, motherfucker. I put that shit on fucking recycle. <laughs> I ain't hit the windows, motherfucker. You hit the windows, it freshens it up, cleans it all out. Shit. I ain't trying to do that. I'm trying to make this motherfucker the greenhouse effect. I got greenhouse gases for your ass in this motherfucker. Motherfucker, get in that bitch. You start growing plants out your hair. You're like, what the fuck are we sitting in? See, recycle that air. <laughs> he said, just potted meat like a. <laughs> he said, just potted meat. Shit. This motherfucker. Yeah, I swear to God. Hey, me and Tom to wake up gonna start as a ride shirt coming to call greenhouse gases. <laughs> like, what is greenhouse gases travel? That means you guys drive EVs. You about to find out what we drive, motherfucker. Get on in. Oh, greenhouse gases travel. I like this. We're saving the planet, babe. Motherfucker, get in the car. Be like, what's that smell? It smells like fertilizer. Greenhouse gases, motherfucker. <laughs> 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 I know that's funny shit. 
Yeah, these motherfuckers driving around in the car like, man, we thought we were saving the planet. These motherfuckers fall out the car coughing like a motherfucker. <laughs> I think I'm going to puke. What you eat today, man? <laughs> Look at, thank you for traveling with Greenhouse Gases Travel. Like, we'll never use you again. <laughs> thank you. What about the tip? I got a tip for you. Use toilet paper next time, motherfucker. Get away from us. <laughs> Time to wake up like another satisfied customer. Greenhouse gases travel. We deliver. <laughs> it's like this motherfucker. This motherfucker be fucking up people's car, man. <laughs> this is somebody be eating some broccoli. <laughs> broccoli and buckwheat. That's some fucking shit right there. This motherfucker's that green ass gases. Fuck that. Chili, baby. Man, what is that? <laughs> chili, baby. Chili. <laughs> This motherfucker picking people up, shit. Trying to wake up like, I don't think so, man. He said, he said wait, wait. I can't. I'm telling you, damn, this motherfucker time to wake up. Is uh, he, Something's wrong with him. This motherfucker said, I don't even let the windows down. I just recycle the air in there and just keep spraying. Like, motherfucker, that shit smell like fertilizer and geraniums in that motherfucker. It smell like Fern Gully. You know, Fern Gully is that dinosaur with that little pet friend. He runs around with a friend. His name's Fern Gully. I think it's a bird and a dinosaur. <laughs> I'm start calling time to wake up that man. You fern gully. The fuck is fern gully? His mother got plants in his car and shit, man. We must be spraying and shit. Like, what's fern gully? I, ain't that a car? Little kids be coming up. That's my favorite cartoon. No, that's fern gully. That's time to wake up. <laughs> is this live? Like, fuck no, man. We left. We left. <laughs> <laughs> Running around eating beans and corns. This is beans and corn travel. Like, what the fuck is beans and corn travel? You guys deliver food? Like, no, sorta. <laughs> beans and corns travel. I think I'm gonna use that to deliver our Uber Eats from now on. Like, you don't want that shit to deliver your Uber Eats, motherfucker. Drop your bag off. Like, where you stop at? The greenhouse? You stop at a fucking a nursery? Like, what'd you do? Walk through some fertilizers, a pot and soil or something? This shit stinks, man. It's like, nah, bro. Greenhouse gases travel. Here you go. <laughs> the Elvis has left the chat, man. One of the says, can you let the window down? Break out one of those and see how fast they figured out for themselves. <laughs> exactly. Motherfucker farts like shit, man. Yeah, you're going to figure that window out. Motherfucker, you riding on the highway with the door open. Hey, why the dome light come on? Motherfucker, I can't figure out your window. I had to open the door. Motherfucker, just driving on the highway door. Why the fuck open? <laughs> Just air just circulating back there. Hey, dog, turn my... Man, the dome light is blinding me, dude. Shut my door, man. I can't figure out your window. One of you motherfuckers stank. Shit. I said, Jeff, you burrito before the next round. I said, want to get away? <laughs> Commercial for Southwest Airlines. I'm telling you, man. Want to get away? Shit. Motherfuckers be like, hey, leave them windows rolled. And I'm going to tell you something about leaving windows rolled up. Man, when you got somebody in the back seat who ain't take a fucking shower and you let your windows down, Motherfucker, you you just created a tornado of funk. That shit's like this all in your car now. Because you thinking, oh, man, it smells a little bit. Let me just let the windows. Don't do it. Let that shit stay in the back seat. Put them motherfucking windows up. Make sure the air does not circulate. Because the moment you let that window down, that shit going to be like this in your car. You're going to be getting the head with fucking mushrooms, fucking turkeys, turtles, mayonnaise, all kind of shit hitting you in the fucking face. You're like, dude, what the fuck is going on? You ain't showered today, motherfucker? No, no. <laughs> so the watch train is going on. <laughs> <my> <laughs> hey, real shit, man. These rotten motherfuckers get in my car, man. I do not let the windows down. I, I just hold my breath between lights. And when the car stops, sometimes it's like fucking it, go. That's it. Motherfucker, don't talk to him a lot. Listen to music. You like music? Yeah, play that shit. Like, hold your breath. Because once you start rapping and shit like that, you're using up all your breath. You got to hold that shit. <laughs> Took ride, did the drive it. Motherfucker damn near passed out and shit. Like, take another breath. <laughs> He's like, fuck that shit. Especially in Arizona in the summer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 he was that fucking burnt. <laughs> hey, that's real shit, man. I don't fuck around with these people. Is it, <laughs> is it about to pass out for $16? <laughs> motherfucker, hold your breath. This motherfucker ain't taking a shower. We gonna be there. It's like, how long is this trip, man? 14 miles. Damn. <laughs> I was hoping it was a short one. <laughs> motherfucker, shit. 
She'd get out the stoplight, be like, oh, man, I need to get out of the stoplight and check my license plate. Like, motherfucker, well, you don't think you got one on the car? No, I just need some fresh air. Fuck that. Get out. License plate still here. Man, you take as many breaths as you can. Be like, <sighs> the motherfucker jump back in the car. <sighs> Drive like a motherfucker. Don't, don't breathe, motherfucker. Don't breathe. This motherfucker need to take a shower. He's like, do you mind if I let the window down? I'm like, no, nah, man, don't do that. Don't do that. What's wrong? My windows are broken. No, it's not because you let it up when you pulled up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like shit. All right, let it down, motherfucker. Let that window down. That should be like, woo, 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 woo. and then when you get to where you gotta get to, now you gotta you gotta wipe everything down because that funk that should be on the inside of your windows. That should be on your dashboard. You gotta get a whole new smell. Just spray a rag, wipe steering wheel, wipe everything down to kill that fucking smell. Seats, everything. Because if your ass don't, man, I'm telling you, them funk nados be fucking motherfuckers up. Summertime, shit. And it's sad because sometimes when people don't wear a seat belt in the back seat, my seat belt sits on the thing. They lean back into the seat belt. I wish seat belts was made out of leather so you can wipe them off. But these seat belts made out of canvas. And when you lay on a canvas fucking product, your sweat soaks into that canvas. So I got to clean my seat belts because the next person get in, they grab that seat belt and they pull that motherfucker across them like this. They're going to smell all that shit that was just sitting on that seat belt, all that sweat. All that funk, they're gonna be like, now nah, they shirt gonna smell like that. When these motherfuckers walk to the office, they're gonna say, Damn, Becky, you take a shower this morning? Yeah, I just got out of this rotten ass BMW a minute ago. You gotta wipe down those motherfucking seat belts, man. Clean up here, yep, a disinfectant. <laughs> $15 funk ride. I do it. <laughs> what them say? She said she puts about the car for being funk. It's, it's offensive to my nose. She sent a driver support a notification telling them why I had to kick that funky motherfucker out. That's it. They actually got a button on my phone that says this motherfucker funky. That's all it says. It ain't no other button around. It's just a big ass button in the middle screen that says this motherfucker funky. You just touch it. <laughs> Support automatically dials you in. Hey, Jeff, you another one of those days? Another one of those days, man. Another one of those days. <laughs> so you have some poor man fail a job interview a lifetime because you wrote him to the interview that day. I know it. Motherfucker walking, man, that guy, he smelled horrible, man. He smelled like ass. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> that's funny shit that's funny shit this is all man this shit all came up and I, that's why i tell people all the time man you got to keep your car clean wipe them seat belts down wipe your floors your handles everything because i don't know man i don't know this is the word when you pull up and they smoking a cigarette oh yeah oh well, i see that shit and these motherfuckers trying to get the last little bit of they'll be walking to the car and be smoking that motherfucker like a joint like, dude, it's a cigarette. They don't cost that much. You can get another one, man. Just put that motherfucker out. No, man, this is the best part. Like, dog, you finna smoke the, like the fucking filter. It's like at the end, there's cotton balls and shit in that motherfucker. You burning the cotton balls. It's probably got chemicals in this motherfucker. You're gonna fuck around and pass out smoking cotton balls at the end of a cigarette. Put that shit out, man. Don't smoke that. It's like, yeah, <laughs> smoking the devil's lettuce. <laughs> this is shit. That's devil's lettuce. Say so any update with the Hummer interview? Oh, Chris, you missed it. We already had the interview on this live stream earlier tonight. He already came and talked to everybody, dude. You got to go all the way back to about an hour and a half, and we had the whole conversation, dude. It lasted about a good hour. It was good. It was good, man. You missed it. Now I'm fucking with you. We ain't have it yet. We're going to get it, though. We're going to get it. Like, I got to uh, send him a text tomorrow, and I'm going to end up probably seeing if I can set it up. <laughs> <laughs> He said, fucking liar. <laughs> Juan Vargas is that little kid in the fifth grade just pointing at you in the window. Liar. <laughs> I already went to lunch today and I cleaned up my tray. Liar. Your tray's on the table. <laughs> so I had the Sun Games work. Okay, cool, cool. There you go. There you go. Man, man. Nah, we, we almost there, man. We almost there. <laughs> <laughs> AJ's back in the build, man. <laughs> fucking Juan Vargas, this motherfucker. He, he the one. He tapped the teacher. Miss Johnson, he's a liar. <laughs> he didn't clean his tray up today. It's got mashed potatoes on it. <laughs> he's just a liar. <laughs> <laughs> like okay, Juan. <laughs> today, Juan found another liar. Put a fucking a little check mark on the board. Yeah, Jeremy's a liar. Caught another one. <laughs> <laughs> he said, damn it, I was about to 
I know one dollar. <laughs> I know fucking one out there catching all these motherfucking liars. One, that mother just walking around the school, little fifth grader and shit. He hear my, you telling the secret? Is it a lie? Don't be a liar. I'm just talking to my friend, man. I don't know who the fuck you is. <laughs> That's Juan Vargas, superhero. He's a liar catcher. <laughs> he, do we call him the LLC, the little liar catcher? I'm LLC, Juan Vargas LLC. Is that limited liability corporation? No, motherfucker, this is a little liar catcher. I'm Juan Vargas LLC. <laughs> Fucking superhero mask and everything. <laughs> Juan gets another gold start of the 300s here, man. I'm telling you, he said, got your ass. You are a liar. <laughs> <laughs> that shit's funny as a motherfucker. Motherfucking kids at school be like looking around and shit. They be like, <clears throat> you don't see Juan around here? No, man. All right, then tell me about it. All right, so yesterday, Juan pop out the trash can. You're a liar. <laughs> Damn, man, he caught me again, man. This motherfucker. <laughs> Juan walking around with a hall pass. He got, it's gone to his head. This only motherfucking kid in the hallway just walking, looking for people. I'm Juan Vargas, LLC. Little liar corp. Little liar catcher, motherfucker. <laughs> Hell yeah. Juan Vargas, the gold star, LLC. <laughs> I know it. This motherfucker put a star next to Jeremy's name. God damn it. Yeah, he got caught lying today. <laughs> damn. Well, what about Jamil? Jamil's got eight stars next to his name. Jamil lies all the time. He says his name was Jim. You fucking liar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell no. <laughs> He popped out the trash can with his best Kevin Mango. You're a liar, Pedro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck it. Juan Vargas and Kevin Mango. Superheroes like Batman and Robin. This is Juan and Kevin. Like, yeah, Pedro. We're catching liars today. <laughs> <laughs> These motherfuckers running the schoolhouse. Like everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The teacher leaves the class and says, Juan, you're in charge, fucking Juan. <laughs> you go to the front of the class. Yeah, Pedro. <laughs> Pedro sitting in the back like, I don't know how the fuck I got in class with this motherfucker. I guarantee when I grow up, his ass will probably be a motherfucker driving a Tesla. Guaranteed it. Sure enough, Juan has a Tesla Model S. <laughs> and because Pedro never listened, Pedro's homeless. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Where are they now? <laughs> Juan Vargas has the fastest car in the city. He speeds up next to people to the stoplights. You're a liar. This <laughs> 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 fucking jam. <laughs> he put his pants on fire. No, <laughs> so he wants to do with the tape in the middle of his glass <laughs> in the hallway looking for trouble. <laughs> Just wait till I catch you. <laughs> Juan was not that fast as a kid, so he vowed, when I grow up, I'm buying the fastest car I can find so I can catch all you little liars. Juan has a Model S. <laughs> <laughs> now try to lie, you little liars. <laughs> <laughs> Juan's a whole fucking show. I'm telling you, this motherfucker's a whole. He's a new superhero. And I always say he got the Batmobile. Like, dude, this is like the Batmobile. Now I know why. Juan Vargas, LLC. <laughs> the little liar catcher. <clears throat> you started messing with Juan's Once upon a time. <laughs> this is, we just fuck with you, Juan. We just beg you, bro, man. We be always messing with Juan. <laughs> Juan never catches a break. He never catches a break. But I'm telling you right now, this motherfucker right here, Juan is probably one of the best cash ride people I know, especially downtown. Downtown is just his shit. I mean, if you got an event downtown, you got something going on, Juan is like, I don't know what he says to these people or why they feel comfortable with him to the point where he can walk up and say 100 bucks and they'll be like, okay. They probably remember his ass from third grade. That's Juan. I knew he was going to grow up one day. I remember all your lies, Jimmy. Hundred bucks. <laughs> no, but I'm this motherfucker is like a cash rod king with that shit. 
And with cherry picking, I remember when I first met him, he was good at cherry picking. He was good at, you know, getting surged, cherry picking. This motherfucker now, Lip and Uber don't like him. I know because I think he does Lip. All he does is black rides. That's it. They don't like him at Lip. I'm telling you, this motherfucker probably single handedly took away the whole office supply fucking budget just doing ride share. They ain't got no office supplies at Lip because of this motherfucker. He probably drowned. Him. We ain't got no copy paper because Juan worked this weekend. Damn it. <laughs> He's still out there doing his thing in the Batmobile. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Juan is Batman. <laughs> it's been confirmed. Juan is Batman. Yeah. <laughs> See, Juan sits in the front of the class and never looks back. Just smiles at the teacher face all day. Fucking Juan. <laughs> Did you hear about the bags got? Hold on, it was a hole in Juan. Shit. Man, that's just funny as hell. No, but Juan, man, this motherfucker, he, I've seen people make some serious money. But he's on the apps and he does it. Say so Friday, Saturday, a couple hours on Monday night, made twenty four fifty eight. Lip ate my ass, man, and that's for real, because he was only at the Glendale Stadium the whole time. Friday, Saturday, a couple hours on Monday, twenty four fifty eight. I'm gonna tell you, I've seen his phone before. These numbers is legit. These numbers is real. These numbers is real. He drives a Model S. He stays on black. He don't let him play with him at all at all they will send him a shit ride he'll kick out a 50 dollar ride because he'll be like this ride 51 dollars yeah but it's all the way up to like damn near pima road 51 dollars he'll kick that shit out oh this ride right here 110 dollars nine miles like how the fuck you do that yeah exactly the hunt i got it in my phone the 110 fucking dollars bro i was like what the fuck man i saw that shit hold up man i'm gonna see this hold on i know i got it in here somewhere this shit was crazy I saw that ride. I was like, you're kidding me. You're kidding me. This right here, man. Current ride. Fucking $110 for that ride. 100 When you sent me that shit, I was like, bruh, how in the hell you go from Westgate to the Sanctuary Resort on Camelback? $110 in one cent. That ride would pay me Probably $24, $25 in my car. That's what they would offer me. Now, I'd probably offer them $60, $70 to do it. $60, $70, I could do it. This motherfucker got $110. I was like, bro, what the? Yeah. I'm telling you, man, Wanda, he will decline every, because he knows these rides exist. He hmm. does only black. He knows what exists out there. He knows what exists. So he'll sit there and kick out $38 rides, $18 rides, $24 rides. Next thing you know, it'll be like $70 rides just pop up. $70 be like 15 miles. I'm like, dude, he's like, dude, I know he knows the app like the back of his hand when it comes to black rides. Lyft is going to go under. Lyft's going under. Because when you got smart drivers like this, you got smart 29 miles, fucking almost $4 a mile. When you got smart drivers like that on the app, they, man, they can't do it, man. Now that look like an Obama phone. Motherfucker, this ain't Obama phone. This your mama phone. <laughs> I mean, I bought this little two hundred dollars ass phone like two years ago, man. And I'm gonna tell you what, this phone has lasted me forever. I got a magnet on the back. I also got Velcro on the back. This motherfucker phone does everything. So no matter what the situation is, if you got a magnet, I got you. You got Velcro, I got you. If you wearing suspenders, I got you, motherfucker. You get no matter what you wearing, I got you. This phone is like the all in one emergency first aid kit. I think band aids come out this motherfucker sometimes, man. You get a cut. I got you. You need stitches? I got you. Motherfucker, I'll be like, stitching your motherfucking leg up. <laughs> You're like, wait a minute. How the fuck did you put stitches in your leg? Man, you see that phone he got? This motherfucker's like a suture kit. Like, look at this shit. <laughs> $200, man. This phone will last me years. Years, man. <laughs> exactly. This <laughs> motherfucker said the Obama phone. <laughs> that motherfucker. And I got the only Obama phone that's got a direct link to the White House. I can call the White House right now and be like, hey, man, what's everybody doing? <laughs> Is this Jeff? Yeah, man. You still got that phone? <laughs> man, it's been years. I still got it. <laughs> Motherfucker still alive? <laughs> like, yeah. I'm telling you, though, no. But why don't be out there getting it, man? He'd be out there getting it, man. And I appreciate that shit when he'd be like, you know, he'll send me messages every once in a while because he was out in the... Um, he was out in Glendale. He was like, hey, man, come out to Glendale, dude. We're killing it, man. We're killing. Come out to Glendale. I'm like, dude, I'm trying to do this fucking event right now. We're trying to get these passengers, get these people lined up, this and that. Man, 
This is the Karma Sutra kit. <laughs> Everything in that motherfucker. Man. He's not a wannabe like a motherfucker. I met Juan. He says, I'm wonderful. Juan Vargas. Cocky motherfucker. <laughs> this is Jeff. I need a new alternator for real shit. And that's the thing, man. When he, because he was out at, at, uh, at the event and he was just killing it, man. Doing all just black rides. That's it. I mean, when you're getting 100 bucks a ride, 80 bucks a ride, 2,500 rides, $2,500. Think $2,500. And your rides are $100. All you need is 25 of those motherfuckers. Even if you did 50 rides at $50. And Juan don't do that many $50 rides unless it's real slow out. Because his rides be like 70, 80. He'll take a $28 ride, but he'd be like three miles. He's like, I got to go pick somebody up from down here. I'm going to take him up to the Sheraton. I'll be right back. $28. They'll send that shit to me. It's like nine bucks. <laughs> I'm like, I ain't picking that motherfucker up on nine bucks. And you get 28. Fuck that. But it's like, if you want to make 2,500, you're getting hundred dollar offers. You only need twenty five of those. If you're getting half of that, you only need fifty rides. Fifty rides in like almost three days. That's what. Yeah, you could do about twenty five rides. But then on a third day, you could probably you could probably do fifteen, fifteen, fifteen to make it forty five rides and still crank out twenty five hundred dollars. And that's how you drive smarter. Westgate is ride share death, whatever it says, add 30 minutes. And Chris, that's the thing that happened to me at the Beyonce concert. I got trapped in there and I got pissed and I left. I went to the Drake concert. I did a lot better. I did a lot better at the Drake concert than the Beyonce one. Beyonce, I was like, fuck it, I'm done. I'm done. But it's like, once you figure out that you got to pick up people from like Bass Pro Shops or that hotel that sits in the very front by the restaurants and everything, don't get sucked into the parking lot. Call your people, tell them, hey, man, you have to come out to me because if I go in there, it's going to be 30, 40 minutes before we get out. I can't get tucked in there. Yeah, see, pick them up at Bass Pro, test the leadership, deny 10 rides back to back until I get one. Yep, yep. And that's what it is, man. Don't get tucked because I got sucked in at a Beyonce concert. I thought I got there early. I was like, ooh, I'm here earlier. Somebody's trying to come out. I fucking made that. I went right past the cinema. When I went past the cinema, I made that left turn to the parking lot. It was nothing but a sea of fucking taillights and headlights. I was like, I can't turn. And it was a car behind me, so I couldn't back up. And I was like, I'm dead, man. I'm dead. I did one ride to Beyonce, and I called it good, man. I said, nope, I'm done. I'm done. Oh, yeah. And, see, and that's the thing, man. You got to say Bass Pro Shops. Make your people walk. They'll walk. Bass Pro Shops. The hotel that sits in the very front. When you Right across the street from Bass Pro Shops, there's a hotel right there. Make them sit on the ground because everybody sits on the ground, and we turn in. We pick them up from right, right there. And there's like some chicken place or whatever like chicken pickle, chicken and pickle, you can pick them up right by that little road. Do not get sucked into that fucking, in the West Gate. Because once you in, you're done. You're done. That's going to be your only ride for the night. By the time you're done, surge is going to be gone. Because you got sucked in. Let everybody else get sucked in. You grab from the outside, shoot to where you got to shoot to, get back. That's your second ride. And like I said, you're going to already be at about $150 in two rides. I did $150 in an hour and a half at the Drake concert. $150, hour and a half on basic platforms in my car. I was record, I screen recorded that shit. I put a video on it. $150 in about an hour and a half. I was like, man, that shit was crazy. The uh, Drake concert, I'm at $1,800, but I got some hoes throw up, and I got $150 for that shit. Yeah, exactly. Traffic is a momentum killer. Man, it, it drains you, man. It drains you. Because you're sitting there, and, and you're just sitting there, and you're seeing all the money. You're seeing people leaving the lights. You're seeing cars shoot down the street, Uber lights and shit taking off everywhere. And you're just like, I'm in traffic, man. I'm in traffic. I, I can't go nowhere, man. I'm done. I'm done. It's like when I do clubs, pick up the Scottsdale, have, uh, I have an area I make my riders walk to. If they ain't willing to walk, cancel. Yeah. Because that's the And sometimes you get sucked in by that club around the corner. I can't remember. It's on the back end where everybody goes on the back end. You got to hit people up early. Right across from the W, you know that light by the W. If you go across the street from there and you go down and you turn and come back and just park next to the fence, right next to the dirt, I make everybody walk there. Because I'm like, I can't go nowhere else. If you go on Brown Street, you're stuck on Brown Street. If you go on Shoemaker, you're stuck on Shoemaker. Go to that light because not a lot of people do that. And I'll tell people, hey, I'm sitting right across from the W at that light right there. There's no other cars but me. And I'll hot beam that. Like, oh, we see you. I say, yeah, when the light turned green, just run on across. Because I'm like, once you get sucked in, dude, it's done. Yeah, man, you start losing money. Once you get sucked in, there's nothing. Like, are we live? Yeah, we live. Yeah, just show up an hour before it ends. Do a drop around and scout the area. Yup, yup. 
and especially with the country concerts and stuff like that, I like to go almost at the tail end of the country concerts because those are the people at the tail end of the country concerts. Everybody's a nature hike because what drivers do is they go in and they pluck all the short shit first because they want to keep doubling, tripling up on that surge. So everybody who's a nature hike, they're getting canceled off the bat. If you go to a concert and you got a, you know, 40 mile ride, cause I did a, a ride, I think it was 46 miles. And I think I got like $150 or something weird. I did a video on it. I think it was like 150 bucks, but it's like, it was way out to Apache Junction. That was my last ride. It was clear out the Apache. I was at Westgate and had to take them all the way to Apache Junction. That was it. That was my only ride. So they had to wait to the very end because everybody all day is doing all the short shit. Yep, Wells Fargo, you get trapped. And you got to keep, you know, doing all the short shit, short shit, short shit. As soon as you the, it start winding down, have a surge for the end. Save whatever surge you got because it's going to be a long one. They don't do any short shit at the end. The end is everybody who got canceled in the beginning because nobody wanted to be out of the surge. And you got to go all the way. And the people was cool. We stopped that fucking quick trip. We got shit to drink. We was kicking back, laughing, talking and shit. They paid me pretty well for that. But it was just a long, I knew it was going to be my last ride. I said, this is it. I'm done. I took this ride. I'm not coming back. I'm not because it was way too fucking far. What's up, Kimmy? What's up, kids? They have a good night, everyone. I have a client in the morning. Miss Kim. Go ahead and get it, lady. Get it. Hey, good luck with that. You need to pass them, get your QR codes passed and tell her, hey, get this to somebody else and let your clients know. Somebody told me, DB, I think DB told me this, Kim. You give your client, say, hey, for every 10th ride you take with me, you get the 11th for free. I think DB told me that. Somebody told me that the other night. I think it was DB. For every 10th ride you do with me, I give you the 11th one for free. I'll be like, hell yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Oh, and then I got a text today, too. Y'all know we got um Country Thunder coming up down near Florence, way out past Queen Creek. We got Country Thunder coming up. So, DB, this might be for you, man. Country Thunder's coming up. You got the big truck. I might take the Jeep down because I know my Beamer is not cruising through no dirt. I ain't cruising no fucking dirt. So, I'm going to take my Jeep out there, man, and do all cash rides. For every 10th ride they do with me, I give them a free hot dog fresh off the radio. <laughs> you get a free hot dog, motherfucker, get in the back seat and be like, man, the fuck you give me? Yeah, bro, this is your 10th ride, man. I'm, I gave you a hot dog. Where the fuck is this thing from? 7-Eleven. <laughs> oh, yeah. Country about to be a banger, man. This is about to be crazy, crazy. You mean Lauren Hill's in town tomorrow instead of Warren Hill's? Lauren Hill, is she coming back? Because I don't know if they canceled her or what. Lauren Hill. Yeah, but Country Thunder finna be crazy, man. It's finna be crazy. And I'm like, everybody, if you got, if you don't mind your car getting dirty, because it's going to get dirty. A lot of motherfuckers with boots. A lot of dirt you got to ride through. You got to pick up people the shortcut way. Be ready to do it, man. Be ready to do it. It's tomorrow night. Oh, yes, that's her. Yeah. So I'm going to probably get out there, Country Thunder, but I'm not taking my car. I'm taking that Jeep out. Because I'm like, dude. And I can fit, you know, four people comfortably and they're even bigger people where the, the BMW is kind of low to the ground. So if I can get out there and just start banging out cash rides, man, Queen Creek, Santan, just stay in that area all night. Don't leave nowhere, bruh. I might fuck around, break the record, fuck around, make like $90. Ain't nobody made $90. Motherfucker, I'm talking about making 90 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> the Jeff, man, you was out. I was out there for seven motherfucking hours, man. 375 miles, 90 bucks. Motherfucker, you just won the National Pigeon Award. <laughs> Ain't nobody a pigeon like me, motherfucker. I'm breaking records. <laughs> this motherfucker made $90 out of 300 miles. Motherfucker, like, woo, woo. Motherfucker, you pigeon award, goddammit. <laughs> Shit. No. Ticketmaster has Lauren Hill canceled. Oh, shit. She's canceled again. Oh, hell. Oh, hell. Lauren Hill tomorrow, downtown Phoenix. I don't know about that. Yeah, they're, she's canceled. She's canceled. Well, shit, man. I mean, they got to have something else going on. Because, I mean, what is what is it? Wednesday night tomorrow? Yeah, Wednesday night. We'll figure out what's going on Wednesday night. Let me, I'm going to go through a whole bunch of shit when I, like, after this live stream. I'll probably go through some and send people <laughs> the National Pigeon Awards, mm -hmm. motherfucker. That's what I got. National two days, 250 in straight paper cash from conference straight into the wallet. Hey, that's what it is, brother. That's what it is. Oh, that's what we need to do. We need to have a national pigeon award where somebody send me, but I'm gonna need the picture with them. 
Somebody send me a picture like on Facebook. If you know what somebody looked like and they're posting, oh, yeah, man, I did this fucking banger ride, bro. Yeah, I just fucking went all the way from Colorado to fucking Kansas City. Motherfucker gave me $200, man. Pigeon Award. <laughs> it's like, hold up. This motherfucker went from college. Yeah, man. Say, what the rider paid? The rider probably paid the app maybe 700 I got 200 It's like, Pigeon Award. And I'll fucking, hey, we'll have a Pigeon Award whole fucking video every, <laughs> every two weeks or every week. We'll probably two or three times a week we'll have a Pigeon Award fucking video. This is a national motherfucker. See themselves in that video and be pissed off. How you guys pigeon award me, man? I'm not even on YouTube because you a fucking pigeon. <laughs> he said, those are on TikTok. You can find a pigeon. Man, they be doing dumb shit, man. I can't believe this ride. I've never had this much money, man. $200 in one ride. I just had to go 500 miles this way, 500 miles back. I, w I stayed at a hotel overnight, man. It was easy. It was cake ride, man. $200. Like, bro, how much money you come home with? Well, I had to take out a loan at the payday loan place on my way back, but still, it was two hundred dollars. <laughs> like this motherfucker went, spent the two hundred on gas and hotel and food, and I was like, "Shit." <laughs> DB said, "Man, now you got me wanting that pigeon award, shit." DB, you you will never get it. DB like, "Oh yeah, man, I picked up a motherfucker in Phoenix at the airport, took him all the way to Flagstaff, bro, sixty one dollars." <laughs> Pigeon Award. <laughs> See, when you get in that black, you're, hey, man. I, today I was looking at, I'll, I'll show y'all some videos of what I was looking at today. I was going to do a, a video on, um, wait a minute. Let me see. If, I was going to, I was going to put them on a video at first. Wait a minute. Ah, where's this car at? All right. That, that's the first one right there. That is a Bentley SUV. That's a badass Bentley. Let me turn this thing down some because this shit's crazy. And so I was I was kind of going through all the cars. I was going around showing all the SUVs that was down. They had Beamers, they had SUVs, they had a lot of shit. It was all cars, a whole warehouse full of them, but like luxury cars, luxury SUVs. And the fact that it was in a warehouse, I believe most of them are stolen. So the price is really good. Some of the titles might be counterfeit, but we can deal with that. I got white out and shit. So I'm, so I'm going to start working with some of these cars, man. They got a lot of stolen ones in the very back. The wheels are don't match because they got a couple of like, you know, Porsches with BMW wheels. But I'm going to probably have those swapped out. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but I was looking at, oh, they had a Tesla. They had, it was a white Tesla like sitting in there. <laughs> Where's the car I was looking at? Oh, on that. Oh, there it is right there. So that's the car I was looking at. I was there looking at that uh, 2017 Acura MDX. But it was a lot of fucking cars there, man. Like I said, they had this Volkswagen Atlas. I ain't never seen no shit like that before. Man, it needs a third row. I love that car. Uh, that Atlas is cool. I would never buy a Volkswagen ever, but I would buy a Volkswagen Atlas. That's one I would buy. Because I was like, this car is fucking crazy. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Where's Logan at? Where's Logan at? Logan gone. That, that's that that's that Durango I was telling right there, man. That's that Durango. Logan, I got to send it to you. I got to send you a picture of that shit. You see that motherfucker? You're going to be like, I'm trading mine in. Hold up. That was a Traverse. Traverse. Oh, wait a minute. And that was that Volkswagen right there, that Volkswagen Atlas. Like I said, I'm going to do a video for it, man. I'm going to do a video. And I'm going to, because it's an eight minute video. I'm just going to play it. And you'll see all the cars I was looking at in this eight minute video, man. I had to come home, dude. I, I'm like, I got to rethink this shit. I need to do it. Start a GoFundMe, Jeff, a black car, turn around and take 65% of all his fare. <laughs> I got to GoFundMe minus 65% of every fare I've ever had for the rest of my life. <laughs> well, if I'll be 90 years old, still paying off this fucking car. Like, Jeff, you bought that car 40 years ago. Well, my fares are fucking 65 cent fee. I fucking did a GoFundMe. I'm fucked, man. <laughs> it's just funny as hell. Yeah, but definitely don't love. So I'm going to drop this video. It's just all the cars. It's nothing spectacular, but it's just interesting to see all the cars out there because I don't do a lot of car shopping because I'm always busy on YouTube doing it. So for me to see all these that I've never seen before, there's models out there I've never seen. And I'm like, this is fucking crazy. They got a car out there called a Karma. It's an electric car. There's two of them side by side. One was like, 
60,000, one was 85,000. They're karmas, whatever the fuck that is. But they were, they were pretty crazy looking cars, man. And then I was like, I looked at a couple of, there's the cool BMWs, cool Mercedes, shit like that. It was a Traverse. It was a third row Chevy Traverse. I don't know if Chevy Traverse is on the Uber blacklist, but I think they it had, it had, um, tan seats. So I couldn't get it. It had tan seats anyways. <laughs> Just go fund me for Jeff's black. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's funny shit. That's funny. Shit. Like motherfucker, I look just like these motherfuckers on Facebook. Yeah, I need to set up a GoFundMe just so I can give me a new engine because I was doing pigeon rides for way too long. Like, yeah, motherfucker, you ain't getting no GoFundMe. Think about the Volkswagen. Those they have great gas mileage. You can go all the way from Berlin to Warsaw in one tank, probably, motherfucker. Warsaw. Yeah, Traverse is not on black. Yeah, it's Traverse not there. What about the um the Atlas? It was a it was a Volkswagen Atlas. I don't think it's on black either, but it might be. It, it's probably not on XL because it was only a a four seater. It was a four seater. So because I don't know, I can't see the list, but it was a, it was like a 2021 Volkswagen Atlas. I think it was, but it said V6, but the motherfucker didn't have no tailpipes, man. So it's not, but I'll check. Yeah, it didn't have no tailpipes. I'm like, it must be an EV because uh, most cars that you know, it they gotta have tailpipes. If they got an engine, it's a tailpipe. This motherfucker gonna have no e. It had no tailpipes, but it said that it was a V6, and I'm like, this is a crazy looking car, a V6 with no tailpipes. This is crazy. It must be a. I don't know, man. I gotta look that car up. I don't know the black on black Expedition Platinum. That's a big ass truck, man. That's a big truck. Queen of the chessboard when it comes to ride share. The new Tahoe's shit, man. I don't know. I might just fucking want to give me a silhouette van. One of them old ass fucking Plymouth silhouettes with the doors and shit. It looked like a fucking, like a needle driving down the street. I get one of those and paint it jet black. <laughs> Pick up motherfuckers in that. They show they're like, dude, you look like you're in a spaceship. Well, this is a 1991 silhouette. <laughs> Liv just removed my 14-day schedule ride restriction. Back in the game, baby. Uh-oh, uh-oh. You're going to be like, yeah, ah, fresh meat for EV jail. Yeah, exactly, exactly. If they don't let Jeff on black, that's racist. Motherfucker, exactly, exactly. Oh, the Atlas is not black. Ah, whatever. Liv going to be like, yeah, Jeff, we can't let you on Uber black. Motherfucker, I am black. I got to be on Uber black. Liv black, no, we can't let you. You got an orange car. Motherfucker, I'm black. I'm an Uber black driver. I'm a black Uber driver. <laughs> they, what do you call a Uber black driver? A black Uber driver? Motherfucker, anything that's not full, big, full size Lux is not on the black list. All right. 2009 Prius, spray painted black and had a third row seating. Fuck yeah. Or I just add a motherfucking skateboard on the back. Be like the fifth person could ride on that skateboard in the back, motherfucker. We'll meet you there. <laughs> I could take five. Like shit. Man, but that Traverse was nice, though. That Chevy Traverse was really nice. It was really nice. I got the Expedition Max Limited. I don't know, man. I'm going to have to go look at it. How much do Expeditions even cost, though, man? Them motherfuckers seem like they cost a lot of money. Them fucking burnt. <laughs> I know, it, man. It was like, they seem like they cost a lot of money, man. The Expedition just don't sound cheap. It just it don't sound like something that I could, like, afford. I could probably work on it, but I don't think I could afford that shit. That's, a, that's an expensive truck. Ineligible vehicles in Phoenix. Okay, cool, cool. I'm gonna check out the Uber.com global eligible. Well, see, the thing is, if I do black on Uber, I gotta go get commercial insurance and all this other shit too, right? I think I gotta do that. But if I fucking do lift, I can do it. Oh, 30k off lease. 30k off lease ain't bad. 30k ain't bad. But then I gotta look at my insurance, my gas. Man, that's a big ass truck. That's a big truck. And plus, me driving a big ass black like expedition all night long, dude. I'm gonna look like I'm trafficking drugs, man. I'm gonna be like a pimp, or I'm trafficking drugs. That's why driving like a little fucking orange car. Pimps don't drive in orange cars, man. They driving black cars. That's why Juan Vargas is a pimp. <laughs> <laughs> You're a liar. <laughs> I'm not a pimp. I got a wife and kids. You're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm gonna, I'm gonna make me a t-shirt that says Juan Vargas is a pimp <laughs> I'm gonna find out where his ass doing ride share I'm gonna just fucking walk up 
Juan gonna be like, yeah, man, I'll be right back. I gotta go take these clients. I'm like, is this Juan Vargas? I'm like, yeah, it's Juan. He's been, I'm, I'm gonna wear my t-shirt. Look, Juan Vargas is a pimp. He's trying to traffic us. Jeff, you're fucking up my cash rides, bro. Don't wear that shirt around here. Juan Vargas is a pimp. <laughs> you're a liar. Pimps drive black cars, man. <laughs> <laughs> I know it for real. I'm gonna fuck up his money. I know it. I'm gonna fuck up his money. Well, I'm like, man, I had like 10 people cancel on me in a row. This motherfucker always run around a building with a t-shirt on saying Juan Vargas is a pimp. Right when they get in the car, I'm like, where the fuck is he coming from? Motherfucker getting in the car. They be like, Juan be like, yeah, for Shannon. Yeah, Juan. I run around the corner. Hey, Juan Vargas is a pimp. <laughs> oh, he's a trafficker. <laughs> No wonder he's so expensive. He's trying to traffic us. Jeff, quit fucking with me, man. I'm trying to make some money. <laughs> <laughs> See, my less if you know sedans and no maintenance. I know that's the thing about maintenance, man. It's like, I don't mind maintenance. I like working on my cars. I'm I'm just one of those dudes, man. It's kind of like chefs. Chefs that like to bake. Imagine you took a chef one day and you said, hey, man, we got a kitchen where you'll never have to cook again. A chef will be like, well, that sucks because I like to cook. It's kind of like me and a mechanic. If somebody says, hey, man, we got a car and you never have to work on a car again. I'll be like, well, that kind of fucking sucks because I'm a mechanic. I like to work on my cars. I like taking shit apart. I like to upgrade my shit. I like doing that. It's, it's what I do. It's like having a cookie baker and saying, hey, man, you ain't ever got to bake cookies again. We actually got rolls of Pillsbury dough and you just put that shit in the oven. They'll be like, I like to make my own cookie dough. I just, I don't know, man. <laughs> don't get in the car. He's a pimp. <laughs> <laughs> Juan Vargas gonna fucking turn me into Uber. He gonna fucking is. Like, is there any way a one dr a driver can one star another driver? They be like, who is this? Oh, this is Juan Juan Vargas. They gonna be like, oh, you the pimp? <laughs> no, I'm not a pimp. Oh, Jeff already called us on you, man. <laughs> I'm not a fucking pimp. I'm just trying to work, man. <laughs> I know. Motherfucker call Lyft. Is there any way I can report a driver named Jeff Watts for harassment? Is this Juan Vargas? Yeah. Oh, man, you a pimp. Jeff already told us he's going to be calling us, man. Who you out there pimping tonight? I'm not a pimp. He's a liar. <laughs> How you going to pimp you for a cash ride? Exactly. The dude got six cars. Just get a Model S. Man, I get a Model S. I'm going to have to build a charging station at my house. And you know me. I'm fucking, I'm all about saving the environment. So when I built my charger station, oh, I'm putting a motherfucking windmill on top of the house, like one of them old school windmills you see on the farm. It's going to have a rooster on the top of that motherfucker with big-ass blades. It's going to be charging my car. The wind going to blow. It's going to charge my motherfucking car. I don't have no power bill. I was like, dude, how do you got a Tesla with no power bill? See that motherfucking windmill? has got a rooster on top. Fucking wind blow. That motherfucker charge my Tesla up. But every day is windy. Tesla getting charged. 100%. 80%. Tesla getting charged. Motherfucking rooster spinning like this. And a little arrow be pointing where the rooster be going. Tesla be charged like a motherfucker. <laughs> now, why is that? I'm not a pimp. I'm just trying. <laughs> said, I'm not a pimp. I'm just trying to live. <laughs> like, shit. Well, I'm going to go to Wine House next week. I'm going to pull up. Wine going to have a motherfucking big ass fucking windmill in the front yard. What's that windmill for? We thought it was a great idea. We have a windmill. It's got a rooster on top. Motherfucking wind blow. Motherfucker charging up. Shit already had fucking 29%. <laughs> 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 the cockmobile instead of the batmobile this is the cockmobile jeff got roosters power to whip in a cockmobile motherfucker i'm gonna get a license place is cocky <laughs> i'm cocky <laughs> you gonna say man this dude he must be stuck up man this motherfucker arrogant motherfucker says he's cocky oh that's the dude that got the windmill in the front yard with the rooster on top motherfucker charge the wind blow it dudes like this man be like 27 <laughs> percent <laughs> it's funny she said fucking jeff's house would be the closest thing to the netherlands <laughs> i got a motherfucker out in the front yard yodeling and shit yodel old lady like motherfucker they're like bro he got a windmill in the front with a rooster on top motherfucker wind blow this is a motherfucker on the side of the house yodeling like yodel old lady who like who's the dude yodeling Motherfucker, that's Juan Vargas's cousin. <laughs> no. <laughs> he said, stop giving my own ideas. Motherfucker, you'll be like, shit. 
Motherfucker, you see a motherfucker stand on the roof with one of them big ass long horns from the Swiss Alps. Recall up like a motherfucker. <laughs> They're like, that's Jeff's house. There's a lot going on over there. You don't want to go over there, man. <laughs> motherfucking neighbors be looking. Ever since this motherfucker bought this Tesla, man, he went downhill. This motherfucker got a Tesla, fucking windmill with a rooster on top. Motherfucker yodel on the side of the house with a motherfucker on the top. Them all recall up. All because he listened to Juan Vargas. <laughs> don't buy a Tesla. Juan well, come over. He's a liar. I didn't tell him to buy none of that shit. He did it. <laughs> didn't say buy a fucking yodeler. <laughs> it's the closest shit to the Netherlands you ever going to get. Go to Jeff's house in South Phoenix. His motherfucker got a Tesla. <laughs> Wait a minute. What did you say? Wait a minute. What did you say? Read. <laughs> Giving out cough drops. <laughs> Give it out cough drop shit. Say, get the shrimp on the barbecue page, row. <laughs> Head to the barbecue. <laughs> I gotta get Kevin on here. I gotta get Kevin on here one day. Shrimp on the Bobby. Motherfucker, <laughs> 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 come past the house coughing. Hey, don't cough past Jeff House. Why this motherfucker got a motherfucker on the roof singing recall up, throwing cough drops at kids and shit walking by. Like all winter, motherfucking kids got knots on their head. <laughs> <laughs> Chris is like these motherfuckers got problems. No, <laughs> uh, shit. Hey, just wait. Juan, hey, the day Juan ass is gonna come out the house one day, I'm gonna have a motherfucking box of Ricola sitting on this motherfucking windshield wipers. Ricola. <laughs> he gonna be like Jeff's around here somewhere. Only that motherfucker would do this. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we fucked. <laughs> I'm telling you, but hey, can it be? <clears throat> It'd be like this when we all be hanging out, like waiting on rides and doing shit, dude. We be clowning the shit out of everything, man. It'd be cr we be the only one to drive sometimes. We be laughing so fucking hard. We be like, dude, I can't even drive right now, man. <laughs> Chrissy, I love these, bro. See, Chrissy, if you ever come hang out with us, trust me, you're gonna be like, I didn't drive a single day out there. We laughed the whole fucking time. These people. <laughs> I know one of their laughing at the motherfucking Rico. I'm gonna get. I'm telling you, dog. You gonna get one. Motherfucker, one gonna show up in the Netherlands. Fuck, he gonna have, he gonna mop them Netherlands pants and shit. You be wearing them fucking skirts, playing bagpipes. Is that where is that? Who who wears skirts to pay his bagpipes? Is that not the Netherlands? Who the fuck is that? So oh yeah, we gonna laugh. All DB, you already know. We be dying laughing, man, dying. Chris, he gonna be like, this is why y'all never make no fucking money. Lyft and Uber is paying very well. It's you raggedy motherfuckers that don't know how to stop playing. <laughs> Lyft and Uber is paying $22 per mile, and you motherfuckers are still broke. How? Because we just sit in the parking lot and laugh the whole time. There's a $1,000 surge right down. The motherfucker, we ain't going to get it. We're going to laugh the whole time. That's it, Scotland. That's it, Scotland. Motherfucker Chris is going to be like, now we know why they don't make no money in Phoenix. These mothers be having thousand dollar surges in the parking lot. They over there just fucking around all the time. Motherfucker, five hundred dollar surge. Why I'm the only one making money out there? That's why you see that motherfucking Tesla everywhere. Nobody else driving. Juan's the only car out driving right now. Motherfucker, we declining everything. Uber and Lyft be like, we got one driver in Phoenix. Juan Vargas. You're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> the Irish. That's it. <laughs> We're in a wooden hat and shit. Yeah, man. Oh, tomorrow you got to go to the airport at 4 a.m. laughing all this shit. Hey, at least the pastor won't <laughs> want me to report me because I ain't in the app. I know it. You're on the app. Motherfucker, I'm still up, motherfucker. Man, so I have a TV in my car. I watch you a lot now. So that's why I'm not making money either. See, that's, that's what we do, motherfuckers. Like, what do y'all do to make money? We don't. <laughs> Uber's like, we're going to come to protest you motherfuckers in the parking lot since y'all want to stay and laugh and fuck around. And we're protesting y'all. You see all Uber and Lyft employees surrounding us in the parking lot. They be like, man, who are all these strange people surrounding us? We're Uber and Lyft employees protesting you guys not driving and you guys are out here just fucking around laughing. So this is our protest against y'all. Like, okay, cool. Where's Juan at? The only motherfucker driving, Juan Vargas. You see a Tesla going on the street. Arrow, arrow, arrow. <laughs> This motherfucker Juan got four batteries. It's like, damn, dude, how you got a Tesla with four batteries? I'm the only driver in Phoenix. The rest of you motherfuckers in parking lots. <laughs> tell me, Jimmy. <laughs> tell, tell me, we ain't making shit because it's just laughing. Man, man. That's funny shit. Motherfuckers like, man, how much money did you make last year? Well, we made a lot of memories. 
But how much money did you make last year? We made a lot of memories. <laughs> yeah, you motherfuckers broke. <laughs> I know. I know. That's it. We're having a good time. That's all we do, man. Because I know we're gonna hit it. We're gonna have to hit it hard this week because you know last week we had all the events going, March Madness, all that. We really gotta fucking hit it hard this week because I want to get down to country that country thunder because Chad does it every year and Chad be making a killing. This motherfucker Chad and he was at the event too. He came one day up to my house. He said, "Yeah, man, I've been working country thunder all week." This motherfucker had so much cash. I swear, it looked like he was like a drug dealer, fucking wide of nothing but just money. Because everybody at Country Thunder couldn't get rides. They were just throwing money at them. Because none of us will go down there. Because it's too far. But it's like, fuck it. If, if we can go down there and do hum rides and I can get commercial insurance, I could take my motherfucking truck down there. I think Country Thunder is this week, this weekend, I think, man. And that's why it's like, it's too far, dude. It's, man, You gonna, when you get down there, you're going to have to charge up in Queen Creek somewhere. It's a long way. And it's like, phew. and Chad, he goes down there. Motherfucker come up, he says, Jeff, man, it was so much money. This is the, I, I just had to go home. It was too much. I just couldn't take no more. I said, because it was probably like six drivers down there. Six drivers and like probably 4,000, 5,000 people. <laughs> it's like nobody else is going. <laughs> no. Is there a quad, Tesla say quadruple motor on the back? Yeah, yeah. Tell me, Jeff, do you generally give your pastors five stars automatically or is it a case by case basis? The only time I give like one or two stars is somebody who like really took a long time, didn't tip me, screwing with me and shit like then I like, nope, I won't tip them. I mean, I, I won't give them a good start because I don't want to be bothered with them again. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, your tundra would work out a lot better down there, dude. It's just it's so much dust, dirt, parking lots. And plus, it's bigger. So you got to see over all these cars down there. Like I said, I'm going to take the Jeep. I, there's no way I could take my Beamer down there. I'm just, I mean, I know getting down there is going to cost me a lot in gas and shit like that, but I'll cruise down there, fill up in Queen Creek. It's a quick trip on on, uh, on Queen Creek Road, whatever that is, Ellsworth. Fill up there and just head down to Country Thunder. Or you could just fill up on your way out of town going down Grant Road or something like that and then just start, you know, plucking rides, man, start plucking rides. And Uber and Lyft is going to, of course, be throwing crazy surge out there. But with the amount of cash rides you can do, surging, because Uber going to give you like, you know, $10 surge, $15 surge. And it's going to come out to be like a dollar, dollar, $52 a mile. But you can do cash rides, make four or $5 a mile. Because, I mean, if you got to go 20 miles, motherfucker give you 100 bucks because they know you ain't no drivers down here. And I got to go 20 miles to drop you off. And I, if I don't get a ride back to the event, I got a dead mile back to the event. So that's 40 miles. So automatically, I'm going to need minimum of 80. I'm going to need a minimum of 80. If you slide me 100, cool. It's like down there back. Go, Here's 100. I just want to get the fuck up out of here. Here's 100. Because Uber going to charge them close to that anyways. And so you just shoot out of there, shoot back, and just all night, just keep doing that shit all night long. Because everybody lives down in Santan, uh, Queen Creek, Gilbert, a lot of Gilbert. You're going to live in Gilbert. Trust me. When you leave, everybody lives in Gilbert. And it's going to be Apache Junction. You have a few Apache Junctions. I picked up a few that were at a bar in, at, Hort, at Norton's and they had left a, a Country Thunder. They were at Norton's and I took them all the way up to this little trailer park up in Apache Junction, like a retirement community up there. But yeah. Oh, yeah. That four runner's going to do it, man. It's going to it's going to do it. So I get two stars of fat women. They got to really like be really fat, though. Two stars, two stars for two cars. Yeah, man. It, like I said, anybody with a truck and an SUV down there is going to be crazy. There isn't many hotels there. It looks like a small town. Yeah, it's very small, very small. Because that's out in Florence is where the prison is, too. So there's a prison out there. Ooh. Ooh. Rent a Sprinter van and go down there. Jesse, man, that might be a play right there, dude. If you do one big, say, hey, man, I'm a Sprinter van. What I do is I charge this much, but I'm going to Mesa or something like that. I'm only going to Mesa. Bro, if everybody that gets in pays you a hundred bucks and you take 12 people, that's twelve hundred bucks to drive to Mesa. Man, that's fucking crazy. That's a play. Cause how else they gonna get out of there? I mean, if you say, man, a hundred bucks, I'm I'm headed up towards Mesa. Even if you said, you know, 50, you still gonna make six hundred dollars to drive to Mesa. You're making six hundred dollars to drive to Mesa in one trip. Man. I don't know, Jesse. You got some. That's a good idea, dude. That's a good idea. Really, it is. What if we all pitched in, rented it, and let Juan drive that motherfucker? Yeah, yeah, Pedro.
Pidge Road. <laughs> Fucking get Kevin to pitch. Hey, Kevin, should Juan drive it? Yeah, Pedro. Roll. <laughs> exactly. Uh. Yeah, say again, if you will sub to this channel and you ain't got no business cards, what the fuck are you doing? Man, I'm telling you, man. Hey, they don't. This is what we all on. We've been on that for a while, man. We've been on that for a while because we know what we are. We're independent contractors. If you ain't got no business cards and you on this channel, shit, short bus, short bus. We over here creating fucking business plans on the fly. Jesse talking about fucking renting a van. And I'm like, bro. If you taking less than 16 passengers, if you only taking like 14 passengers, 12 to 14, you don't need a CDL. So if you don't need a CDL, we all pitch in and get it. Man, either we can all take turns driving it or we can split money. We can figure something out. We can figure something because that's a dude. That's a fucking play right there. That's a good play. That's a good play. And if it's like even if let's say if you did the rods to Mesa for 600 bucks, but we don't we don't split like let's say four people in on it we can't split four hundred dollars i mean six hundred dollars four ways because it's not fair because we're also driving our own cars doing our fucking thing while you're driving the van so it wouldn't be fair for us to split it four ways evenly because you end up having a shitty night and we all be banging so it have to be like commensurate like if you took let's say 80 percent of the money and we all split the other 20 percent of the money so if you said okay i'll take 80 percent of the 600 and you guys can split the other 20% amongst each other because we'll be in our own cars on our own fucking thing. And how many trips you take that night, you might say, you know what? I did a total of three trips that night. So if you're doing six, six, and six, or maybe if you did, let's say, even 800 a trip. So if you did 800 a trip and you took all these people, you did three, that's $2,400, but you get 80% of 2,400. And we'd have to split the 20% of whatever's fucking left. And because we doing our own thing in our cars. That might be a fucking cool play, man. It's almost like we're investing in, in the rental van and we're only getting a small investment portion, but you get the 80% because you're actually driving that van. That's what you're driving for the night. I don't know, man. We got to think about it because Jamil always talks about buying Sprinter vans too. He always talks about buying Sprinter vans. We got to sit down one day, man, because Jamil's got, you know, the Jers LLC. He's got the commercial insurance. He's got all that shit. And maybe the, the play is instead of us investing into the stock market, we invest in a bond of fucking Sprinter van. And if that means we all got to spend a little bit every month, like, hey, Jeff, the monthly payment for the Sprinter van is up. Contract. Everybody got to come up with one hundred and fifty dollars a month for the Sprinter van. One hundred fifty dollars a month is basically five dollars a day. So five bucks a day to rent the Sprinter van. But I mean, to pay for the Sprinter van. And we all take it so many days during the weeks because we was trying to talk about it. Like if it's seven days in a week. And what big events and things like that coming up, we'd have to figure out how to split the money up so it'll be fair. It will be fair because I wouldn't want somebody to, to feel shorted because you got the van. We all out making money in our cars, but you got the van and you don't make as much as us. And you end up having a shitty night because we took all the money from the van, too. That wouldn't be fair to the person driving the van because the person driving the van got to come up, too. And it's like. You know, we got to do what we got to do in our cars. It's not our night to drive it. We got to do what we got to do. But you got to say, hey, at least the van did good. And the van would be a benefit. Like it should be more money. It's like driving a sedan versus driving a big XL truck. The XL should make more. So the van driver should make more. And, and like really than everybody, the van driver should make more. But we can still make money in our, exactly, a 300 fleet. But we'll all make money in our cars. And I'm like, I might make, you know, $350 in my car for that night. Juan, he got the uh, the Tesla. He might make $675, $650. You know, King James might make $400 in his camera. This and that. Jamil might make $500. But then we all take 20% of whatever the van made, and we got to split the 20% up, you know, amongst each other who didn't drive the van. But the van driver should end up probably making more than, probably not more than Juan because of what he drives, and maybe Jamil because of what he drives. But you kill what me and King James would make because we only have sedans and you have the van. I mean, it's some dude. There's a play. There's a play for it. It's got to be a way to do it. It's got to be a way to do it. Because there's yeah, it's a stack, man. I'm telling you, man. That shit. I would I would love it, man. That would be some cool shit to just have. a. Because imagine all the bachelor parties, all the bachelorette party, because just like um when DB, when me and DB was doing that 10, 
these girls, I'm going to tell you what these motherfuckers said. Y'all going to die laughing when y'all see this shit. This is what people really say. This is what people say. Hold up. Where is it at? Where is it at? Let me find it. Because that was, I was sending DB a message and shit like that. Oh, here it is. This shit here. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so I told her, she said, do you think you could pick us a night up for dinner and bars at like 530? Actually, 515. I said, OK, how many girls? I said, all 10. And she said, I said, I can get two SUVs. I know my car can fit three comfortably, four max. But you girls may want to be in two groups. But you girls want to be in two groups, I presume. Look what she said at 253. She said, it's 10 girls. Remember, she said, can we fit in one car? That will be ideal. 10 girls. She said, can we fit in one car? That would be ideal. And I'm like, and I, you can see what I said. I said, 10 in one car. You can't see. I said, 10 in one car. Like I had to ask her like, motherfucker, are, are we, are, is it a typo in there? 10 in one car. She says, yes. Is there a big car we could squeeze in? I said, most fit six max. Seat belts have to match passenger count for anything if insurance happens. And she says, okay, how much would it cost for two cars? <laughs> this girl straight trying to fit 10 motherfuckers in one car. <laughs> this is the shit we deal with. She was like, can we fit 10 in one car? That would be ideal. And I'm like, I got a Beamer. I know no, DB has the, the forerunner at the time. And I'm sitting there like, I don't know anybody with a car big enough to fit 10 motherfuckers in. And she was like, we're small. We could all squeeze in. They were, you know, a couple of them were pretty small. She's like, yes, there's a, <laughs> she straight said, yes, is there a car big enough so we could squeeze in? That's really what she said. That's really what she said. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, I was dying laughing. And I was, <laughs> this is the shit people do, dude. They was, she was trying to save money. So she's like, she want to fit all 10 in one car. And I'm like, I don't know anybody with a car that can fit 10 motherfuckers in. I don't know nobody with a car that, like a bus. Man, 10 one car to cup. So I was like, okay. So finally, I got her agree on two cars. So I went and got four, which I was wanting to only take three. Because so DB said, well, I'll take six. I said, all right, fine. Take six. I'll take four. <laughs> Christy, you caught that shit? You got that ideally. Well, we could fit 10 in one car. That would be ideal. <laughs> Lapping up, driving around. These girls was dressing it. They had many dresses on, heels, makeup, hair done. And you really going to think y'all motherfuckers going to fit 10 motherfuckers in my little ass BMW. <laughs> my BMW barely fit me in that motherfucker. I got to pull my damn leg to get out that bitch. And it was like, you really going to think fit 10 motherfuckers in my Beamer? I'm like, come on, man. This girl. So I, I hit DB up. <laughs> Jesse, you rock. Yeah. Jesse. <laughs> they said Mexicans do it all the time. <laughs> you wrong for that shit, Jesse. He's stupid. He said, man, Mexicans do that shit all the time. That ain't nothing, motherfucker. We Mexican share. Fuck ride share. We're Mexican share. What's Mexican share? We fit 10 motherfuckers in one car. Mexican share. <laughs> like, damn, that would be ideal if I could fit 10 Mexicans in one motherfucking Lincoln. Okay. <laughs> Mexican share. Like that's a whole new ride share service. I'm like, man, hold up for a second, man. And and you know, in regular ride share and hum, you know, I fit four in my car. We could fit this. Well, well, Mexa share, we could fit how many motherfuckers you got into that car? <laughs> Was well, me, my cousin, my cousin's cousin, both of our kids, her kid, her friend, and then her friend's mom might be on the way. That's like 11 of us. With Mexa share, we could make all you motherfuckers fit in that little ass three series. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. That's what Jesse meant to say. Our, our people do that shit all the time. Like, man, there's no not to be a racist, but I've never seen a Mexican drive alone. Oh, I see Mexicans. See, I live in a Mexican neighborhood. Mexicans always drive alone. They always out here cruising. Shit. The Mexicans in my neighborhood, these motherfuckers make my cars look cheap. They got big ass like F2500, F35, brand new, brand new. But most of them own their own companies, though. I'm going to tell you, that's one thing about Mexican people. These motherfuckers don't want to work for nobody. If they're going to bust their motherfucking ass, why are they going to work for you? Mexican people are smart, man. These motherfuckers are smart. They're like, if I'm going to bust my ass all fucking day, why am I going to work for you? 
they'll come over here get business license insurance buy like three fucking trucks they run their own fucking company i'll be like damn man damn this is what i'm asking i should know <laughs> exactly <laughs> what, i'm calling ice now <laughs> I told you I got an ice vehicle. You thought it was an internal combustion engine. No, nah, motherfucker, this is immigration and customs. <laughs> like, shit, I got a BMW. This is an ice BMW. Oh, that's, a, you know, an internal combustion engine? No, nah, motherfucking immigrations and customs. <laughs> no, that would be ideal. Yeah, bro. That shit was so funny. When she said that would be ideal, I was like, come on, Colin. You're killing me now. You're killing me. I laughed. I thought the shit was funny as a motherfucker. So I said, yeah, let me hurry up and fucking call somebody. So I hit up Jamil and fucking DB. Jamil was already booked and everything. DB was like, because I'm thinking if I could send them two SUVs, they'll have five and five. They'd be good. I wouldn't have to worry about it. But Jamil was like, man, I'm, I'm booked. I was like, well, shit, that means I got to use my car. I'm like, fuck, I talked to DB. DB was like, well, I could do six. I was like, please, can you really? Because if you could do six, I could do four. It's like, but that's my max. I can't go over four. I'm not, if they have another friend over there that just don't happen to show the fuck up, I can't take five, dude. It's impossible in my car. My car is little like that. So luckily they really did have 10 and DB came through, man. Cause DeAndre, if, if he didn't come through, I would have looked stupid as a motherfucker. Cause I picked these girls up at the airport. I picked one of them up at the airport and told her that we can handle a load like that. I said, we can do 10. We can do 10. And she was like, really? Give me your card. So I gave her the card and everything. I said, oh, we can do 10. We got it. I didn't know if we really could. I had faith. I had faith in the fucking crew. I said, 300 can do this shit. If I said we can do it, hopefully we can do it. Because I know a lot of drivers. I know a lot of people. And I was just hoping. And I know how busy we are because a lot of us do our shit. We do cash rides and we do private rides. So for me to catch somebody at the time I caught them with short notice like that, it was it was much needed. Much needed. Because usually DeAndre, Jamil, everybody's they already got their own shit set up. I was the only one riding around that day that didn't have no shit set up except that ride. And she hit me at late. She was supposed to hit me in the morning. She hit me at in the afternoon. And I was like, well, shit. And I was like, yeah. Say, so when was this? Oh, this was like, what? The other day. Juan, you was like, probably, this was in the daytime, though. This wasn't even at close to nighttime. This was shit. What night was this? I don't know. It don't say a date on it. It was probably Saturday. It was probably Friday or Saturday. I don't remember what it was, but this is what's funny. I was fucking with her. I said, uh, I said, hey, I said, uh, because I said, we're gonna bring this escalate. I said, but the escalate has a flat, so we're gonna bring this just in case. So I put her, sent her a picture of a motherfucking old ass motherfucking car. <laughs> she started laughing like a motherfucker. She she put all laughing face. She says, Boy, bye. <laughs> she was dying. I sent her a picture of an old ass cavalier. She was dying laughing. She thought that she was funny as hell. Man. Say, okay, I'm not a day walker. Yeah, this was the middle of the daytime, man, because it started raining. It had just started raining, too, because we were at the event up north in Scottsdale, and I had just dropped somebody off in Scottsdale, and I was just chilling, and that's when she hit me up. Luckily, she hit me up when I was still in Scottsdale, but it was just like I was stuck because, I mean, here they are. They hit me up late, hours later, because she said they were going to text me in the morning. She didn't text me till like, 2.34 or something like that, 2.40 p.m., and she was supposed to text me at 9 or 10 in the morning so I can get everything set up. She didn't text me. They need to leave at 5.15, and it was already 2.40, and I'm like, everybody's already got their shit set, lady. You waited to... I said, you know what? I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I just started... I hit up Jamil. Jamil was like, fuck, bro. He's just... I'm actually on my way to a res right now. I got to go do my reservation. I got an appointment. I got private rides. I got this. I'm like, shit. I said, well, I said, I know DB's up here. So if I can find DB in another SUV, then I can still do the two and two. I could do the five and five. He said, I could take six. I was like, bullshit. He said, no, I could take six. I was like, well, shit. Then I'll just take the other four. So now I got to make no other phone call. Because <laughs> I was going to have to call two SUVs. I was like, man. But it was like he so that that came through clutch right there. That came through clutch. Cause I was like, man, what up, glitch dash, my brother, my brother. Yeah, man. But and that's how it gets sometimes, man. When you're doing private rides, you got people who who want to do something instantly and immediately. And with us having drivers on all sides of town, I always know if I got anybody in Avondale, Buckeye, Goodyear, I could just shoot Juan a message and Juan he'll he'll bring them this way because he's always looking for a ride this way, anyways. So if I know somebody out that way, say, hey, I need to get to Phoenix. I'm like, shit, I'm at the airport right now. Where are you at? I'm in Avondale. 
Well, let me text Juan and see if Juan's got a way to get you out here. Juan, and I don't tell nobody prices. That's just not what I do. I don't do prices with people. They have to discuss that on their own. So it's like, you know, if, if he goes out there and he fucking hits it, yeah, all Irvin Hiker, yep, you Mesa too, man. <laughs> oh, this sounds like y'all moving dope. My neighbors think I'm selling dope like a motherfucker. This is some J. Cole shit. <laughs> See, and Urban Hiker, he's in Mesa too. And I was just telling Big Cab the same thing. I got people in Mesa and I'm way by the airport and I'm like, Ugh. but see, AJ, that's the thing. You drive days anyway. So the fact that you drive days and most of us drives nights, that leaves all my day people fair game, dude, because there's no way I can get up that early and get these people. And some of them got to get to the airport early and shit. Actually, I got to hook you up with um, Sky, his mom, because sometimes I'm way over here and his mom, she lives off of Gilbert, Gilbert and Baseline. So she's off of Gilbert and Baseline, and I pick up Sky sometimes up on University, the other direction. So I'm way in the other direction, but he needs somebody down on Baseline. So me and you, I got to sit down with you one day and, and give you, you know, his mom's information and all this stuff. So when she's ready to get something done, she's ready to make a move. I don't have to, you know, cram my schedule and rush my schedule and find some way to wake up on time. I mean, you're already out there already. So like I said, it, it's going to help everybody out. And I don't like my people using Uber and Lyft. I don't. I rather another driver just make that money direct and have it themselves. And especially because you're daytime and she's daytime y'all would be a better match because I'm more nighttime and something I can't wake up. To. I'll be setting my alarm and shit just to wake up and I don't wake up to alarms. I just wake up when I get up. So it'll be easier for me to, to pass you. Some of my people say, Hey, well tomorrow morning, I got to be somewhere like 11 AM or I got to be somewhere at 10 AM. I'm like, listen, call AJ, set it up with AJ. Cause I'll be sleep. Set it up with AJ. He was like, man, yeah, the only immigrants I have a problem with are the ones who come over here with the very racist views on all black people. Even if you're clearly a model citizen, not all immigrants do that, but a lot do. But for the ones who aren't like that, I'm fine with. <clears throat> yeah, and, th and the thing is, many of the uh, immigrants that came here that have been here for the longest time, they actually own a lot of shit here. They got a lot of equity in America. They own stores, businesses, tons of fucking houses because in their country, they couldn't do that. And I'm going to tell motherfuckers like this. If, if your work ethic, if you're from Mexico, you're from South America, your work ethic is twice the capacity of what we do here. Americans, real shit. We look for the most efficient way to do something. And we efficiency is really, in a, in a sense, sometimes lazy. But it's very efficient because we can get more done by being efficient. Where sometimes, you know, they'll have, like, let's say we want to save profits on a house. So we'll it'll be three of us doing the work. When it's a Mexican family, they'll have like 15 motherfuckers show up and they'll have it done that day. And it's smart because they can do something else the next day. With three of us, it'll take us like a week to do the house. So a week we're doing it. Mexicans, they'll have that motherfucking roof done in one day. The whole roof is done. You're like, damn, where all these people come from? Because they own to the next project already. So they do shit in volume. Like, boom, boom, boom. They knocking shit out. We do shit based on efficiency and profit margin. So we said, we're not going to do a lot of people because we want to pay too many people. And that's it's almost like a difference in, in our, our economic upbringing. So when you see in people like over there, they come over here, they got garden crews coming over here. They say, dude, we're going to knock this shit out. Like when they do our palm trees, man, I will never use an American company to do my palm trees because I've called American companies to do my palm trees. And these motherfuckers act like these palm trees is my kids. I'm like, motherfucker, this is not child support. These are just trees. I need the leaves cut. Then you find like a Mexican dude. He'd be like, man, we'll knock all these motherfuckers out for 300. I'm like, Today? Yeah, motherfucker, right now. I'm like, let me go get the money for you real quick. Hold the fuck up. You said 300. And these motherfucking companies trying to charge me 200 per tree. I'm like, fuck that. So I'll go get like 400. I'm like, here's 400. Shit. <laughs> the message don't even need levels. They just close one eye. <laughs> oh, that's funny. She's like, <laughs> see, we need an Arizona group chat for stuff like this with rides. No texting you, something like Facebook. Man. Well, they got that one app called Zello. It's Z-E-L-L-O. And what Zello is, it's a two-way chirp system. And we can all be in a group. Like, I can hear my phone going, chirp, 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 and it could be anybody in the group. Like, you can you can chirp me direct, or you can chirp the whole group. Because if you're like, hey, I'm going to chirp the whole group. So, hey, guys, there's surge about to drop. You know, there's a few black SUVs around here. You guys might want to get down here. We're on Monroe and 3rd Street. And as it goes, to the, that chirp will go to the whole group. Then you might say, well, shit, I just need like one SUV. Let me chirp, you know, Juan Vargas real quick. Hey, Juan, you got the Model S? Yeah, man. 
hey, can you come over? I need somebody wants a black car, this and that. And that's what it, it'll do. It's just a straight chirp to you. You shoot over, pew, pick them up. Be like, oh, cool. Hey, did you get picked up? Oh, yeah, Juan came through. You didn't tell me he had a Model S. I said, yeah, I just said he had a Tesla. Yeah, but you didn't say it was a Model S. <laughs> like, yeah, I know it. That was a surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. We don't need to start chirping. We'll all be deleted from the platform the first week. Yeah. No, but seriously, download Zello. Christy, I'm telling you, same thing. Because, Christy, you can be on Zello, but you could be like, let's say we just had like a 300 Zello group. 300. So whenever you anybody in the 300 group chirps back and forth, I mean, you would be talking to somebody in the 300 group. But if we just say, hey, the AZ drivers, that would be a whole nother group that would only get chirps out of that group or whatever. Yeah, it's old school Boost Mobile. Yep, yep. And so it works, man. It's, it's just crazy, man. It's like, and it'll get everybody, like, especially for events, get everybody wound up. And if we're at an event and I don't want to call Juan, if I say, J -j -j Juan, if you're coming in through the south entrance, man, it's backed up. Do not come to the south entrance. Dur Thanks. I'm U-turning right now. <laughs> it's like, and it, the shit chirps fast as hell. So it's like, okay, I'm turning around right now. Thanks for letting me know. Fucking head the other way. Because if I'm already stuck, you don't need two stuck drivers in the same fucking spot. Like, why the hell I'm going to be stuck and I'm going to let Juan pull up behind me? No, no, fuck that. Go the other way, dude. You don't want to come this way. Go another way. Just like one night we was driving. I went and picked some people up and I was like, cool, dropped them off. Bam, shot back. Dropped them off, came back, was talking to Juan. And I was like, oh, hell yeah, I'm finna go, go pick up these people too. They're in the same spot. Juan was like, dude, don't go over there. I was like, I just left over there. I just picked those people up. I just dropped them off. I said, it was a quick, this is a good ass hit right here. He says, bro, don't go over there. It's like busy, crazy traffic over there. I was like, I just left from over there, dude. It ain't no fucking traffic. Well, I was like, I'm telling you, dude, I just, I went, I fucking went down the street. I made that left. Where the fuck did all these cars come from? I was like, holy shit. Well, I text Juan. He was like, told you. I was like, bro, where the fuck did all these cars just come from? He says, dude. He said, I saw it. it must, they must have been behind me the first time because there's no way possible that many cars came out of nowhere. There was no cars nowhere. It was me. And I fucking went, dropped, picked these people up. Shh, nobody around. I'm like, dude, this is easy. I'm making this fucking money. Hell yeah. Boop. Another chirp came from there. I'm headed over there. I got another ping, man. Don't go over there. I was like, well, fuck, I just left from over there. Dude, it's crazy traffic over there. No, I just left. Dude. I just left. Like, I just went around the corner. I'm headed back. He says, don't do it, man. I was like, man, why I'm tripping? Man, fuck that. Let's do this shit. Let's do this shit. Got in the car. He was like, all right, I'll see you in about an hour. And that's what you said. You said, I'll see you in about an hour. <laughs> and I started laughing like a motherfucker. I, drew, I, I hit that motherfucker left turn. I was like, where the fuck did all these cars just come from? I texted him back. I said, you were right. <laughs> I'm just sitting there in traffic like this shit. Where did all these cars come from? And so the dude saw me and they ran up to me. They came through the cones and everything. So I U-turned through the cones and went back the other way. But I still had to sit there for like 15 minutes before they saw me. I was like, man, I ain't. And they saw I wasn't going nowhere. And I was like, bro, I'm, I'm done. I'm dead, man. I'm dead. I was so pissed off. I was like, and then I got a ping from there again. I didn't go back. <laughs> I, I learned my lesson. I got burnt once. I ain't do that shit. I was like, okay, next time Juan says there's a lot of traffic somewhere, he's not a liar. You're not a liar. You're telling the truth. <laughs> exactly. He says, he says, I was on my third round. You was barely finished out. Oh, dude, I was hot. I was hot. I was so pissed off at that point. So I was like, where did all these fucking, there's no way Juan saw all these cars. There's no way you saw all these cars. Where did these cars come from? Because I was just here, like just here, and I've shot around a corner. And I'm like, yep, Juan's not a liar. You're not a liar, Juan. You be telling the truth all the time. <laughs> That's what it is. New ride share company called Tesla Truth. Yeah, this is the truth, Tesla, baby. We tell the truth when we cruise. <laughs> I'm going to take you somewhere. Where are you taking me? Somewhere. That's the truth. <laughs> like, all right. So who you rolling with? Oh, the truth Tesla today, man. We're riding the truth Tesla. Like, shit. As long as the outcome is income, shit, we Gucci good. Yeah. Yeah, but it was crazy, man. It was crazy. That shit was funny. But yeah, that's why we need those chirp things, man, because you could have chirped me and be like, Jeff, chirp, chirp. a lot of traffic over here. You don't want to come back. <laughs> like, all right, all right. Man, I was like, shit. I was like, bro, 
There's no way possible that traffic could have built up that fast and me not see a single car. You know how many fucking it's like the whole city of fucking Phoenix appeared where I just was as if they were like hiding around the corner behind me. So as soon as I turned the corner, there was nobody there. Picked the people up. They got in. It was a girl and two guys got in. I was like, cool, cool. What's up? Let's go. I said, shit, it was a quick ride. They gave me a tip. Boop. Went back to Juan. Dude, I was like, Juan, that was quick as a motherfucker, man. He's like, yeah, yeah. Another one chirp, chirp, chirp. I was like, oh, yeah. Same area. He was like, don't go over there. I was like, motherfucker, I just left from over there. What are you talking about, man? There's a number of cars over there. I'm like, the same area? The area I'm talking about? He says, yeah, where you just went. It's cars over there. I'm like, no, nah, you must be talking about something different because I was just over there. No, nah, bro, I'm telling you, man, it's all cars they do. I'll be back. See you in about an hour. I was like, whatever, dog. <laughs> I drove down the street. I was like, yeah, finna get this motherfucking money. Finna get this money and get this surgery. Get this money. Motherfucker left turn. God damn. <laughs> Where the fuck these cars come from? Stop my motherfucking song. I was like, damn. Why well, I was just sitting there like, I, I looked at my phone, went to Juan Vargas. You were right. <laughs> Folks said, told you. <laughs> Where the fuck these cars come from? They got me. They got me. I got bronchitis, man. Caught my ass quick as a mother. That shit was, yeah, sent out the flares. Poof. Oh, yeah, I'm ready for the slow season, Miami. I'm ready for this, man. I'm ready. Yeah, but that, that was the only time that I, the one time I didn't listen, because I really could have, there's no way possible those cars came there, man. They fucking set me up. The only time I didn't listen to Juan, I've listened to Juan about a lot of shit, a lot of shit. The one time I didn't listen, bad, bad, bad. <laughs> So I was like, dude, you must be talking about a different area. We could not be talking about the same areas. I'm thinking he's talking about somewhere else. I'm like, dude, I just left there. We can't be talking about the same areas. No, man, right where you just dropped them people off at. I'm like, dude, you thinking of another street maybe or another section of the street or something. I don't know what the fuck you're thinking about, but we ain't talking about the same thing. We're like this. We're not meeting, man. You're saying this, you're saying that. I'm saying this, you're saying we're not meeting. We're not talking about the same area. We were talking about the exact same area. I just had no idea that many cars came out of nowhere. <laughs> he said one hour later. <laughs> that shit was funny as hell, man. I came around. I was so mad. I was so mad. You don't even know, man. I was so mad because I was like, the surge should have been a lot higher for the shit I just went through. Because if I would have known it was that crazy, I would have never went. Because the surge wasn't enough. It was good, but it was good for a certain amount of time. Not the amount of time I just invested in that shit. It was not good for that. It was good if it was like exactly what it said. Around the corner, pick them up, shoot them down the street, shoot back. It was good for that. It, was, it wasn't It was good for go down the street, turn the corner, fuck, sit, 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 <laughs> sit, sit. I was sitting the whole... I mean... I, it was the site, the light cycle, like five times where I even made it through the light. When I finally did turn a corner, million other cars sit, sit, sit. I'm by the cones, sit, sit. It's probably six, seven light cycle on that light. People saw me, it was like pointed at me. I was like, yes, please come to me. Motherfucker ran through the cones and everything. I was like, cool, let's get out of here. Turn through the cones, put my shit in reverse, did like a two point, three point turn, shot the fuck out of there. But by that time, already a ton of time had passed the whole i should have been done by that time i should have been done been done and i was like never that's why i can't do traffic man it, it just it fucked me up for the night and i was so depressed but then i got better as the night went but that like i said you had already done three rides the the money i made there you probably made close to about three times is what i made in the same time frame you made about three times the amount of money i made all because i just made one bad decision but it was another bad decision when I picked up some life in the airport. I did a $64 nature hike south, 64 bucks all the way down to South Chandler. Got all the way down there. And y'all had like concerts all up going on and shit all north of Phoenix. All them concerts was going. I think it was like, was it Bad Bunny? I don't know who it was. It wasn't Bad Bunny. It was somebody. But it was all those concerts going. And I got stuck. I started going towards Gilbert. Ch Every time that shit happens to me, man, I get caught up in traffic. And I was just like, I don't like that. It Because it. It kills my whole night. I just want to park the car, go to sleep, wake up the next day and start over again. But I'm like, nope, stay out. Just just fight through it. Fight through it. Figure it out. Fight through it. Yeah, you had them three black rods. And I was like, this is not fun. 
this is not fun. Oh, yes, I use Zella with the other drivers here in Cleveland. There you go. There you go. We're trying to get that shit on. Slow times are coming. Time to invest in a junkyard car, do mechanic medical rides. Buy a mask so you don't smell them. <laughs> <clears throat> I ain't doing medical rides. What we can do at Sullivan Motors, they've got a bunch of paratransit vehicles for sale, like seven of them, sitting right on all of them, say paratransit on the front. Big-ass buses, handicapped, fuck, doors that let down, all that shit. I'm like, I might have to buy me one of those paratransit things. I'm going to paint that motherfucker orange, and I'm going to put BMW on the front. So when I'm driving, and people go, hey, man, an orange BMW is coming to pick you up. Big-ass fucking bus show up with BMW painted on the front. Hey, this is an orange BMW. That looks like a bus. You're a liar. <laughs> fucking, are you Juan Vargas' grandma? Yes. I'm Marsha Vargas, motherfucker. You're a liar. <laughs> it's like, okay. Oh, he said, I'll download the Zell. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I get the Zell back on my shit. Yeah, man. But now those medical rides, dude, we can make a killing if we just, if we had the certificate and the licensing for it, man, we can make a killing with medical rides, getting reimbursements. And we met a dude that actually, he was up at the thing was he was a hum driver and he actually gets reimbursements. Check out how he does it. So if you're a patient and you get a medical ride, you you send your company, your insurance company, the fact that you got a medical ride, like an invoice. <clears throat> they cut you a check back to reimburse you for that medical ride. So is, is somebody in this family, I don't know who it is, but they send they send the invoice to the insurance place. Insurance place sends the $125 check back to him and they give the check to him. So he basically, he don't do no Lyft, no Uber medical rides, none of that. He only does that one. And it's $125 each time that he does it because he knows who it is. And they submit the invoice and the invoice, a check is cut and they send the check back. That's how it works. And that's why doctors be like, oh yeah, you don't got to worry about paying for it. I will pay for it because they're going to bill insurance for it and get the check cut to them. They don't let the passenger do that. They do it all themselves. <clears throat> But this dude, that's how he makes his money. I was like, man, that's some shit. I can go around just, but he said, but it's got to be somebody you trust, like a neighbor, a friend, a friend of a friend, because if they get the check cut back to them and they don't give you the money, you just did a free ride. Because sometimes it takes a few weeks. And when the check comes back, you better, hey, man, you got my money. Oh, bro, I spent that shit on some motherfucking diapers. Like, what, motherfucker? You like 85 years old. You ain't got no babies. No, them diapers is for me. <laughs> like, goddamn, shitty Smitty. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, you spent $125 on diapers. These are some extra diapers, motherfucker. These are Uber diapers. I can ride around in an Uber all day. <laughs> my buddy Jesse, Jesse comes picking me up all the time with a fucking junkyard car, and I can wear my diaper in his car. <laughs> Jesse, like, yeah, I drive around picking up motherfuckers with diapers on. <laughs> I bought a beater. <laughs> oh, yeah, insurance be paying 400 for those seven rides we get. Man, man. All them seven dollar rides, man. Because just think, it's all reimbursement, and government don't and like audit none of that shit. They don't audit none of it. Ride flow, what's good, brother? They don't audit none of that shit. They just be like, hey, man, you know, she took a medical ride. Okay, for how long? They get fudge numbers. Oh, it was twenty three miles. Uber might lie for them. Uber lies with miles and shit, anyways. They know that. Oh, it was twenty three miles. Knowing it was like seven. It's twenty three miles. Okay, cool. Four hundred dollars. Uber gets the money. They lie about the fucking mileage. Everybody's happy. Driver gets screwed. Mm. But that's what we got to start doing, man. Figuring out ways how we can get this money, man. Figuring out these fucking ways, man. You, you got some bad traffic management at your event centers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, we don't deal with that shit, man. Once you get downtown, do not go to Jefferson or Washington or Center Street. Don't go to those areas. You stuck. You stuck. Bitches love the medical rides. They like staying busy. Like, yeah, I was out today. I got to fold up a wheelchair. Man, I had a walker. I learned how to fold it. You push the buttons in on the side. You do this. Man, it's so cool, man. I could do this shit all day. Shit, I remember one time I was doing a medical ride a long time ago. This motherfucker started taking the wheels off the wheelchair. I was like, I ain't no wheelchair. Wheels can pop off. He's like, yeah, man, these motherfuckers quick release. Pop, pop, pop. I was like, damn, that's quick as a motherfucker. Because I ain't used to doing that shit. I was like, wow. I thought all wheelchairs just like, they collapse. And you throw those motherfuckers in there. That's those old church wheelchairs from back in the day. Because you know when you used to go to church all the time, you go to Sunday school, it's always the people, the church would have wheelchairs in the front. And the wheelchairs would be for people who don't have wheelchairs at home, but they come to church and they want to walk, they get in a wheelchair. 
you know they got the fucking like the the baby blue fucking back to it and shit the little metal rails and shit the fucking gray wheels and they smell like a fucking hospital but you in church those kind of wheelchairs that's what i think people be having all the time got the feet that you could fold down flip back up all that shit man motherfucking chairs give you nightmares like every time i see one of them chairs i start thinking of sunday school i'll be like i ain't going back to church man <laughs> jeff we got a wheelchair for you i ain't going back to church man we got a medical ride jeff i ain't going back to church man <laughs> <laughs> motherfucker be nervous as a motherfucker you see a motherfucking wheelchair so i have flashbacks I don't want to eat no more donuts. I don't want to pray no more. I'm sorry. I left my Bible at home, Sister Jones. Motherfucker, this is a medical ride, Jeff. What are you talking about? Motherfucker, having flashbacks. <laughs> <laughs> See, I feel Pentecost. I feel up Pentecost. I'm telling you, man. Motherfucker just landing in the flow in the fetal position and shit. I, I left my motherfucker. I left the brochure at home. I knew he's supposed to have a program today. Brother Johns was supposed to sing. <laughs> Like, hell yeah. That's my motherfucking shit right there. Well, because she was supposed to have a solo in church today. Yeah, what happened, man? I don't know. The wheelchair broke. She ain't having no solo today. And you know the motherfucker that they had a, usually the one in the church that got the solo is the one that, that has a hard time singing, but nobody want to say shit because it's church and you don't, you don't talk shit about people in church. They're like, this is all about Jesus. Motherfucker, like, bitch, you sound like motherfucker the Muppet. You don't even sound like a person. You sound like one of the Muppets and shit. I watched that shit last night. That motherfucker that be playing a playing the drums with a big gold tooth and shit. That's what you sound like. Like, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> this is all about Jesus. Motherfucker, like, no, no, this ain't the Muppet special. We at church today. <laughs> no, I don't talk shit about people like that. That's cool. Because I probably sound the same way if I was to sing in church. They try to make me sing in church. Like, nope, nope. <laughs> I grew up in Pentecostal. I don't know how to spell it. That's it. Pentecostal. That's it. Man. And y'all know, yeah, Pentecostal churches, too, they be taking all day. They be singing. They sing more than anything else. Motherfucker getting there. It's like a concert, a Sunday concert. It's like, we've been practicing all week waiting for you parishers, you know, to come in and hear the, the lovely song by Sister Mary. And Sister Becky over here, they're going to sing a good song for you to get your spirits up. Jesus loves me, this I know. Like a motherfucker's like, I'm going to fall asleep in a minute. <laughs> I need to go to the bathroom. You just left the bathroom. I'm going back. <laughs> I can't do this anymore. <laughs> Jesus knows you. <laughs> Like, man, I ain't doing nothing. Jesus knows you're lying. Fucking Juan Vargas pop out of the bathroom. You're a liar. <laughs> like, wait a minute. This motherfucker come to my church too? Shit. No, y'all crazy, man. Shit, I'm gonna end up getting off this thing. What time is it? Man, we done went four and a half hours. We done, hey, it was a pretty good, good fucking live stream. We had some fun, man. A lot of good information. Big horn cab got on, you know, chopped it up with us about humming everything. But what I want is, man, they can sing their brains out. They some singing pigeons. <laughs> this is the Pentecostal pigeons. It's a whole new group. This is the Pentecostal pigeons coming at you every Sunday. <laughs> it's like, yeah. We took shit rides on the way. Shit rides on the way. Like, damn, it's the Pentecostal pigeons. <laughs> like, man, I grew up in a Presbyterian church. Nobody speaks a word. <laughs> speaks the word the entire service if somebody says hey man they all look around like they lost their mind <laughs> hey man who the fuck motherfucker you here you new you new here like no man i'm just saying yeah no we're gonna shut down this <laughs> popcorn out there don't do it jeff don't do it yeah i ain't going out there man hell no i ain't going out there but shit i'm about to go in here grab me something to eat because like i said i've been on this live stream for the last four and a half hours i gotta grab me something to eat man i'm gonna go eat dinner yes i eat dinner at 12 30 at night because i stay up late so I'm going to go grab me some dinner. I got some shirts to wrap up anyways. Wash my car, put the cover on and get it ready for tomorrow. Man. And, and let's look up uh, when this uh, Country Thunder is going to go down, y'all. Let's make a plan. Let's make a plan. Because I think we can kind of help each other out, get out there, get rides going, get a lot of private shit going, get people to there and back. There's a way to do it, man. We might have to set up shop down in, in Queen Creek for the night. Just fucking sit there all damn night and just sit at the Circle K and just pluck rides all damn night. But Juan... You got the better car out of gas mileage out of all of us because my Jeep sucks. No, wait a minute. DeAndre, you probably got better gas mileage because you got that forerunner. My my shit, I'm not driving no long trips. I don't think I'm going to leave Queen Creek area. I might go Gilbert Tops, but I can't. If somebody has to go like the Mesa past the 60, I'm not doing it because I just don't have the gas for it. It's like, nah, that Jeep, them big ass wheels, I ain't doing that shit. 
They never better get back. I'm going to hit him with the bliggy. <laughs> Straight facts, no cap. <laughs> That's the Pentecostal Pigeons coming at you with the new album coming out called Praise the Cheap Rides. <laughs> Praise the Cheap Rides when you got a surge. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, but no, nah, man, I'm going to end this shit before you get too deep into it. But once again, man, I appreciate you guys on the live stream, hanging out with me all night. We always have a good time. I'm going to talk to Chris tomorrow, the CEO of Hum, see wh when he wants to get on here, because I know he wants to do a live stream with everybody. This is going to be interesting. It's going to be very interesting. That live stream, I may not talk a lot because I'm on him to first explain everything. And after that, then we're going to drop with the Q&A. Everybody can sit and ask questions. I'm going to have, you know, comments. I'm going to be writing shit down all the time because while he's talking and I'm going to be seeing comments, I'll be writing a few things down, especially things that keep popping up. But I definitely want to put some comments in the bottom of the panel. And from that, I think we're going we gonna to win, man. We're going to win. If we can get Hum to expand and Hum to spread, we're going to take care of some cities, take care of some drivers that these two big apps know. You ain't got everybody by the balls because if we can spread this out, these apps going to know. We're trying to do away with drivers, and these drivers are building drivers up. It, it's going to be a battle, man. It's going to be a battle. That's right. All right, DeAndre, man. Much love and, and appreciate what you did all weekend, man. I appreciate that, man. You took care of me. I took care of you. You came through for me. Came through for Man. It, it was it was a work in progress, man. We was out there getting it done, man. I appreciate that, brother. But that's what we got to do as ride share drivers. We got to have each other's back. Otherwise, man, it, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Trying to do this all, shit all by yourself, you can't do ride share by yourself. It's, it's not possible, man. Not possible. So you definitely ain't got me by the balls, Uber. <laughs> all right, Jesse. You be easy out there, brother. Hey, man, y'all be safe out there. If y'all out there driving tonight, be safe. I'm going to try to have some, some content tomorrow. I might drop this content of the actual, um, of this damn, this car walkthrough. Cause it was some badass cars in there. If y'all see these guys, I'm like, damn, those are nice ass cars. I might go get one of those, but shit, man, let's do it, man. Tomorrow's a whole new day. Let's go out and make that money, brother. Let's get it. Let's get it. I'll see y'all tomorrow.